Hello everyone, my name is Bappi Ahmed and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, finally I have came up with this end-to-end -end, uh, deep learning project implementation uh, with the help of MLflow and DBC. Uh, because many of you have already requested me for this particular video like how to integrate uh, MLflow and DBC, this kinds of MLOps tool uh, with this kinds of end-to-end -end project. So guys, uh, in this video I'm going to uh, uh, implement one uh, amazing project called uh, and to end chest uh, cancer classification okay using mlflow and dbc so basically uh, it is going to be uh, one deep learning project uh, and i'm going to keep this project as very simple and i'm going to write it as a, a template so that you can use this kinds of code okay use this kinds of approaches in any kinds of problem statement you will be doing in future okay uh, so basically in this project we'll be using uh, chest ct scan images uh, to classify whether one person is affected with the uh, chest cancer or not so here I will tell you like uh, what kinds of cancer actually we are trying to classify. Uh, I will I will show you like whenever I will give you the product project introduction. So guys, I will request to everyone just stay with the video, try to implement with me each and every line, just write with me, okay, so that you can learn these kinds of implementation and see guys, this is completely uh, I mean end to end project. Here we are integrating uh, two MLOps tool like MLflow and DBC. Uh, even if you don't know like what is MLflow and DBC, okay, uh, don't worry about. I will uh, give you the introduction of MLflow and DBC. I will show you the example. Then I will try to integrate with my project. Okay, it's not like that. I will be directly using. So before uh, implementing our actual uh, module, okay, I will I will show you the demo of MLflow. I will show you the DBC of MLflow. Then once you got the understanding on it, okay, then I will try to integrate with the project itself, okay. So guys, uh, that is why I'm requesting everyone don't skip the video, try to stay with the video at the end, okay. Uh, I'm expecting you will be learning a lot. And guys, trust me, if you can implement this kinds of project by yourself, uh, you will be cracking any kinds of data science interview. And and guys, if you share these kinds of projects uh, with anyone else, okay, by seeing the project itself, they will be getting impressed like uh, what are things actually you have developed, okay. It's completely uh, amazing project will be implementing today and you won't be getting this kinds of project implementation all over the internet so that's why i'm requesting everyone okay i'm not taking the money from you okay this completely free video i'm uploading uh one request just try to stay with the video try to learn from my content okay at least uh try to learn from my content so that uh, you can implement something from your side okay so yes guys now uh, let me uh, show you the agenda of this entire video so at the very first what i will do i will uh, show you the introduction uh, of the project definitely then we'll be doing the github repository setup then we'll be uh, creating the project template because always uh, when i implement any kinds of end-to-end -end project i always try to follow this kinds of project template creation at the very first okay then uh, after that we'll be setting up the projects and uh, yeah requirement as well because uh, whenever you try to create any kinds of end-to-end -end project this kinds of requirements installation is uh, needed otherwise uh, how you'll get to know like what are the packages actually you need to implement this project itself right then a uh, very important uh, tool we'll be writing called logging utils and exception module uh, because uh, this thing is like pretty much needed in your every kinds of end-to-end -end project you will be writing because using logging utils and exception you can debug your code very easily and uh, let's say in production if your code fails somewhere okay you can see the logs you can see the exception and you can uh, get rid of these kinds of uh, error actually you were uh, facing in the production itself then i will show you the project overflow like what are the overflow actually i'll be following to implement this entire project then uh, i will uh, show you the all components notebook experiment at the very first because uh, i don't want to start with the modular coding at the very first because i know you were comfortable with the Jupyter notebook experiment at the very first. So what I will so what I will do, I will write each and every components on the Jupyter notebook at the very first. Then once it is working fine, then I will try to convert as a modular coding implementation. Okay. So that is what I am mentioned here. If you see, uh, all the components modular coding implementation will be writing. Then we'll be creating the training pipeline. Okay. So entire training pipeline will be creating. So we'll just uh, hit the pipeline. It will ingest the data. It will validate the data. It will uh, transform the data. It will prepare the base model. It will do the training it will do the evolution everything it will do automatically so you don't need to do anything manually here okay then after that we'll be also integrating mlflow with it uh, and uh, mlflow is a like mlops tool i think you know don't worry about i will give the introduction of the mlflow so we'll be using mlflow for here uh for experiment tracking okay and model registration so what is experiment tracking what is model uh, registration i will discuss okay don't worry about and i will uh, show you like uh, um, both way you can install mlflow like i will show you in the local machine itself and i will show you like how to set up mlflow experiment in the remote server as well let's say i will be using one free uh, uh remote server called dax app 
because Dexab, it's completely free open source. You don't need to pay here, okay? But if you're using, let's say, in AWS, there actually, uh, you need an AWS account and at the end, you need a paid account there, okay? But both way, I will show you, like, it's up to you. Uh, which uh, like you can say remote server you will be using let's say if you're working in a company or you don't want to uh, like share this experiment with any anyone else so at that time you can go with aws setup because it would be like a, a internal server okay but if you want to make it as public so you can go with dax Hub website it's completely fine i will show you both way so if you don't have uh, let's say aws account it's completely fine still you will be able to track the experiment with the remote server as well okay then I will be show showing you the DBC. Okay, DBC is an again uh, MLOps tool. So here I will be using DBC for the pipeline tracking and uh, the implementation. Okay, so what is pipeline tracking? What is implementation? I will show you. Okay. Then uh, I will create the prediction pipeline and user app creation. Okay. So whenever user will uh, give some image, uh, let, let's say if they give some chest image, chest CT scan image, so it should predict whether this chest is affected with the cancer or not. So uh, that's why we will be creating one beautiful web application there. User will pass the image. It will automatically give you the prediction and it will show on the right hand side okay that is what we'll be doing in the prediction pipeline and user upgrading then after that we'll be building the docker image of our source code uh, because here we'll be following ci cd deployment on the aws and azure cloud okay both cloud i will show you uh, uh, because uh, many of you have already requested like you have shown like uh, aws uh, um, a deployment but we don't know like how to deploy on the azure okay so that is why i've decided to show in the boat cloud so that actually you can uh, do this kinds of deployment production grade deployment okay uh, by following the ci cd approaches okay so yes guys this is the entire uh, project uh, i mean uh, agenda okay uh, these are the things actually we'll be covering throughout this entire project and see guys so many things we'll be covering in this project i will try to request everyone just try to stay with the video try to learn each and every thing okay so believe me guys after this implementation you can implement any kinds of project any kinds of deep learning project any kinds of like image classification uh, project you can implement okay and you can also uh, integrate this kinds of mlops and dbc tool with it okay now guys you can ask me what would be the prerequisite for this video so i'm expecting you are already familiar with python programming at least so here at least object orientation program is needed okay uh, see here we'll be writing everything as a modular coding so i'm expecting you know the oops concept here all right now you should have understanding on deep learning at least object classification part but okay and you should have knowledge on the tensorflow 2.x api okay because we'll be using keras okay from the tensorflow itself so i'm expecting if you know these kinds of tensorflow framework already so it would be very much easy for you to implement this project okay but if you're completely new to it it's completely fine i will uh, discuss like what are things actually i'm importing from tensorflow okay and how i'm implementing the internet network then i am expecting you have this aws and azure account because i already told you i'll be uh, doing the deployment uh, with this both cloud aws and azure so you should have the account ready okay and uh, the final thing is like your dedication okay if you don't have the dedication if you're just only watching this video and not implementing from your side then i can't do anything here okay so you need to uh, put your dedication on and uh, try to implement with me and uh, yeah if you face any issue you can let me know in the comment okay i will be happy to help you but uh, at least these are the four requirements okay i'm expecting from your side guys okay now guys, let me uh, tell you like the problem statement actually we're gonna solve here we'll be solving this uh, chest uh, cancer okay uh, classification so basically here uh, we have uh, collected lots of images okay uh, this is the chest ct scan images okay i think you know what is ct scan and this project falls into medical domain guys okay now if you ask me like uh, which domain i can consider this project okay you can consider this project as an, a medical domain because if you see uh, we are using medical images here okay so this is the chest ct scan image and here we'll be trying to classify this adenocarcinoma cancer okay see this is the adeno adenocarcinoma cancer okay if you see this is the chest ct scan image and this is the uh, adeno carcinoma cancer uh, like you can say affected chest ct scan image okay and this is the normal chest image you will see here okay so our task is to classify this kinds of adeno carcinoma cancer from this chest image it's, it, itself so basically uh, we'll be uh, giving these kinds of images to our model our model will try to classify whether this chest has been affected with this adeno carcinoma cancer or not okay so this is the uh, problem statement actually we'll be solving now uh, if you ask me like what is this uh, adeno uh, carcinoma cancer okay so this see this is one kinds of cancer actually what is the adenoma so what is adeno carcinoma cancer okay so this is one type of cancer see adenocarcinoma is a type of cancer that starts in uh, muses producing okay glander cells many organs have these types of cells and uh, adenocarcinoma can develop in any of these org organs okay if you see here uh, basically in human chest actually you will see this kinds of cancer okay call it uh, called adenocarcinoma uh, uh, called adenocarcinoma if you see okay uh, this kinds of cancer you will see uh, in the human chest itself so if you uh, 
take the CT scan of this chest, okay, of the human chest, you will see these kinds of uh, image. So basically, you will see it's uh, it is like uh, trying to uh, produce more muscles here, okay. So uh, you can uh, call these kinds of cancer as uh, adenocarcinoma. And see, guys, this is the medical uh, disease and all. So uh, here we are not medical expert, but uh, at least I think you can consider like what is this adenocarcinoma? It's type of cancer you can consider. Okay. So our task is to classify this cancer of adenocarcinoma uh, cancer uh, from the human chest itself. Okay. So basically, we'll be trying to classify normal. Okay. And this adenocarcinoma cancer itself. Okay. From the image itself. Now, if you want to learn more about this adenocarcinoma cancer, just go to Google and search about it. Okay. You will get the entire uh, description of it. You can see like, okay, what type of cancer it is. Okay. How uh, it got affected by the human. Okay. Everything you can see uh, about the cancer. Now, guys, to prevent this uh, problem statement, we have built one solution. Okay. So first of all, uh, I, will, I will show you the project demo, like how it is working. Okay, how it is trying to classify these kinds of cancer. Then I will start with our actual implementation. So for this, what I will do, I will open my um, project I have already created. Okay, let me open it. So guys, this is the entire project I have already uh, implemented. Okay, so let me show you the demo first of all, like how it is working. Then I will show you like how I implemented all the components. Okay, so first of all, what I will do, uh, I have already created one environment here and I have already installed all the requirements. So there is an app.py I have created. Okay, this is the endpoint of our project. So let me run it. Okay, Python app dot pi. So this uh, server is running. Now what I will do? Uh, I will open my Google, and here I will search for localhost port number eighty eighty. I think it's port number eighty. Just okay, port number eighty. So guys, see, this is the UI I have designed. Okay, so this is the simple UI. Only one image uploader option here. So let's upload one image. Okay, let's upload one. Uh, just test image here okay now let's see whether my model is able to classify or not so i'll open the folder see guys in this folder i have the image as you can see uh so first of all i will give this uh, adenocarcinoma affected image and let's see whether my model is able to predict or not okay let's take this image and i will click on the predict see guys it is uh classifying it's a uh, adenocarcinoma cancer okay this chest okay that means it is able to classify okay now let's give one normal image okay normal chest and let's see whether it's able to do it or not i'll give this image let's do prediction now guys see it's giving normal okay so this is the demo of the project uh, uh we have designed okay uh, it looks might be very simple but uh, whenever you will be trying to implement you will see the complexity okay but see i'm not good with the html and css so that is why this is a simple ui i have created but if you know html and css you can design this project in a very good way all right now guys let me show you the data set actually uh, we will be using to implement this entire project. See guys, uh, these are the data set actually I have collected. So this is the adeno uh, carcinoma affected chest CT scan images. As you can see here, we have around 195 images. Okay, in this folder. See, and I have created one folder adeno carcinoma, and inside that I have kept all the adeno carcinoma affected images here. All right. And uh, in the normal folder, if you see, this is the normal chest, uh, chest CT scan images. Okay, and uh, we have around 148 images here. Okay, so uh, see um, here I'm showing you this thing as a demo okay uh, because this is the live implementation so i can take like uh, thousands of image here because it will take time to train okay so, but if you are implementing actual project okay if you are implementing in the production at the time you need lots of image see only 140 images won't work in this case okay you need thousands more images here right so at that time you need to collect more images here but this is the demo this is just the implementation i am showing you uh, so that you can learn like how to implement this thing but later on you can increase the data site and you can get a good model but still my model is uh, able to uh, differentiate between this uh, adenocarcinoma and normal chest images okay as i've already showed you from my demo itself so yes guys this is the data set uh, i have collected and this kinds of data set actually you can find from the kaggle itself a uh, there are lots of free website uci machine learning repository are, are there okay you can uh, collect from there itself okay so um I, otherwise i will also provide my data set with you okay uh, i will give the uh, link okay with my uh, implementation because i will be uploading my data in my google drives uh, that link i will provide you can download my data set from here itself okay so yes guys so this is the entire demo of the project uh, i hope uh, you will be enjoying a lot uh, we will be building this awesome application uh, with the help of mlops tool as well and uh, yes guys uh, so guys one request would be to everyone try to support my channel okay try to uh, share this video with your friends and family try to do the subscribe in my channel okay uh, try to share this video guys okay so that uh, i can get motivation okay a lot uh, to bring these kinds of content to you 
but if you're not supporting my channel, then how will get motivated, right? So this is, this should be my request to everyone. Just try to uh, support my channel so that, uh, and let me know what are the things actually you need. I will try to provide, okay, uh, as free. So yes, guys, uh, this is the uh, entire uh, introduction I have already given. Uh, so what I will do, uh, um, see, uh, before starting uh, the actual implementation, I already told you, uh, first of all, I will give you the uh, like example of the ML flow and DVC, okay? So first of all, what I will do, I will uh, give the uh, demo of the ML flow, like what is ML flow and all, and we'll be doing the setup uh, ML flow in our local, okay, and in the remote server as well. And once you got the understanding on it, okay, then I will start uh, trying to implement my project, okay? So yes, guys, uh, let's start with our implementation. Uh, so guys, now let me tell you like what is ML flow. So just go to Google and search for ML flow, okay? So ML flow dot uh, org. So this is the website of ML flow. So guys, ML flow is the most successful research in the field of ML ops. Okay. So this is nothing but this is an open source platform for the uh, machine learning life cycle. Okay. So what is machine learning life cycle? I, I think you already know. Okay. So uh, here you can see it has some uh, like major components. Okay. Major uh, like building blocks as you can see. So ML flow tracking, ML flow projects and ML flow models and ML flow registry. So using ML flow actually what you can do, uh, you can do ML flow tracking. Okay. So you can record query, experiment, code data okay config and results so basically let's say if you are doing any kinds of uh, like ml experiment okay let's say uh, if you are picking up any algorithm machine learning algorithm let's say you are picking up elastic okay elastic net okay i think you are already familiar with elastic net algorithm so it is nothing but one regression algorithm okay elastic net and it has some regularization uh, parameter with that like l1 ratio and uh, let's say alpha value okay if you don't know what is elastic net so just search about elastic net elastic uh, Elastic net, uh, psychic learn, okay. SK learn. So, I hope you already work with this uh, algorithm before, okay. So, whenever I was to, we used to learn like uh, regularization technique, okay, in machine learning, we used to use this uh, algorithm, elastic net, okay. You can so, guys, here you can use any kinds of machine learning algorithm, it's up to you, but I'm giving one demo, okay, with this elastic net, okay, only you can consider any kinds of uh, like algorithm if you go to any kinds of algorithm in scikit-learn you can see all the parameters are available okay in this uh, algorithm okay so as i already told you it has two parameters called alpha and l1 ratio okay so what we do usually let's say if you're doing any kinds of machine learning experiment basically you would try to change these are the parameter okay during training okay let's say by default you have taken this alpha value as 1.0 and l1 ratio and 0 0.5 okay and you did one experiment and you saw your accuracy and losses okay and you observe that your accuracy is not increasing even loss is not decreasing okay so you are ending up with a poor model so what you will do again you will again change these are the parameter okay to get a better model so that's actually we usually perform hyperparameter tuning okay so instead of doing this thing manually we have some uh like a uh, tool let's say grid search cv or uh, any other tool you can use okay in scikit-learn and you just try to do hyperparameter tuning but let's see if you're doing hyperparameter tuning so it needs actually lots of computational power, even it needs lots of training. Okay, I think if you have already already used this kinds of grid search CV or let's say random uh, random uh, CV, okay, random search CV. So these kinds of algorithm. So you will observe like it will take lots of time to train your model. Okay, so uh, that's why whenever you are trying to implement against of end to end project, okay, end to end project. So it's better instead of doing the hyperparameter tuning, okay, in your pipeline, if you can figure out this kinds of parameter, okay, doing some experiment, okay, so you can attach these are the parameter okay you can hard code these are the parameter and you, you can end up with a good model so this is a good practice okay instead of doing the hyperparameter tuning every time just try to figure out the best parameter and try to set the parameter okay as your experiment so that's why actually ml flow comes into picture so ml flow helps you to do this kinds of tracking okay so instead of doing the hyperparameter tuning you can just write two line of code okay using ml flow and it can track each and every parameter you'll be using. Let's say if you're using elastic net and you have used this alpha and L1 ratio parameter. So it can track those are the parameter with the, and with respect to that, it will also track the accuracy and losses. Okay. You will be getting in that experiment. Okay. Then let's say you, you will be again changing those are the parameter and again, you will be running your code again. It, it can track. Okay. The second uh, experiment you'll be doing. That's how all the experiment actually will be doing. It can track and even it can show you in a graph and you can select the best model okay with respect to that now you can ask me like uh, can we use hyperparameter tuning instead of ml flow you can use but better practice would be 
using ml flow because it's the ml ops tool because it is a uh, because it is production grade and it's like more powerful okay not only experiment tracking you can also do ml flow project let's say you can also package your entire project okay with the with the help of ml flow and you can run this project in any kinds of uh, platform okay let's say uh, i'll show you like what are the integration it has okay you can run this project in any kinds of platform okay if you have done this ml flow project then MLflow models are also there. Let's say after training your model, it can also register your model. Okay. Uh, MLflow has uh, like remote server. It can also push the model in the server. And from that server, actually, you can also change the stage of the model. Let's say if you want to uh, give this model in the staging area, you can also select staging area. And if you want to give this model to the production area, okay, you can also select the production area. Okay. Using MLflow, you can also make the deployment okay it's also possible okay so i'll show you each and everything okay i'll show you like how to change change it to staging and how to change it to uh, production area okay so everything it can be done but guys uh, mostly we'll be using this service okay now uh, ml flow tracking because this is the most uh you can see used okay used uh experiment okay using ml flow okay we'll be doing in any kinds of mldl project because at the end uh, figuring out the parameter it's like very hard okay so ml flow does this job very easy okay so instead of doing the hyperparameter tuning okay we can use ml flow and we can uh, figure out our best experiment okay uh yeah guys now let me show you what are the integration it has so guys as you can see it has almost all the machine learning and deep learning uh framework integration as you can see tensorflow pytorch keras spark okay scikit learn hugging face okay then dax up so today actually i'll be using this dax up okay to launch my remote server of ml flow okay then even see it can also support onyx okay spacey first ai everything it can support even it has also supported with the cloud the global cloud is there okay databricks is there as your machine learning is there okay amazon says says maker also there okay so you can integrate any kinds of thing with that okay in future i will uh also try to create uh with the help of says maker as well okay so as i already told you we can also do the deployment using uh ml flow okay uh so for this actually you need amazon says maker so after this project actually in future i will also try to create some of the project okay using amazon says maker and there actually i'll show you like how to do the deployment using ml flow okay but today in this project actually i will show you this uh like task called ml flow tracking because this is the most uh used okay because this is the most uh, used uh you can say task okay with the help of ml flow and uh it is like broadly used in the industry okay so if you are going to any industry so if you know ml flow there so it would be very much uh helpful for you and it would be plus point for you so industries are looking for this kinds of developer who knows this kinds of ml ops tool okay so yes guys now now uh, see uh, these are some organization are also contributing and using this ml flow so let's say databricks microsoft facebook okay then r studio see toyota okay these are the like big big organization are using this ml flow okay in their industry as well okay so yes guys so this is uh, a brief introduction of the ml flow i think you got it okay what is ml flow and all about if you still confused like what is ml flow don't worry so let me give you one um like a basic example okay so i'll open my whiteboard okay and here let me show you like what is ml flow okay why we should use ml flow so guys let's say you are doing one ml project okay so let's say you are solving one regression problem statement it can be regression it can be classification anything okay but let's consider regression problem statement you are solving okay you are using wine quality one quality data okay as i already told you it has some features okay based on that actually you need to predict the quality of the wine okay quality of wine okay so for this actually let's say you have picked up one ml algorithm okay you have picked up let's say elastic net okay i already showed you this elastic net and it has some parameter okay as i already showed you if you go here it has let's say lots of parameter but let's consider this two parameter only alpha value and lol ratio okay so i'll open my whiteboard again so let's say you are considering alpha and l1 ratio these two parameter okay these two params so basically what you do usually whenever you do any kinds of experiment okay ml experiment basically you change these are the parameter only okay let's say uh 
at the first experiment let's say this is the experiment first okay so let's say you have assigned alpha equal to let's say 0 0.1 and l1 ratio okay l1 ratio you have assigned let's say 0 0.5 okay so you trained your model okay you trained your model after that you got your loss okay let's say if you are solving any kind of regression problem statement so what loss you will get you will let's say uh, you will get r2 score then msc okay then me so these three losses you will get okay and with respect to that you will also get your accuracy okay that means your r2 score okay r2 score nothing but your accuracy score okay so this is the ex uh, like let's say first experiment with the help of this parameter okay you got these are the results okay and what you need to do let's say you have created one csv file okay and at the first rows row one so you will save these are the experiment okay these are the experiment let's say you will be creating some column let's say alpha l1 ratio okay then loss mae msc okay and r2 then you will be then what you will do it will save these are the information so alpha value was 0 0.1 l1 ratio was 0 0.5 let's say you got loss as 0 0.83 okay and a ma score let's say you got uh, let's say 0 0.73 or 0 0.65 okay and rt score you got let's say um, 0 0.52 that means 50 percent accuracy you got okay then you didn't like this experiment okay because this result is like very poor okay so again what you will do again you will do the second experiment experiment two again you will select some alpha value okay again you will change your alpha value here let's say now in this experiment you have selected alpha value as 0 0.2 and l1 ratio you'll be selecting as 0 point let's say 7 then again you will train your model okay after training your model you will get your loss okay and accuracy i'm not writing these are the thing because i think you can consider okay accuracy then again what you will do in the csv file you will create one uh, row 2 okay you will create one row 2 and you will uh, save all the records okay so save all the records let's say your uh, alpha l1 loss okay accuracy score then again you will get some results okay and if you don't like this results again what you need to do again you need to do the third experiment okay again you need to do the third experiment so you'll be doing the third experiment again you will select some alpha n1 ratio again you need to uh, train your model again you will get some prediction again you will be saving these are the uh, changes okay in your csv file so basically what you need to do here you need to maintain one csv file manually okay manually you are doing this thing but can we automate this process okay using ml flow okay yes we can do it using ml flow tracking okay ml flow tracking so basically what i need to do i need to write two line of code okay i need to just write two lines of code and it can track all the experiment you will be doing let's say what are the parameters you used okay in that algorithm what is the losses what is the like uh, accuracy score everything it will track okay everything it will track as ml flow experiment okay ml flow experiment okay and it will save to your remote server okay and there actually you can launch ui that means user interface and you can see the visual representation okay visual representation and there would be some graph okay from that graph actually you can select your best model okay best model or let's say best parameter okay so this is all about your ml flow okay now i think this thing is like very much clear okay why we need to use ml flow okay uh okay uh, because of this experiment taking and if you are doing hyperparameter tuning it's completely fine but again if you have let's say good computational power good resources okay if you have time you can do it but in the industry actually instead of doing the hyperparameter tuning they do this kinds of experiment tracking with okay with the help of ml flow because not only experiment tracking you can do using ml flow you can also do modular study as well okay and uh, it will give you the visual representation for from that actually you can select the best uh, parameters okay with respect to your best model you'll be selecting okay even you can also pick up the best model okay from it so yes guys this is the simplest explanation i can give you okay now 
it's time to show you some demo okay like how actually your ml flow works so after that actually this would be very much clear okay in your mind so what i will do i will go to this ml flow uh website and it has one beautiful documentation because this is the best way to learn ml flow okay it has everything just go with the documentation try to see what are the things actually it has so let's see if you are using python api just go to the python api and you can see these are the api as supported I, as i already told you it is already integrated with lots of thing let me open in a new tab go to ml flow as i already told you it is already supported lots of machine learning packages okay as you can see tensorflow pytorch even if you see if you go to the api you can see here um, see okay first ai then your on x okay even you can see here first ai first ai okay then on x is also there okay then you have tensorflow i think yes tensorflow then pytorch is also there okay so today actually we'll be using the api called scikit-learn because we'll be solving machine learning problem statement so uh, mostly in machine learning we use this scikit-learn framework okay but let's say if you're solving any kinds of deep learning problem statement at the time you need to go with tensorflow okay so in future i will uh, bring up some deep learning project as well okay so you just need to change this like import okay you just need to change this api everything would be similar but only this minor change you need to do let's say whenever i will be Im do the import of scikit-learn okay what i will do i'll just write mlflow dot uh sklearn okay let's see if you're using tensorflow at that time you just need to call it mlflow dot tensorflow okay so this is the changes only you need to do okay and everything would be similar so first of all let's show this uh first of all so guys let me show you the demo of this scikit-learn because we will be implementing machine learning project here okay so here left hand side you you can see uh, quick start okay quick start ml flow just click here and here you have one basic code okay so quick start i think not here again i'll click on ml flow here you have something called tutorials or example okay just go to the tutorials and example and here if you see the first uh, example train serve and score a linear regression model just click here and it already has one basic code okay see this is the code so what i will do i will copy this code okay and i will explain like what are things actually they are doing okay so this is nothing but one simple machine learning code so they are importing elastic net okay as you can see elastic net algorithm they are preparing this one quality data they are downloading this data set from this url after that they are integrating ml flow with that and they are tracking the experiment okay that's it okay that's it only okay now what i will do i will quickly open my local directory so here i already created one folder called ml flow test okay so here first of all what i will do i will open my terminal Okay, so here, first of all, let's open my VS Code. So guys, I, so guys, I already opened up my VS Code. So here, let me close this other thing. Okay. So here, first of all, I will take one uh, file called requirement.txt. Okay. Because you need to install the ML flow, first of all. Requirements txt and don't worry i will uh, uh commit this at the code okay in my github and i will share the link with you okay so that you can also get the code okay so then i will uh, also create another uh, file called example.py okay and the code actually i copied from here just copy the code make sure you have selected python okay if you are using r programming language click on r you will get the r, r code okay i will be using python so i will select the python okay now select the code okay now let's open up my base code okay and this i'll i'll just paste it here okay that's it i'll explain this code don't worry okay whatever things they have written so as you can see ml flow is not installed yet okay in my environment so first of all what i need to do i need to install it okay so i'll use one specific version of ml flow uh, called ml flow 2.2.2 2. 2, okay because as you can see if i go to the ml flow website they have recently released this uh ml flow 2 okay if you just go here see they have released this ml flow 2.0 okay but previously it was 1.0 but they have recently launched this 2.0 and uh 
Uh, and in this uh, 2.2 actually they have uh, also integrated lots of uh, functionality okay they have been integrated lots of uh, framework machine learning framework so instead of using 1.0 just try to use 2.0 okay and from this 2.0 i'm using this specific version called 2.2.2 uh, okay so this is the version you can use okay so let me save it now what i will do i will open my terminal so first of all i will i'll be creating my environment here okay so let me create so i'll just write python uh, so sorry, I just need to write conda, conda create, hyphen in, okay. Just give the environment name. I will give uh, ML proj, okay. Let's give ML pro project, okay. I'll give ML proj, and uh, here just define the Python version you want. I will give Python equal to three point eight, okay. Let's say three, uh, let's take three point eight, okay. Then I'll give hyphen y. Now let's create our environment. Okay, now you, you need to uh, activate the environment. Just write this command conda activate ML project. Okay, now it has been activated. Now let me clear it. Now I need to install this requirement.txt, okay? Just write pip install hyphen r requirement.txt. So if I need any other package, okay, later on I will install it. So guys, it may take some time. Let's wait. So guys, as you can see, installation is done. Now let me minimize it, okay? so right hand side i need to select the environment i created let me refresh here so it was uh ml pros right so let me select that environment i think yeah this is the environment okay now this error would be disappeared yeah so now let me tell you like what uh, they did okay in this code so first of all they imported these are the common library i think you already familiar with pandas numpy these are the thing and they have also imported from scikit-learn okay this mean squared error mean absolute error and r2 score because this is a because this is the regression problem statement as i already told you okay then they are also importing tent speed because you need to also apply tent speed okay if you are doing machine learning project then they are also importing elastic net okay elastic net is the algorithm they are using okay you can use any kinds of algorithm let's say it can be linear regression okay then random forest regression okay then you can use uh knife bias anything you can use okay uh, support vector machine it's up to you okay i'm giving this example with elastic net but you can pick up any kinds of algorithm okay and you can track those are the parameter with respect to their accuracy and losses okay then url parse they're using i will tell you like why they're using url parse okay then ml flow importing then from this ml flow they're also importing infer signature okay this signature is not needed i'll remove this signature okay i will tell you like why they're using this signature then they're also importing scikit-learn from ml flow as you can see they're doing import ml flow dot scikit line okay because if i show you the api python api okay as you can see if you are using scikit line so you need to import like that ml flow sorry this is spacey i think i'm talking about scikit line one okay and you can get all the api code here okay everything you can get here then after that they're importing logging and they're creating the login string because uh, you can in the terminal actually you can also see the log okay so like what are the things actually it is doing and this is the simple evolution fun function they have defined called evil matrix in that function actually they are taking the actual okay actual prediction and your predicted value from your model and they're calculating the losses okay rms score ma score r2 score and they are derailing the losses this is the simple loss calculation i think you already did in your machine learning project okay see they're calculating this rms score after that mean absolute error then r2 score then they are returning these losses then as you can see they're downloading their data from this url so this is the url guys so this is the url of your 
mine quality data and they are reading it from uh, here okay as you can see this data is present here as you can see this is the present uh, so guys this data is present here so they're reading this data from here okay so this is a csv file and it is hosted on this github okay so they're reading from here this data after that they're using pandas to read the data and this data is separated by semicolon as you can see the, it is separated by semicolon then if there are some issue with the data okay it is raising the exception like unable to download the data okay from the csv file then once it got the data it is applying trend test beat okay it is dividing the data into training and testing set then after that it is defining alpha and annual ratio from the user itself okay so by default this value would be 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay and this value they are taking as argument okay as you can see system.argv they are doing okay so let's say whenever you are executing this example.py in the runtime itself you can provide this alpha value and l1 ratio okay let me show you like how it will work so for this actually what i will do i will uh, create one file called argv experiment okay dot pi so first of all i will import sys okay then let me define the alpha value so i'll copy the like same code from here i'll copy the same code i'll just paste it here sorry yeah now what i'll do i'll just print this two value alpha and my l1 ratio okay so now if i execute this arg uh, argv experiment.py okay now let me show you the things like how it will work so i'll just write python argv okay experiment now if i execute it by default you can see it's taking 0 0.5 0 0.5 because it's telling if user is not passing anything okay if user is not passing any argument okay just give it as 0 0.5 by default okay see both so what they're doing here they're telling if user is passing some argument in the runtime just replace that uh, like value okay just assign that value in the alpha alpha variable and if they're not doing it just assign it 0 0.5 okay similar wise they're doing for l1 ratio now let me show you see if i pass any value here let's say i will give alpha value as 0 0.9 space l1 ratio 0 0.5 okay now if i let's say 0 0.3 okay if i give now if i press enter now see instead of taking 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 it is taking 0 0.9 and 0 0.3 okay because i have given this thing in runtime okay and if i am not passing anything okay if i am not passing any value here so by default it will take 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay so that's how this alpha value they are taking as input okay from the user itself okay during runtime okay you can also hard code this value but just to do the experiment okay uh whenever i'll run this code okay i'll pass this argument okay I'll, and in runtime so that i can give different different uh parameter okay instead of just writing in my file okay so that is the convenience uh to use this sys.argv okay now i hope this thing is clear okay like how it is working here okay now let me minimize now let me go back to my okay code now after that they are assigning this mlflow.start okay so you need to assign this mlflow start in that actually they're assigning elastic net algorithm okay and they are providing this alpha value and annual ratio as a parameter okay because as i already showed you elastic net has already this two parameter okay you can also define these are the parameter as well if you want if you are considering all the parameter you can define here okay you can define in this code and you can take as input from the user otherwise you can hard code it no issue with that but just for simplicity okay just to make this project as simple okay we are using this two parameter okay and random is equal to 42 then after that they're training the model okay using train and uh, train x and train y data then after that they're doing the prediction on on top of the test data and this is the predicted okay output and they're providing the actual okay and with respect to that they're predicted output from the model itself and they're calculating the evil matrix okay as you can see this uh, method will take this actual and predicted okay value and they'll calculate this rmsc me and r2 score okay after that it will give you these are the score okay then they're printing in the terminal okay after that this is the final thing okay as you can see it's like very simple whenever you will log some parameter okay because as you can see alpha and l1 ratio is the parameter okay in this experiment okay these two are parameter 
and these three are matrices okay so always you need to figure out your parameters separately and matrices separately not only that like so you don't have to like log parameters as matrix okay and you don't have to log matrix as parameter don't do it like that ever just try to figure out what are the parameters you are using in that model okay just try to log them using uh, just write mlflow.log params log underscore params give the name okay and provide the alpha value okay see this is the alpha value we are using here i am passing mlflow.log params l1 ratio i am passing okay and these are my matrices rmsc r2 and me these are the my, my, my matrices okay so in this case actually i am just reading mlflow.log matrix i am giving my rmsc log matrix r2 log matrix me let's see you are solving classification problem statement at the time you will be using some different like matrices called let's say f1 score confusion matrix okay and you have uh, precision recall at the time this should be your matrices okay you need to log them and apart from that what are the parameters actually we will be using in that algorithm you need to call them using log params okay this is only your mlflow code in this project okay not anything else guys it's like very simple just try to initialize mlflow.start inside that just try to log the parameter everything it will do automatically you don't need to do anything here okay all the changes all the experiment it will save automatically so this thing actually by default it will run in my local because as you can see here i'm not setting up any uri here okay so what is uri uri means not so what is uri guys uri is nothing but let's say if you want to do this experiment in a remote server okay let's say in dexa or let's say in aws that at that time you need to provide one url with that remote server okay so it will save all the experiment in that server but if you're not giving anything by default okay so it will save everything in your local machine okay i'll show you like how it will save okay so basically here if you see they're uh, like also initializing the signature but this is not required okay you can completely remove this code it's completely fine and this line code actually they're checking whether you have given any uri or not okay see as you can see using url parse so this package they're checking if you have provided any tracking uri or not okay so what they're doing they're checking first of all whether you have provided any uri or not if if you haven't provided any uri everything it will track in local okay otherwise it will track in that uri okay as you can see if it is not file type so by default if you are not giving any uri it will consider okay as file type and if, you, if it is file type it will track everything in your local otherwise it will track everything in the remote server okay and there it will save the model it will register the model with the name of elastic net okay that's it okay and you can remove this signature okay i'll remove it whenever i will uh, do the uh, remote uh, experiment at the time i will remove this signature okay it's not needed so guys this is the simple code only okay only you just need to assign this thing and after that just log your parameters with res uh, with respect to their matrices and just define this tracking uri that's it okay now let me execute and show you like how it will work okay so for this actually what i'll do i'll open my terminal again okay let me clear the terminal and i'll run my example.py okay i'll just write python example.py so guys it will take some time because first of all it will train the model okay then it will track everything in my ml flow and left left hand side you will see it will create one folder called ml runs okay inside that it will save all the experiment okay you will be doing so guys as you can see experiment is done and it is printing like you used elastic net model with this alpha value okay and l1 ratio and this is your rmsc score okay me score and r2 score now left hand side you can see it has created one folder called ml runs okay now let me expand this one and let me show you what other things actually it will save first of all it will save one dot trash folder so you won't be getting anything here just ignore it okay and you can see it will create one zero folder okay inside that this is your first experiment with the unique id okay let's say whenever you will running for the second time it will create another unique id okay in that what are the th information it will save it will save rtpx matrix params and tags okay and metadata i'll tell you first of all let me open this meta.yaml okay so in this meta.yaml first of all it will show you the location rtpx location because as you can see ml runs is my rtpx okay inside that it has saved all of my rtpx okay so this is the location okay so this is my local file location as you can see inside that it has created zero folder inside that everything i have okay this is the creation time this is my experiment id okay so by default it will give one id called zero okay so you can also change the id name but just keep it as default okay then this is the last update time okay this is the life cycle stage and this is the default okay so these are the metadata actually it will save now let me close it and now let me open this your first experiment okay in the first experiment if you open the artifacts okay you will see first of all your environment okay so here which python version you used which pip version you used okay what are the package actually you used okay to uh, track this 
experiment okay to run this project everything it will get from your environment and it will save okay inside this conda.yml let's say in future if you are sharing this project with anyone else they will open up this conda.yml and they will okay see your environment with respect to the package actually it needs and they will make the setup okay and they can use it okay and even it has also packaged by ml4 okay see if, if i show you i think i already showed it has these four component okay see ml4 project so now it has become ml4 project because everything you can see here ml flow has extracted from my environment okay and it has made this environment for me i can execute this conda.yml in any kinds of platform okay and i can execute this and i can execute this project okay in any kinds of uh, like platform here if you see here any kinds of platform you can execute this project okay here any kinds of platform it will support because it has already tracked everything okay it has made my environment ready automatically now there won't be any requirement issue if this project is set up in by anyone else okay they they won't be facing any kinds of issue with that and it is also telling this is a ml flow environment okay so now let me close this thing now let me see what are the things actually it has generated as well so now see second one this is your ml model okay so this is the ml model configuration as you can see okay so by default it will save some metadata of the model information okay so whenever it will load the model in the ml flow environment at the time it will automatically get to know and this is your model file guys so by see automatically it has saved your model as pickle format because we manually save our okay model as pickle format but if you are using ml4 it can also save your model as pickle format and this is the python environment as well okay so yes this is your artifacts okay now let's open the matrix so inside matrix you have your ME score r2 score and your rmsc score okay so these are all the metrics it will save now in your parameters it will also save your alpha value l1 ratio see all the information you have given in this code okay it will save everything okay with the help of this line of code only okay and uh, this is your tags okay some metadata information it will save like uh, your system information your user okay your name of the worm so it will save so these are things actually you don't need to worry about only you just need to see these are the thing but still actually it is very confusing okay why because let, let me run one more time this code okay so by default as you can see it has taken uh 0 0.5 0 0.5 as my alpha and l1 ratio okay so now let's give some different value here so i'll come here and again i will execute python example.py okay now let's give my alpha value as 0 0.2 0 0.2 okay and l1 ratio 0 0.5 or let's say 0 0.7 okay now let me execute see guys it has run successfully now can you see it has created another experiment for me with the unique id now again it, ha it has saved all the matrices okay all the parameters okay, now if i open my parameters see now it's 0 0.2 and 0 0.7 okay and all the matrix as well as the parameter and all the matrix okay but like that actually we can see like which one is best okay it's like very confusing for us let's say we have did 10 experiment here okay so it would be very much confusing for us to see like which model actually is better which parameter is better okay so to overcome this issue mlflow has one ui okay so to launch the ui so what you need to do just write mlflow ui okay so it will launch up one ui uh, on your local host okay and everything it will show as visual representation okay see it's running here now just press ctrl and click on this link okay it will open that mlflow server for you see this is the ui guys and this is the beautiful ui everything you can see now see we did two experiment here okay all the experiment ran successfully that's why you can see this tick mark okay and guys see it has also saved the duration okay uh to run this code like how how much time it took and this is the created time okay so this thing actually so this experiment i did 14 minutes ago and this experiment actually 59 seconds ago okay because after uh, because during recording i was taking some uh like water break that's why you can see this different okay but see if i if i do like one more experiment here let me do it so i will take another terminal because this server is running in the terminal okay so I, i'm in the same folder as you can see mlflow test so let me activate my environment conda activate uh ml proj 
okay now let me open my first of all ps board okay now i'll open my terminal now again i will run my example.py okay now let's give some other value alpha value 0. Point, let's give 1 and load ratio 0. 0.6 okay now let me execute see it has created another experiment for me now if you want to see that just come here okay now after some time you will see in the refresh okay it will give you one that means one changes has done now if you refresh here see this is the experiment actually you did just 15 seconds ago okay and with respect to that all the model theta set okay now if you want to see an experiment now let's say i want to see this experiment okay just click here now guys can you see okay see this is your model and if you want to also make the prediction okay with this model okay using pi spark and all even they have also given the code for that but we will be using okay so you can read about your environment here everything you can open it up okay in the model section this is the artifacts now this is the tags now by default i didn't i didn't give any tags now this is the matrix guys okay as you can see this is the matrix you got okay with respect to these are the parameter okay 0 0.1 0 0.6 this is the ma score ms r2 score and R rmsc score okay and this is your alpha value and error ratio as you can see here parameter okay and this is the description okay description i haven't given anything that's why it's empty for me okay and which file you ran it has also given okay the user so my name is like book here so it took the book t okay from there and this is the duration okay this is the date and this is the run id okay now you can also see the visual representation of me score just click here it will also show this graph for you okay so you can also see as graphic graphical representation as well okay now let me go back you can also open this r2 score as well okay as graph okay you can see now this is only for one okay one record let me go back to my experiment again okay this is only for one okay now if you want to do comparison let's say you have done some experiment okay you did three time experiment and you want to compare like which experiment is good for you okay from which experiment you are getting better model okay you can also do it so what you can do just select everything okay and there is a compare button just click here okay now can you see one uh, parallel coordinate plots okay so this is the best part plot to select your experiment okay so now here you just select your parameters so how many parameters we have i have alpha and n1 ratio okay with respect to that i want to see my me score r2 score and as well as my rmsc score okay now just see here okay which parameter okay which parameter has like minimum me score minimum rmsc score and highest r2 score now can you see uh this is the minimum ma score this is the highest r2 score and this is the lowest uh, rma score okay so what is the parameter as you can see so at that time i have l1 ratio as 0 0.6 and my alpha ratio as 0 0.1 okay now just go below and figure out okay below you can see your all the experiment id okay so what is the parameter parameter was 0 0.1 and 0 0.6 now figure out 0 0.1 and 0 0.6 okay see this is the 0 0.1 and 0 0.6 okay now uh, this is the run id okay of this parameter now if i open this run id in a new tab now guys see this is the experiment actually i was getting the good results now if i open my matrix see these are the matrix okay in this experiment and these are the parameters 0 0.1 and 0 0.6 okay now what you can do you can select these are the parameter in your code just open up your code okay just hard code this value here and you can finally train your model okay so that's how you can easily do the comparison okay from all of the experiment you have did okay you have done and from that actually you can figure out the best model okay best model with the suitable parameters as well okay so this thing only okay now let's say this is only for three okay as you can see three experiment okay we did okay now let's do another more another experiment okay so i'll open my code again i will open my terminal let's run it again okay i will give a different parameter let's say 0 0.3 i have given this is the uh, L1 ratio okay now see fourth number experiment now again go back go to your experiment now can you see okay this is the fourth experiment we did again select everything do the compare now can you see the four color okay that means four time experiment you did now again select r2 score rmc score okay see here you don't need to track all the parameters and losses and accuracy in a csv file instead of that just line to line of code okay 
try to do experiment everything you can see from this ui okay and you can select your better model now let's figure out our better model okay now as you can see ME score is very low here, R RT score is very high here. Again, RMS score is very low here. Okay. So which parameter? It's 0, 03 and 0, 01. Okay. So let me figure out 0, 03, 0, 01. This one. Okay. 0, 03, 0, 01. Now open up this ID. Okay. Open up this run ID. Now guys, see this is this is your model. Okay. This model you can use. Okay. In, in your production environment. Okay. Now let me show you. See, this is the MSC score, R RT score, and these are the parameter only. Okay. Now if you click on model. So by default, you can't see any model registry uh, here because it is running everything in the local machine. As you can see, every experiment is saving inside my local local machine only. Okay, from here it is picking up all this experiment. Okay, but this model will work whenever you will do the experiment on the remote server at the time. So after this, I will show you like how to set up MLflow in the remote server. At the time, you will see here I can also do the model registry. So basically, it will push the model here. From here, actually, I can select the model in my staging area and my production area. Okay, so whenever you are working with actual project, okay, actual like uh, machine learning or deep learning project, there actually you have two stages, okay, one is staging area and one is like production area, okay, in the staging area, you keep your model to do the testing operation, okay, let's say you want to do some testing whether your model is working perfectly or not before giving to the production, if it is working, if your model is passed, then you will give your model to the production, okay, otherwise you will keep this model in the inside the staging area, okay, so that's actually MLOps work actually, okay, so MLOps like very easy. MLOps is nothing but it's just tool only. Okay, if you learn uh, this kinds of tool, you can integrate this tool. Okay, with this uh, kinds of any kinds of ML and DL project, and you can also learn MLOps. Okay, you can build MLOp MLOps based project as well. Okay, so yes, guys, this is all about MLflow. I think you got the overview. Okay, overview and demo like how it works. Okay, so basically how we can track the experiment. Okay, so every run actually it will save unique unique experiment. Okay, with respect to that, you can compare all the experiment. And you can get the better model or get a parameter or better parameter okay from it now let's say you want to delete an experiment okay let's say i want to delete this experiment i'll select this one i'll click on delete okay it will delete this experiment for me now let me refresh yeah so it has already deleted so yes guys this is all about your ml flow i think you got it and this is running on local machine as you can see this is running on local machine okay so next actually what i will do i will show you like how we can set up this ml flow as our remote server okay so first of all we'll be using some free website called DAXUP. Okay. I will show you like how to set up MLflow because MLflow also support DAXUP as you can see. It also support DAXUP. So using DAXUP actually you can also launch this MLflow server there. Okay. So I'll be using DAXUP for it. So yes guys, now see not only this one, uh, let me close this thing. So not only this uh, parallel coordinate plots, it had also a scatter plot as well. As you can see using a scatter plot, you can also see your which parameter is better. Okay. With respect to the MAE score. Okay. Or let's say, uh, sorry r2 score okay here only you can select one parameter in the x coordinate okay the, it has also box plot as well okay then to see the box plot you need to select okay now see the box plot even it has the contour plot as well but this three plot is a little bit confusing so what i feel like this parallel coordinate plots like better better to understand as you can see this color is like very lowest okay and this color is like very very highest okay as you can see here so lowest always try to get this uh, blue so this is the blue okay this is the blue and if you want to get some highest results so just see the color here okay so here actually you can see all the experiment with respect to that you can get the better model from it because it has everything here okay below as you can see here okay so yes guys this is all about your ml flow now uh let's set up our ml flow in the remote server okay uh, i'll be using dax up for it uh, so guys actually uh as of now we have seen like uh, how to set up this ml flow okay in our local system and all the experiment actually you can see we have done in the local okay uh, now actually i will show you like how we can set up this thing in a remote server okay so for this actually um the website actually i'll be using called daxup okay so search for daxup daxup.com so daxup is nothing but uh see i've already uh, logged in my account so what i will do i will sign out okay and i will tell you like how to do it okay for you See guys, DAXUP is nothing but uh, it's a platform. Actually, here you can uh, like manage your complex data science project, okay? Like the data code, okay, experiment and the models, okay? In just one place, okay? But here we won't be using, these are the services. We'll be using the service called experiment, okay? Uh, so inside this service, actually, we can uh, launch up our MLflow server, okay? And you can read about this uh, DAXUP, okay? Everything they have written down here, but uh, 
it's not needed okay so what do you need to do you need to first of all log in with your account okay so just click on login and here you can also log in with your email address and password okay you can also sign up with your google account but here actually we'll be launching one uh, ml flow server for this actually i need to connect my code to my github repository okay so for this actually you need to sign up with your github account so let me sign up so if i click here so it will redirect me okay uh, directly redirect me to my uh, account as you can see because i already configured my github here okay so uh, if you click here so it may ask for some authentication okay just try to approve them okay and give the password then it will try to log in here okay so i i'm expecting you can do it okay so the, the, so it's just a simple sign up operation okay you just need to perform now what do you need to do uh, see previously i uh, like attached uh, some of the github repository here so that's why it's coming here but for you it would be completely empty okay now first of all uh, i need to commit my code in my github the code actually we have implemented till now so for this i will open my github okay here i will create one new repository i'll name this repository as uh, ml4 okay ml4 uh, basic operation let's give you can give any name no issue with that okay now i will make it as public then i will add readme file okay then the git ignore i will uh, i will also add search for git ignore oh sorry it should be python here because i'm using python programming language and the license okay i'll select let's say mit license okay then i will create the repository here okay now i'll click on code make sure you have selected https now copy the link address okay now let's open my local folder okay so here i will open my terminal so here first of all i'll just write git clone paste the link okay let's clone the repository first of all here okay so i have already cloned now what i will do i will go inside i'll copy everything okay i will let's i will cut everything i will cut everything and i will paste it here in my project folder okay then after that i will remove this uh like folder i cloned okay now see uh, I have added this dot git file here. If you are not able to see it, so just click on view. So there is a hidden item option is there. You just activate it, you would be able to see that. Okay. Now we have successfully added this git dot git even uh, readme and license. Okay. Now what I will do? Uh, I'll open my code. Okay. So first of all, uh, you need to follow some of the command. Okay. You need to follow some of the command to uh, launch this uh, uh, MLflow server. Okay in your local so for this actually let me mention in the readme like what are the commands actually you need to execute so i will just paste it here okay see these are the uh, command actually you need to execute and these are the tracking uri username you need to get it okay from your dax app okay how to get it i will tell you okay don't worry about so first of all let me commit the changes okay with my github so what i will do i will open my terminal again okay now i'll just write git add space dot clear it now git commit hyphen m let's give the masses called uh, ml flow uh, mn flow first commit okay let's give now i'll just push the changes so git push origin main okay it's done now let me go back to my repository now if i refresh here so yes it, it has updated here okay now uh, just ignore these are the uri because this is the uri from my previous project okay so i'll i need to replace this uri okay with with my current one so first of all let's connect this repository with my dax app so for this what you need to do just ca come here and you can see one create button okay just click here and click on new repository now here you can also create a bank repository create from a template okay and you can also connect a repository so i i already have the repository in my github so i'll just connect it so i'll click on connect now here i'm using git uh, now here actually i'm using github service okay if you are using big bucket or any other services you can use it okay so i'll click on connect to github okay now here just click on add revoke access to repository now i'll select my my uh, account okay so these are my organization accounts so i'll select my account personal account now you need to give the password so let's give the password 
okay is done now here you can also provide all repository access but i feel like this one is pretty good okay only selected repository okay just give the selected repository access only so i'll select my repository and what is the repository name this is the repository name i'll just copy i'll paste it here okay now see this is the repository name uh, ml flow basic operation okay after that i will click on save okay now just search for this repository again i will paste the name here so yeah this is the repository then i will just click on connect okay now you can see uh, it has uh, connected here and this is the repository everything you can see here okay see it can also support dvc storage okay amazon s3 google cloud storage okay you see using dax you can do lots of things but we'll be doing the experiment tracking okay now to get the tracking URI, just click on remote okay and here you can see the experiment button okay just click here now see guys ml flow tracking remote okay now you just need to copy these are the credentials just let, let's copy now i'll open my vs code okay and i will replace this thing okay with my current one i'll remove it and i'll paste my new one okay now i'll copy the uri let me also change it here okay then username is ent fine uh, entpuppy is fine now i'll copy the password okay and i'll paste it here okay that's it okay now uh what do you need to do you need to export these are the thing in your environment okay so for this just open the uh, first of all let's copy one by one i'll copy the first command i'll open my terminal okay and just paste it here okay export this thing it's done then copy the second one execute okay and copy the third one yes so you have already exported these are the credential in environment okay now let me clear it now uh yeah now i'll open my example.py okay here just uh, go below and uh, remove these are the line okay this line is not required okay now instead of that actually uh you need to add uh, this tracking uri here okay let me add it So this is for DAX up. Okay. Now this is the remote URI. So uh, the URI actually I downloaded. Okay. I copied from here. Just copy the URI and replace it here. Okay. Because this is my previous URI. So from now actually, what are the experiment you will be doing? Everything it will save in this URI. Okay. And we have hosted the DAX up there. Everything you can see from there only. Now uh, just go below and also remove this signature okay this is not required okay i'll also remove the signature from here okay fine now in now see we have set the uri now whenever it will run the uh, execute this code it will get the uri okay and if it is getting the uri everything it will uh register in the uri only okay no, not in my local now let me save it and uh, to understand this one so what i will do i will open my local directory again i'll uh, uh, delete this ml runs okay because i want to do everything in my remote server that's why okay now let me uh also my okay so i have opened my terminal okay now i think this thing is ready now let's try okay whether it's working or not so first of all if i show you uh in that website if you click on remote okay see there is a button called go to the ml flow ui okay if you click here so it will see it has already launched up your ml flow server okay see this is the ml flow server and still no experiment exists okay because as of now we haven't done an experiment okay now let's do one experiment and uh, let's see whether it's able to track or not okay so i'll open it i will run example.py okay see guys it's done okay it's telling successfully registered model elastic net model okay so this is the time date and created version one okay because this is the first run we did okay so that's why the version is one now let's go back to our ui okay now let me refresh the page here okay now you'll see the experiment here see guys okay it's done and uh see 
30 seconds ago, we just did the experiment. And you can also open the same way, okay, as I already told you in my local uh, experiment, okay. You can open it up. You can see all the thing here, your metrics, parameters, everything you can see, okay. What are the things actually I did? Everything you can also do here. Okay. Now let's do another experiment. Okay. I will again open my terminal. I'll run the code. Okay. I took the same uh, metrics. Okay. Okay. No issue. So what I will do, I'll delete one of them. Let's done it first of all. Okay. It's done. So if I again refresh it, okay. So let's delete because I have used same parameter. Okay. 0 0.5, 0 0.5. If you see, go to here. Again, I'm using the same parameter only. Okay. So let, let's uh, delete one experiment. I'll uh, delete this one. Okay. Now let me open my terminal again. And I'll give my alpha value as 0. Point, let's say 2. And L1 ratio 0. 0.8. Okay. Now let's execute. See, it's telling creating the version 2. Okay. Previously, because this is the second run. Now see. It's created the version 3 of the model. Okay, now again refresh. Now see guys, okay. Now you can also do the compare, comparison. Click here, do the compare. Okay, so everything you can do same way as I already showed you. Okay, see you can uh, see the parallel coordinate plots here. Okay, see everything you can see here. Okay, so you can do the same experiment. Okay, you can figure out your best uh, parameter with respect to the, uh, you can say, uh, matrices. Okay, and you can select the model. Now one thing I, I want to show you, if I go back, now, if I click on the model, okay, previously this model was not coming, okay. Now you can see it has also registered the model, okay. You can see the model here. So if I click on the model, and this is the version 3 of the model because uh, we run for the third time, okay. That's why this is the version 3. Now let's click on the model, okay. See, this is the version 3 of the model, and none of them are in the staging area, okay. Because uh, I, as I already told you, it has uh, two things one is like staging area and production area, okay. So you haven't selected anything here. Now let's say I want to assign my last model okay let's say this last model is working fine for me so what i will do i can also assign this model to the staging area okay or let's say production area i'll click here okay now here if you see the stage type okay it's none now select to the let's say i, I want to give it to the staging area okay just for testing purpose now i'll click on okay now if i go back okay now see version 3 model is running on the staging area okay and if i go back right now go to the model See, it's running on the staging area version 3. Okay. Now let's do another experiment. I'll open my terminal. Okay. Let's give 0 0.6 right now. Okay. So let's say you again train one model and this is the version 4. So now you, you saw like version 4 model is better than your version 3 model. Okay. And you want to publish this model. Now if I refresh this page once, let me show you. Okay, see, uh, this is my uh, last uh, experiment. Now, if I go to the model, now you'll see version 4 model is available, okay? And version 3 is running on the staging area. But you saw like version 4 is working fine for me. Or let's say version version 3 is working fine for you, okay? It passed the testing phase. Now, you want to give this model to the production area, okay? So, how we can do it? Just click here. Okay. So, this model running on my staging area, I will click here. I'll change it to my production, okay? This production stays. Now, if I go back, you will see this model is running on the production, okay? And you can uh, add SageMaker with it. So this task could be automated. So whenever you will uh, send it to the production, it will automatically get deployed, okay? In your endpoints, in the SageMaker, okay? So in uh, feature, I will create some project on it, okay? I will integrate SageMaker with that and I will show you like how we can also do the deployment using MLflow, okay? Now see, Version 3 model is running on my production, okay? And version 4 you have trained. Now let's say you want to assign this model to the staging area. Just go, come here and assign it to the st staging area. Okay, now let's go back. See, it's running on the staging area version 4 and version 3 running in my production area, okay? So that's how you can also manage, okay, your model, which model you want to use, okay, in the production, which model you want to use in the staging area, okay? So yes, guys, uh, this is now running on your um, remote server. Okay, now you can share this link with anyone. They can also access this experiment. Okay, let's say you are working in a team and they also want to do the experiment. Okay, you can also add them here. Okay, you can also share this uh, tracking URI. They can also make the changes. Even they can also collaborate with you. But previously, it was running in the local host. Okay, that's why you are not able to do it. Okay, so guys, yeah, that, that was the setup for our uh, DAXUP. Okay, DAXUP uh, remote server. 
now uh, i'll show you uh, how we can set up ml flow okay in our aws cloud as well okay because let's say if you want to do it in the aws okay let's say we can see daxup is a public okay open source platform uh everyone can see your experiment okay but let's say you want to keep it as private okay only in your organization only at that time you you need some more security so what you can do you can set up this thing in the aws cloud okay so now let's uh, start uh, set up this thing in our aws cloud okay and guys one thing i just want to show you see we have run so many experiments now you can see nothing else there okay in the local okay all the ml runs has been saved to my this this uri okay this is the remote server is running everything it has saved here okay instead of saving in the local okay now let's uh, start our aws one uh so guys now let's start with uh our aws setup okay so for this uh just log into your aws console okay so let me open my console so here just sign up with your account okay so let me quickly sign up with my account okay so guys i already signed up with my account as you can see so you can also sign up with your account okay so now let me update the readme so what are the things you need to do so in the readme i will add some more command for aws okay i already prepared this thing okay so i will change this the uri okay because this is my uh, previous project uri okay i need to change it after creating my uh, aws setup now let me save it and quickly push the changes okay Okay, now if I go to my readme, now I can remove this thing because this was my DAX server, right? It is running successfully, so I can remove this thing, okay? This is not required, okay? Now if I refresh this page, so you can see I have updated the readme, okay, for AWS. So first of all, what do you need to do? You need to log in with your AWS console. So I have already logged in. Then you need to create one IAM user, okay, with the administrator access, okay? Now let me create, so I will search for IAM. okay then you, left hand side you can see the user okay just click on user now create uh, add a new user okay i'll give the user name as uh, ml uh, ml flow user okay let's give ml flow user okay now i'll click on next okay then here you have something called atas existing policy click here now just give administrator access okay now simply click on next now yeah now click on create user okay now uh just figure out your user so this is my user ml play user i will click here and click on security credential okay i need to get this uh, security credential let's say access key id okay then secret access key id these are the thing now inside access keys just click here for create access keys okay now select for command line interface and click on i understand okay i have a recommendation and click on next now i will click on create access keys okay now see this is your access keys okay now you can also download a csv file i'll download it okay and clip it keep it here okay so now what you need to do you need to set it okay you need to set it in your uh environment so for this what you need to just open up your terminal again okay open up your terminal again and let me clear it just write aws configure okay so for this actually you need to install aws cli okay so just search for aws cli CLI download. Uh, this is the first link, just open it up. Okay. And based on your operating system, you can install it. So, this is the uh, command for Linux. Okay. You can install it in Linux, Mac OS. So, I, here I'm using Windows. So, in, in Windows, actually, you can install it in a two way. Uh, here you have command line, and so even you have one msi file okay so better you just download this msi file just click here so it will start download this msi file so i'll just cancel it okay now after downloading just double click on it okay and it will do the simply installation okay the way you actually you install any software you just need to do it okay so after installing this thing just write open up your terminal okay let's go back open up your terminal and search for aws okay aws so if you search for AWS, you can see these are the command, okay? And also uh, write AWS configure, okay? If you write this command, so you should get this, this window. 
okay if you are not getting this window that means it is in uh, aws cli is not installed successfully okay and if it is successfully then you will get this window okay then after that first of all you need to set the aws access key id so where you will get the access key id see guys this is the access key okay now just copy copy the access key now open up a terminal again and just right click and paste it okay now press enter it will set now it is asking for secret key okay now this is the secret key you can also show and copy okay and don't share this uh, uh, secret with anyone okay otherwise they will also able to access your account i'm showing because i will remove this user okay after uh, recording the video okay now i'll paste it and i'll set it okay now it is asking for uh, region name okay which region you are in you need to see so by default i am inside us east one okay let's say if you are in in other region okay let's let's uh, let me show you the region if i open my aws in a new tab see here you can see the region okay i'm inside north virginia so north virginia inside us east one okay see us east one okay now let's say if, if you are in asia pacific that's in, that means mumbai at the time you just need to give ap south one okay this name you just need to write but you will just keep it us east one okay uh, because i'm also using east, east one okay in my experiment now i have already set up okay if you want to again write it just write us east okay I pen one now press enter okay and press enter again see it will automatically save your credential okay in your environment now it's done okay it's done for me now even you can see this thing in your uh, okay here i have downloaded one uh, csv file i think you remember it is also available okay your secret key and access key okay you can also copy from here also it's completely fine now what i need to do i already set up my uh, uh, credential okay in my aws cli by running aws configure now i need to create one s3 bucket okay now let's create this three bucket i will remove this thing and also this thing okay now i'll uh, go back to my aws okay so just search for s3 because all the artifacts it will generate okay uh, that ml runs folder so everything it will save in the s3 bucket okay whenever you are setting in this thing in the uh, aws and guys if you are doing in the aws okay it, it includes some cost okay but if you are doing it in the dax hub there is no cost but dax hub is a uh, like open source public website okay there everybody can see your but let's say if you are doing this project in your organization this is your organization project okay you need to keep it a secret at a time you just set up this thing in the aws okay that is why now uh, i'll create one bucket here and uh, i'll give the bucket name as uh, ml flow ml flow buck okay uh, let's give give this name you need to give one unique name otherwise it might create some issue then uh, okay i will uh, unactivate this one and i will click on here okay then everything should be as default i'll click bucket okay so bucket has been created so just figure out your bucket name so ml flow buck 23 okay so this is the bucket so i'll open it up okay and copy the name copy the bucket name and open up your code yeah so here i think somewhere i saved my bucket okay so here i i will replace my bucket okay so this is my bucket name I'll, I'll i'm saving here because that's for my reference okay so that i can use it later on now bucket creation is also done if i go to my github so bucket creation is also done now i need to create the ec2 machine okay i need to i need to launch one ec2 instance okay and i need to set port number 5000 so for this i'll again uh, search for ec2 ec2 is a virtual machine service okay here i will click on launch tense I will select Ubuntu machine, okay. And everything you just keep it as default. It will work for the free trial, okay, with also because uh, this instance actually its free trial is eligible, okay. So uh, if you have free trial, so it won't be charging, okay. Otherwise, it will charge. So I will keep it as free trial. Uh, I will select the instance type as T2 micro. It's fine because I only want to launch the server, okay. I don't need any bigger instance here, so I'll keep it as T2 micro. Now uh, you just need to create one key value pair here. Just any give any name, so I'll give ML flow. Okay, ML flow demo. I'll click on create P. So this not uh, this thing is not required unless and until you want uh, you don't want to uh, access your machine. Okay, with some uh, third party tool, let's say Putty or Mobile Stream. Okay, uh, but I will launch the terminal in my web, web 
this website only okay that's why this thing is not required but you need it okay uh to select here okay just to create your uh easy to machine you need this okay that, that's why you need to create it now i will click on allow https and uh, this thing and i'll keep it as 8 gb it's completely fine and i'll click on long stance okay now let's go back uh, i'll click on view all instance now see instance is creating here the status is pending okay now let's refresh it should be running okay so here i forget to name it okay so i'll click on here i'll give the name ml4 machine okay now there is a name see now it's running now i'll click on instance id okay and there you will get a uh, one button called connect okay but before that what i will do i will uh set I'll, i need to set this uh security groups to port number 5000 okay so for this uh there is you will find one option called security now click on security groups okay now right hand side you can see edit and bounce rules okay just click here and click on add rules it should be custom tcp now give port number 5000 okay now select this uh, 000 here and click on save rules okay it's done for me now i'll go back to my ec2 okay then here uh i'll click on running instance so this the this my instance is running click here now i'll click on connect okay now click on connect so it will launch me one terminal okay so that i can access my machine here and now you just need to copy these are the command and execute okay that's it okay it has launched now let me clear okay so the first thing what i need to do i need to do uh sudo apt update okay my apt package manager i need to update so let me run one, one by one Okay, it's done. Now I'll copy the second command. Here, basically, I am installing my uh, Python. Okay, Python three because by default this machine won't be anything, so you need to install everything manually. You need to give Y. Just press Y and press Enter. So it may take some time. Let's wait. Okay. I'll pause the video when it is done I'll come back. And guys if you are getting these kinds of window just press enter from your keyboard it will disappear okay now see. See it's done now I'll clear the terminal again okay now uh, I'll run uh, copy the second command third command I think okay I need to install this ppnv. Okay, it's done. Now I'll copy, execute. Now I'm installing virtual, uh, okay, env, because you need to also create the virtual environment here. Now I'll create one folder called ml4. Okay. Now what I need to do, I need to go to the folder ml4. Now you can see I'm inside ml4 folder. Okay. Now let me clear. Now what I need to do, I need to install ml4 here. So pip env install ml4. Just write it. So basically, it will create one environment first of all. Then it will inst uh, install ml4 for me. So again, it may take some time. Let's wait. Uh, so guys, it's done. Now let's copy the next command. I need to install it of the CLI as well here. Yeah. Okay, again it's done. Let's clear. Okay, now I'll copy uh, this one. I need also need to install Boto3. Okay, so let me install it. Okay. 
okay boto 3 is also done now i'll activate my pip env shell okay now left hand side you can see my ml flow has been activated now uh, i need to do the aws configure again okay so i'll just copy this command paste it here okay again you need to select uh, set this aws access key and secret key okay so i think you remember you download one csv file okay so this is my access key so i'll copy i'll go back and i'll paste it here okay and now i need to uh, copy the secret key so before the comma this is your secret key okay region so you need to give yes east one okay and give it as empty enter okay now it's done now what i will do i will uh, come here everything is needed okay so everything is done for me now finally i can uh, run this server okay uh, so what i will do uh, i have already updated my uh, s3 bucket in the command so i will go to my readme go below and copy this command okay i will update this uh, like readme for you also okay so you can get it and i'll update this code okay don't worry about you will get all the commands and everything okay i'll copy and i'll execute it here okay and here at the last i'm providing my s3 bucket okay i the bucket i created okay so basically what will happen whenever you will do the experiment all the artifacts okay all the ml runs it will generate that ml runs folder okay that means the artifacts okay it will be generating and everything it will save inside your s3 bucket the bucket actually you have created okay that's why i'm connecting my bucket okay as my artifacts root okay that's why now let, let me execute now guys see it's running so if you want to see that so just come here click on instance type okay and here you will get something called uh, and open this public ip when we dns okay now open this one now at the last you need to add port number 5000 okay port number 5000 okay now here just remove this s from this https okay because https won't be worked you need to give http okay now if i press enter now see it will launch the mlflow server for you okay see this server is running and there is no experiment okay because we haven't run an experiment here now what i will do i will copy this url this is my tracking url as of now okay now i will go back to my readme file and i will replace it here okay so this is my tracking url right now okay now i need to set this track url in my environment variable i will open it up i'll, I'll copy and i'll open my terminal i'll export it just okay that's it now i'll also need to replace this thing in my code so i'll copy uh, example.py so this is for dax hub now i'll add it for my aws as well let me comment it out okay this is for aws okay now i'll replace this one with my tracking url okay that's it now i'll save it and now let's run and see whether it's working or not okay i will open my terminal clear it okay i'll run my example.py okay it's selling no module name boto3 okay uh so i need to install boto3 as well so here I'll just write boto3 okay now open your terminal here and install the requirements again so installation is done now let's again execute my python example.py
Now it should work. See guys, it's telling successfully registered the model Elastic Net, okay? Creating the version one, okay? That means it's successfully done. Now let's go back to my server, okay? Now here, let's refresh. You can here refresh, okay? See, so this was my first experiment, but uh, it was like uh, I got some error. That's why it's giving error. You can remove it, okay? I'll remove it, okay? Now see, this is your experiment, and you can open it up, and you can uh, do the same thing, okay? As I already did. You can also click on the model. So this is the version one model you can also set this model to the staging area and production area okay everything you can do that means guys everything is working fine and this is the internal server is running now you just share this internal server with your member okay with your team member in your organization they can also uh like contribute with you okay so here's guys both way i showed you like how to set up this ml flow to the remote server either you can go with dax up either you can go with aws okay but in this project i will be using dax up because i'm expecting everybody on having the uh, aws account okay so let's do it as for free okay but if you are doing internal project you can also use aws okay for it now i will also show you like how to stop uh, this uh, one okay how to remove all the resources because if you just keep it as running so it will charge you okay so let's say after okay uh, you don't want to use it okay after after the experiment you, do, you don't want to use it so you can also uh terminate the instance okay so how you can do it now let me first of all see if i open the uh, close this tab also your uh, terminal tab it will uh, uh, okay but it's not like that if you close the tab okay it, it will uh, like uh, terminate it will still run okay now let me close this one okay now first of all i will uh, terminate my instance so i'll go to my ec2 running instance now select the instance okay you want to terminate and click on instance type and terminate it okay so it will remove everything okay after shutting down then i also need to uh, delete my artifacts okay in my s3 so if i show you my s3 now what was my s3 name it was ml for bug 23 okay this one and guys if you see all the artifacts it are saved here okay see okay this is your experiment this is your artifacts this is the model okay see it has already saved here okay now you can uh, remove everything from here just delete uh, okay delete you just need to write this thing permanently delete okay it's done now if i go to my bucket it should be empty okay now i also need to uh delete my im user okay so just search for im click on user i created ml flow user okay i'll select and i'll just click on delete okay it's done for me so yeah guys uh, i already showed you like how to delete it as well okay now it's up to you which service actually you, you're gonna use okay now uh i have given i think uh the best introduction of the ml flow okay like how it works and how to set up this thing okay in different different server now uh i think this should be pretty much clear in your mind okay why we're gonna use ml flow okay now we can start implementing our actual project okay so uh, before that what i will do first of all i will uh create one github repository of our project okay then i will uh like uh, do the uh like project template creation okay so now guys let's start with our project implementation so guys i think you have uh, seen what is ml flow and uh its demo uh it should be clear like uh, how why we use ml flow and all about now uh what i will do i will start with my project implementation because i have already given the ml flow introduction and all and uh here see guys uh in our ml flow actually we did the experiment with the machine learning model okay we used elastic net model okay and we scikit learn there but uh, here we'll be solving deep learning problem statement. So here we'll be using something called TensorFlow Keras. So instead of using uh, scikit-learn there uh, in the MLflow experiment, we'll be using something called Keras. Okay, I will uh, show you like why do you just need to do the modification in the in the same code only. You just need to do a slight modification and everything will remain same. Okay, I, I think I already told you like uh, uh, MLflow supports uh, almost all the framework like uh, TensorFlow, 
then you have keras then you have let's say scikit-learn okay pytorch everything it supports okay it depends upon the uh, project you are selecting let's say if you are solving machine learning project at a time you are you need to go with like uh, sklearn library and if you are solving any kinds of deep learning project let's say if you are using pytorch then you need to select pytorch from there and if you're uh, doing with keras then you need to select keras here so in this project actually we will be using keras that's why i will be importing keras okay from the ml flow itself all right now the first thing actually i'll be doing my github repository setup so for this i will log in with my github yeah so here i will click on repositories and here i will be creating one new repositories all right and the repository name here i will be giving let's name it as end to end uh just classification uh just cancer classification using ml flow and dbc okay so this is the name i will be giving now uh, let's add uh, readme file here i will make it as public repository then i'll be adding dot git ignore so i'm using python programming language so i need to select for python and let's take a license here so i'll be taking this mit license now everything is fine now let's create the repository all right so this is my repository name end to end uh, just cancer classification using ml flow and dbc now what i need to do i need to clone this repository in my um, folder okay so let me clone it so i'll make sure you have selected https now just copy the link address now i'll open my local folder here i will open my terminal in this location now here i will just write git clone okay and i'll just paste this link it will clone now this is the folder i have cloned here uh chest classification uh chest cancer classification okay now i will redirect to this folder i'll just write cd end to end uh chest cancer classification okay this is my entire folder location now let's go inside okay now i'm inside this folder location all right now what i will do i will open my vs code here let me clear it so i'll just write code space dot so here i'm using vs code but if you're using any kinds of code editor let's say pycharm or let's say sublime text it's completely fine okay you can use it but i will be using uh, vs code here all right it's done so now the first thing what i will do i'll be creating my project template okay uh, i think you already know whenever i try to create any kinds of end-to-end -end project i always follow one basic template okay for my project itself because uh for the end-to-end -end implementation you need a structure for the structure and file structure okay like how you need to manage your entire code so for this this template is very much needed so here let's write one basic template of our project and this template actually you can use in your every uh, like project every ms classification project you will be implementing in future because this uh, template i will be keeping as professional so that uh, you can use it okay in your every project this uh, template now i will create one file called template here template.py inside that i will be writing my logic so here first thing i will be importing some libraries let's import operating system library then i'll be importing path lib from path from uh I, i'll be importing path library from path lib so from sorry it should be from from path lib import path okay this is the uh, class i need from path lib itself and why i'll be using this class i'll show you okay why it's ne needed then i also need something called login import login okay so the first thing i will be uh, mentioning my login string here because uh, whenever you will be executing this template.py it will also show the log in the terminal like uh, it is creating the folder structure and all okay so for this, this is the basic login string i am prepared so i'm using this python prepared login and from here i'm calling this basics config and the first thing i'm initializing my log level okay so log level is nothing but it's an information related log only yeah, there is like uh, various uh i mean log level you will be getting if you go to this website logging python logging python docs there is official documentation uh, of the logging in python you will get so here you will see there are various kinds of log level you have see set the log level 
you have let's say uh, a bug level log you have information level, level log okay so everything you can see here just go read, read read this documentation you will get the idea okay like what are the logs level you have but here we'll be using something called um uh, i mean uh, information level uh, log okay here and the format i have specified first of all it will uh, take your ascii time like your current timestamp okay like what is the timestamp what is the date it will take up then after that it will print the message okay so every time whenever you will be executing it will take the time with respect to that timestamp and it will uh, print the log like what is the log is going on here okay and this is the log message i will be giving now what i will do i will define my project name so let's take one variable here called project underscore name uh, so i'll keep this project name as uh, cnn classifier okay let's call it as cnn classifier you can give any name let's say you can also give a uh, chest cla cancer classification but i'm uh, keeping these templates as generic so that you can use this template in any kinds of project okay instead of changing the name okay so that's why i'm keeping this template as generic okay so you can give any kinds of name here okay with respect to your project but i'm i'll be giving cnn classified here all right now here i want to create some list of the file okay so i have already prepared some list of the file i want to create in this directory so these are the list of the file i'll be creating so the first thing i will be creating called dot github folder here and inside that i'll be creating one file a folder called workflows and inside that i'll be keeping one file called git dot git keep so wh what will happen actually uh see whenever we'll be following ci cd deployment i need this dot github uh, folder okay inside that i need this workflows folder and inside that i will be creating something called main.yaml and that main.yaml uh, will be uh, like mentioning some of the command and it will do the ci cd job for me okay whenever we'll be doing the deployment but uh, initially i will be creating that main.yaml file so um, uh, just to upload this folder in my github i am just keeping this dot git keep file uh, because if you know like um, github doesn't support like empty folder upload okay so if you have empty folder and if you if you're trying to upload it in the github so it won't be uploaded okay so that's why you need to keep some of the uh, file inside the folder then it will be able to upload that folder itself right so that's why i'm keeping this dot git keep file when uh, whenever i'll be creating that uh, main.yaml file and i'll be deleting this one okay from here then i'll be creating one folder called src this is my source folder and inside source folder i'll be creating my project folder okay this is my project folder and inside that i'll be creating one constructor file okay so this is the constructor file will help me to uh, create this folder as my local package okay so that's why it's needed then i'll be creating one components folder inside my uh, project folder okay so these are my component inside component will be creating data integration data validation then model trainer prepare based model these are the functionality will be creating okay and again this folder is going to be my local package that's why i mentioned this constructor file here then i'll be creating utils okay here i'll be keeping my utility related code i'll be creating my configuration i'll be creating my configuration.py i'll be creating my pipeline i'll be creating my entity i'll be creating my constant okay and i'll be creating these are the thing like config.yaml i'll explain each and everything what is configuration what is pipeline what is entity what is constant i will be explaining each and everything don't worry about as of now so as of now just try to consider these are the folder structure actually you need for this project okay then i'll be creating dvc.yaml file because i i will be integrating dvc with that as well then panams.yaml requirement.txt setup.py and i'll be creating another folder called resource inside that i have already kept one uh, ipunv file jupyter notebook file called trials.ipunv so before uh, implementing any kinds of uh, modular coding first of all we will be doing the uh, ipunv experiment that means notebook experiment then if it is working fine we'll be trying to convert this thing as a modular coding okay so that's why i kept this folder uh, called resource then i'll be creating another folder called template inside that i'll be uh, keeping my uh, html code i think you saw i created one uh, basics uh, ui okay user interface for the user itself so these are the uh, html code and css code i'll be storing inside template folder okay so this is the basics uh, folders and file structure uh, i have prepared here now there is a logic actually you need to write to create uh, this folder and file structure so let me show you see it's just a simple python code so what i did actually first of all i defined one for loop and i was extracting these are the record one by one here as you can see here then i am converting to the path okay why i am converting the path because as you can see uh, i am using windows operating system but here i have mentioned forward slash here okay but if you know like in windows operating system we usually uh, follow this backward slash okay instead of using forward slash in windows actually we use backward slash uh, but let's say uh, if you uh, but if you are mentioning this forward slash so what will happen sometimes it will throw error uh, this uh, location is not found okay so to overcome this error uh, we can use this path class okay from this path live itself and if we give any kinds of path here okay 
using let's say forward slash or backward slash it will automatically detect your operating system and it will convert that location to to that specific operating system okay you are using so let's say i'm using windows operating system it will automatically convert to windows operating system path for me so that if i'm giving forward slash as well uh, it won't be creating any kinds of issue okay this, that is why this path is like very much important now let's say if you're running this uh, code in the mac system or let's say linux system okay it will automatically detect the operating system and it will convert with respect to that operating system you are using okay so that's why i'm first of all converting each and every path with that uh, operating system type then what i'm doing actually i'm extracting this uh, folders and this file separate okay as you can see using uh, waste.part.split okay i'm giving my entire record so what it will basically do it will return me this folder okay it will return me this folder separate in this folder directory and this file separate in this file name okay now i have my folder directory and now i have my file name now first of all i'll be creating my folder directory okay so for this i'm using uh, waste.make directories inside that it will take your folder directories and and here i have set one parameter exist okay is equal to true that, that means if this folder is exist in the directory it won't be creating otherwise it will creating and it will also log the information in your terminal that's it okay now once you have created this folder okay once you have created this folder structure now i also need to create the file inside that okay so this is the logic i have written first of all i'm checking this file is exist or not okay if it is not exist or this file is or this file size is empty okay like if you see i'm like calculating the size of the file if it is equal equal zero that means this file is empty that means i will be creating the file i'm just using with open and here i'm giving my file name so it will basically create the file name with respect to that extension you are giving let's say dot pi dot pi dot pi then uh, txt yaml okay it will automatically create then i'm just logging the information like file has been created and if this file is already exists so it will log the information this file is already exist okay for you so yes guys this is the basics uh, python code i have just written uh, so this is like basics logic i've written just to create the folder structure here now let me show you uh, like like how it will be creating the folder structure here so for this i'll be opening my terminal now here let me clear it so i'll execute this template.py here so see initially i don't have any folders and file here all right now if i execute this template.py just see the magic here right now see guys it is printing the log creating directories creating directories okay this is the directories it has created now left hand side you can see this is the entire project folder directory it has created by just running one like file here so guys uh, this is just a one time effort you just need to write now see guys if you delete everything here okay now again if you execute this template.py again it will create the folder structure for you but let's say if you haven't created this template.py you need to create these are the folder structure manually by clicking here okay and it will take lots of time for you so that's why instead of creating manually just try to prepare this template and just try to run it and it will prepare the folder structure for you okay now let me show you like whether i got all the folder structure or not see first of all it will be creating dot github so it has created dot github inside that workflows inside that dot git cape okay now pytest you just ignore it because i have pytest extension in my vs code that's why this file will automatically come for me okay just uh, uh, i mean ignore this one this is not related to our project okay now you can see the config okay see this is the config and inside that i have created another file called config.yml now again i created a resource here see resource inside that i have the uh, this trials.ipynb now i created src see src inside that i have my project name called cnn classifier see cnn classifier inside that i have components see i have components and see after cnn classifier here uh, i created one uh, constructor file can you see after this project i created one constructor file see this is the constructor file okay now this uh, src uh, cnn classifier is my local package okay whenever i'll be set upping this setup.py it will consider this thing my local package so that i can import everything from here let's say i want to import data ingestion from my components i'll be right just from src.cnn classifier dot components import data ingestion okay that's how i can import it and if you are not set up in this folder as your local package at a time it will throw error what is src what is cnn classifier okay so that's why this thing is needed now see components then uh, i have my config then i have my constant then entity pipeline utils then template index.html see everything i have created now you can see this dbc.yml params.yml requirement.txt setup.py okay see everything i have created as automated okay using python now my folder structure is ready okay now my folder structure is ready now what i will do let's uh, commit the changes in my github so i'll open my terminal again let me clear it i'll just write git at space dot then git commit 
type an M. Let's give the masses called folder structure edit. Now let's do the push. I'll just write git push origin main. Okay, this is my main branch you can see here. Okay, now let's push it. See, it's done. Now let, let's go back to our uh, GitHub and refresh. Now, guys, see, it has been pushed here. Okay, now everything is fine. Now, what I will do, uh, my uh, template is ready, my project structure is ready. Now I need to uh, make a setup, okay? Uh, I need to do the environment setup and I also need to do the requirement installation here, okay? So for this, uh, first of all, I'll be creating one uh, virtual environment here. So let me create one virtual environment. Uh, the command should be conda, create, hyphen in. Then let's give the name of the environment. I will be giving uh, cancer, okay? Let's give cancer. You can give any name. I'm giving cancer. Then uh, you need to specify the Python version. So Python equal to I'll be using Python version is equal to 3.8 and hyphen by. So this is the command you need to execute. Now let let me execute. So it will create the virtual environment for you. See guys, it's creating the environment. Now let's wait. Okay, when it is done, I will come back. See guys, I already created my environment. Now I need to activate it. So this is the command. Just write conda activate cancer. All right. Now let me clear. Now what I will do? The first thing I will be adding all the requirements I need. So these are the requirement actually you need. Let me just uh, show you. See. You need first of all TensorFlow and uh, make sure you have specified the version of the TensorFlow. So here we'll be using something called 2.12.0. Uh, this is the TensorFlow version we'll be using. Then uh, I need Pandas, GDown, DBC, MLflow. Okay, and this is the MLflow version I, I will be using. Then these are the some uh, basics packet I, uh, package I will be also installing. Let's say Notebook, NumPy, Matplotlib, Seaborn. Okay, then uh, you can see I have, I have also used Python Box. Okay, and this is the specified version. So what is Python Box? I will uh, discuss. Okay, don't worry about why I'm using Python Box here. Then PyML, TQDM, Ensure. Okay. Then I will also discuss like what is Ensure here. Okay. So these two packages I will be discussing separately because these two packages is like very much needed in this project itself. Okay. And these are the project uh, um, package I think you are already familiar with. Okay. You need it like as a uh, utility package. Uh, you need it. Okay. These are the uh, uh, package itself. Now I also need Flask because I will be creating that uh, UI for you. Okay. I will be creating the Python API. Then I have also specified hyphen e space dot. So why have we specified this hyphen space dot because of this setup.py, okay? Now let me uh, mention the setup.py code. See, yes, this is the code you need to write inside setup.py. So basically, uh, what it will do, it will uh, install uh, everything as your local package, okay? See, it will look for this constructor file everywhere. Uh, each and every folder, it will look for this constructor file. And whenever this constructor file is present, that means this folder should be my local package. So this uh, folder should be considered as my local package itself. Okay, so that is why this setup tools will automatically install this thing. Okay, uh, for you. Now here you can specify the repository name. Okay, so this is my repository name. This is my author name. You can give your author name. Okay, then this is my source repo. Make sure you are giving this name only. Okay, uh, your project name itself, CNN classifier. The name you have mentioned inside template.py. Here, this is the name you need to provide here. Okay. Then uh, you can give your email address. So this is my email address and these are the code actually you need to write. Okay. So you just copy paste the same code I have given. This is the uh, like you can say setup.py template. Okay. I have already prepared for you. Now, uh, whenever I will be executing this requirement.txt file. So basically it will install all the package one by one. Then after that, whenever it will come here. Okay. Hyphen space dot. It will look for the setup.py file and it will install it. Okay. And it will uh, install and it will install all my project as my local package itself. Okay. Whenever I have this constructor file present. Okay. Now let me install it. So let me save the file. Now I'll open my terminal. So let's write pip install requirement.txt. Okay, this is the command you just need to execute. Now let me execute. So it may take some time because TensorFlow, first of all, it will download. So for me, 
uh, it won't be taking any time because I already installed previously. Okay, so that's why it will be using my cache. Okay. So guys, let's wait. It will take some time. Uh, I will come back when it is done. Uh, so guys, you can see uh, my requirements install successfully done and there is no error. That means uh, everything is fine. Okay. So I hope it is also installed uh, in your system successfully. Okay. There, is, there should be, uh, there should not be any error. Now, uh, yeah, this thing is done. Now let me commit the changes. Uh, so I will open my, uh, I'll open my terminal again. So let me clear. So I'll just write git add. Then git commit hyphen m and uh, I'll just write requirements add it and then git push origin main. All right, it's done. Now let's go back and refresh it here. You will see the last commit you have did. Okay. See, this is the last commit you have done. Now, uh, what I will do? So, guys, now what I will do? I already set up my uh, packages and everything. My environment is ready. Now, the first thing what I will do? I will be creating my a uh, logging exception and utility module. Okay. Uh, these are the module actually you need at the very first phase. Okay. Uh, before implementing your actual code. So, if you expand this SRC folder, CNN classifier. See here, I haven't created any kinds of logger and exception uh, folder separately. Okay, why I haven't created because I because I want to create it in a separate uh, technique. Uh, here I'll be following because see if we create uh, this uh, folder, it's completely fine. But today I will show you another way to create this logging and exception. Okay, so I won't be creating exception separately because I already told you I'm using something called box Python box uh, library. So uh, it has already exception functionality. Okay, so I'll be using that Python box exception here. Okay. So here I will be creating only uh, logging and utility related functionality. So first of all, I will be creating my logging. Okay. So to create the logging inside SRC folder, you can see you have CNN classifier inside that you have one constructor file. Okay. You can see this underscore underscore unit underscore underscore dot pi. Now let me open this file. So basically I'll be writing my logging functionality here. Okay. So that I can import it very easily. Okay. I will show you like how to import it. So I already prepared this uh, logging functionality for you. See, this is the basics logger. Uh, First of all, I'm importing logging. I'm using this Python pre-built logging. On top of it, I'm making it as custom logging. Okay. This is my logging string. First of all, it will uh, save the ASCII time, then the log label. Okay. I already told you what is log label and all. Then it will also save the module name, like which uh, uh, file you are running from. Okay. Let's say I have run this. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, this one. Let's say I have run from this uh, setup.py or let's say template.py. It will tell, tell you like from template.py. Okay. This is the line number. Okay. It's running. So everything it will give you inside this modules. Then also it will provide the masses for you. Okay. What is the log masses? Then I'm creating one directory here called logs. Inside that I'll be creating one uh, like file called running log. Okay. So in this running dot dot log, it will save all the log. Then I'm creating this uh, folder here. Okay. Then once it is done, I'm defining my uh, logging configuration. So here you need to specify the level name and the format. So this is the format I prepared already here. Then handlers you need to also mention. So this uh, file handlers will basically it will create this uh, log folder running log file and it will save the log inside the folder and this stream handler what it will do it will also print that log in your terminal itself okay both way you can log then after that you need to uh, define the logging uh, object then you need to just call this logging dot get logger and you need to specify the name of the log okay so you can give any name here i have given cnn classifier logger okay so this is your simple custom log you need to write now let me uh, show you like how to uh, how this log will be working so for this i will be creating a one file here new file called let's say i will name it as main.file okay now let's import the log here logger here so how to import uh, it is inside my src folder so i'll just write from src okay from src uh, dot cnn classifier okay then you have this constructor file and inside that you have this logger okay so you can directly import like that import uh, something called logger okay logger 
but see again here what you are doing you are calling this src okay you are calling this src separately but i have mentioned my logging functionality inside my constructor file okay so now let's say if i import it like that as well so from cnn classifier cnn this is the name it's not coming because you haven't selected the current environment so right right hand side you can see it is selected my base environment now let's select my current environment i created so i created something called uh, cancer i think let me refresh so where is the cancer so this is the cancer okay i will be selecting this environment okay now this error will disappear after some time okay now let me clear it now if i write from cnn now see see this cnn classifier is coming because it has installed the cnn classifier as my local package in this environment okay from cnn classifier import logger if i do it see it will also work logger see it is also working that means whenever you are defining your logging instead of in the folder itself logging folder itself inside the constructor file you can import directly like that from cnn classifier import logger okay because it is present inside my constructor file you don't need to specify the exact location of the logger okay so that's the convenience of creating the logger inside that file so now i will remove this one and i'll be using this one because this thing is like very uh easy to understand okay see very easy to import this thing from cnn, CNN classifier import logger okay instead of writing src every time all right now let me show you the logger how it will work so i'll just write logger dot info and let's give one message here welcome to cnn classifier okay so this is the message that i'll be giving now let me execute this main.py so i'll open my terminal again now here let me clear it i'll just write python main.py now if I execute it now see first of all it will print the log inside your terminal okay so now let's go back to our log and let me show you whether this format is correct or not okay see first of all it will uh save your ascii time see this is the current date and time it will save then it is telling it is the information related log or information level log because i told you this would be information level log okay and it is running from main main file okay this is the main file it is running from and this is the message welcome to my cnn classifier okay so this is the message that means it is working perfectly okay now left hand side you can see it has created another so guys uh, now left hand side you can see it has created another folder called logs okay and inside that it has created one file called running underscore logs dot log now let me open this file and see the same thing you can see here whatever thing you can see in your terminal okay first of all it will save the ascii time then uh, the level of the log then the file you have run from and the message you actually you have printed okay welcome to uh, cnn classifier that means my logging functionality is working fine and see guys why you need the logging because let's say whenever you'll be deploying this code in the production they are actually you won't be getting any kinds of terminal okay and let's say you got one error from your code itself and if you want to debug this code okay at the time you you should go with this logs okay and you see you, you should see like what are the logs actually generated by your code itself okay why do you got the error which line you got the error okay using exception and logging actually you would be able to debug your code very easily okay but if you are not integrating these are the model with your project okay it would be very much difficult for you to debug your code like what is the error is going on inside your code okay so that's why i always create this logging functionality separate okay and exception functionality separate now this logging is working fine now let's prepare my utility related functionality so for this so for this there is a utils uh, folder i have created let's open the utils folder inside that i'll be creating one file called common common.py okay so here i'll be mentioning all my utility related code okay so first so guys first of all let me tell you what is utility okay see utility is nothing but those functionality you will be using frequently in your code okay we call it as utility related functionality okay see instead of writing them again and again inside my components okay if we can create this uh, function inside the utils folder or let's say this uh, commons.py and whenever i need it okay i will be importing inside my components it itself okay from here itself so that's why uh, those functionality will be using frequently in our code instead of writing them separately i can store it in in just one folder or let's say one file and whenever i need it okay i'll be importing from the file itself okay so that that's why we call it utility related functionality now let me tell you what are the utility related functionality you need here so the first thing i'll be importing some of the libraries here so these are the libraries actually you need uh box exception see i already told you i'll be using something called box uh, exception okay this is the box value exception package i'll be using to handle my exception itself then yaml uh why you need yaml i will tell you then cnn concept see i'm importing my logger itself json job lib okay ensure annotation i will tell you like what is what is ensure annotation even i will also tell you what is config box 
and i think you already know this path okay why i'm using this path because i want to prevent this windows path issue okay then typing then uh, base 64 i will tell you like what are the things actually i have de uh, defined here so let me first of all write all the utility related function i have prepared here so let me write them here so uh, you can see here so the first function actually i have prepared which is nothing but read yaml okay so see guys uh whenever we try to create any kind of end-to-end -end project okay we uh prepare some of the configuration file as you can see i have prepared my params.yml then here i also created config inside that i have created config.yml so i also need to manage the yaml file okay inside yaml file i'll be writing all the configuration and i'll be reading it here so to read it i need this function so it will only take the path of this configuration file and it will return everything okay everything uh, as a config box type output as you can see i'm defining as config box type output and what is config bo box type output i will tell you so as of now just try to consider this function will take any kinds of yaml file path and it will return the content inside that okay and see read yaml actually we need inside our every component okay see instead of writing this function again and again inside my every components like let's say inside data ingestion prepare based model model trainer i will keep this read yaml here and whenever i need it okay i will just import it from here so i'll just write from src.utils import uh, from common import my read yaml okay that's how i'll be importing okay instead of writing again and again then i also need create directories okay i'll be creating like rtpx inside that i'll be creating data ingestion then i'll be creating my um, model trainer these are the folder i'll be creating right and to create the folder i also need this create directories uh, uh i mean you can say uh, method okay so that's why i prepared inside my uh, common itself that means inside my util itself okay and every function i have defined see this ensure annotation decorator okay what is this ensure annotation decorator i will tell you why i have given this one okay now load json let's say if you are if you have any uh, json file you can load it then you if you want to save any uh, like object as a binary format you can save it okay using this fu function then if you want to let's say load any kinds of binary object you can use this uh, function to load the binary object let's see if you want to get the size of any kinds of file you can use this function let's say if you want to decode any kinds of image or let's say encode any kinds of image you can use these are the two function okay uh, so why encode and decode image is needed so guys i think you remember whenever i was uploading the image in my uh, uh, like user interface okay at that time uh, what what was happening actually at that time see it was not directly passing inside my backend so whenever user will pass any kinds of image first of all it will uh encode the image okay it will encode the image to the base 64 string then it will decode the image okay uh, it will again uh, convert it to jpc format and it will do the prediction and after that it will again convert to base 64 string and it will return okay that's how uh using this encode image to base 64 and decode image you can do the encode and decode operation okay so that is why whenever you are um, passing everything so whenever you are passing any kinds of image from the html page itself so you can't pass directly okay you need to convert it to base 64 string first of all and using these are the function you can do it okay so these are the uh, utility function i need in this project okay i already mentioned here some of them i won't be using i just kept just for your reference if you need it uh, later on you can use it okay now see guys now let me uh, explain like what is this ensure annotation and what is this config box i have um, initialized it here okay so guys these two uh, libraries like uh, new uh, newly just uh, developed and uh, i thought uh, i can use this package in my code so that uh, my i can write like more production grade code here okay why uh, let me tell you okay so, so guys now let me discuss like what is this uh, ensure annotation and what is this config box okay i have defined uh, with my every function here and one thing i i want to tell you uh, see i haven't created any exception separately so everywhere i am using box ex exception okay as you can see box exception i am using so this is the box value exception okay so uh, you can also create uh, exception uh, uh, functionality separately it's completely fine but but here using box exception actually you can handle this kinds of issue okay there is no issue with that now to explain this config box and and ensure annotation uh, i'll be going to my notebook experiment okay so in the research folder i created one file called trials.ib1b let me open this file okay so the first thing here i will be selecting my kernel python environment and uh, this is the cancer okay this is the environment i have all right so here first of all let me explain what is a config box okay so for this i will define one dictionary here okay so let me define one dictionary so i will take one key value so here i'm i've just prepared uh, like key value as a dummy okay let's say this is a key this is the value okay i haven't given any value here just let's say key value then i also want another key i'll name it as key one and again i will take one value one 
value one okay so this is my dictionary okay now let me execute see this is my python dictionary now let's say i want to access this value okay so how i need i need, I need to access this value inside python okay whenever you are doing uh using dictionary so you usually uh, uh, write like that so you will just write d then inside that you will just give the key name right this is the key name you will be giving and if you give the key name it will return return you the value okay but let's say i want to ex uh, uh, i want to extract this value like that okay uh, d dot key okay now just tell me uh will it work okay just see pause the video and try to think about will it work or not okay now let me execute and let me see see it won't be working it's telling dict object has no attribute key but although it has the key but i can't pass the key like that okay you need to pass the key like that then it will work but let's say whenever i i will define some lots of configuration uh this app should be a little bit hard for me to uh, extract the key every time okay so if i can uh, convert this thing like that just i will write my object and i will call with the key and it will return me the value okay this should be very much easy for me to get the configuration okay so to convert it like that you need one package called config box so just write from box okay it should be box import config box this is the uh, class i have imported from uh, box box itself okay now here i'll be defining the same dictionary here i'll be, let me copy paste i'll name it as d2 okay now i'll just write my config box and inside that i'll give this d2 now see the magic see now this simple dictionary has been converted to my config box type okay you can see here now if i write d2 uh, first of all let's let me store this thing in the d2 okay now if i print it so it should be d2 okay now if i write d2 dot key now if i press enter see it's giving me the value okay now see using config box i converted okay this approach okay instead of using this approach now i can call any kinds of like uh, key let's say i want to call this key one so it will return me the value one see okay that means i have uh, made things like very easy using this config box okay now here if you see everywhere uh, whenever i'm returning my yaml content okay i'm returning as config box type output okay because i think you know whenever you load yaml file it will return you as a dictionary format okay and that dictionary i'm converting to config box type so that i can uh, take the value like that i will just only call the keys and it will return me the value okay so that's why everywhere i have defined this config box okay now let me uh, explain like what is this ensure annotation i'm using here okay so for this i'll take a new cell and here i will write one uh, basics function let's say i'll define as get product get underscore product okay so it will take two input x and this x type should be integer okay then it will take another input called y and it should be also integer okay basically it will calculate the product okay of these two value then inside that it will just return the product of it uh, x multiplied by y okay that's it so this is a simple python function called get product i have defined here okay now let's say if i call this get product and uh, if i pass x is equal to 2 or y is equal to let's say 3 so what would be the product it would be uh, 2 multiplied by 3 uh, it would be 6 okay now let me see whether it's returning 6 or not so i'll just execute see it's returning 6 that means it's working fine okay now what i will do i'll copy the same function again and instead of using integer okay instead of giving integer let's say if i give 3 now just pause the video and think about it will it work okay now let me execute see guys it is still working okay although i have mentioned your uh like input should be integer but i'm giving string value but it is working here okay now see you have written a very big project and you have done this kinds of mistake and you are getting unexpected output at that time you will go mad but like what is happening in my code right so to prevent this kinds of error we can use something called ensure annotation okay so now let me import ensure annotation so from um, ensure import you have something called ensure annotation this is the class you need to import okay 
now i'll copy the same function and see you just need to make the decorator of the insurance addition here on top of the function okay now i've men mentioned the decorator now see if i call the first call first function call it will work it will work fine okay because i have given two number as integer okay now if i call the second one again see it will throw error so it's uh, giving ensure error it's telling argument y type of that does not match with the annotation type see it's telling you have mentioned integer here but you are trying to put a string value here that's why it's giving the error okay so see using this ensure annotation you can prevent this kinds of error and you can make your code more produ uh, like production grade okay see in production actually if you do this kinds of small small mistake okay th this should be like the major issue there so to prevent this kinds of issue you can use these are the packages okay uh, let's say uh, config box you have then you have the sensual annotation and you can prevent these kinds of uh like you can see issue okay i hope this thing is clear like why i'm using everywhere this sensual annotation basically i'm see everywhere i'm you know like i'm making this as a uh i mean data type okay see everywhere i'm define the data type of the input of the function okay so that is why i'm defining this insurance annotation so whenever user will uh, uh like pass some uh, invalid data type it will throw the error uh like this thing is not uh, correct okay now i hope this thing is clear like what is the insurance annotation and what is uh, this uh, config box okay now uh our uh login exception and utility we have successfully prepared now let me save this file and let me just quickly push the changes so i'll open my terminal again now I'll just write git add git commit um I'll just write uh, utils exception and logger added then git push origin main All right, it's done. Now let's go back and refresh the page here. See guys, it's done, okay? Now guys, what I will uh, do, we have successfully prepared our uh, like uh, logging exception and utility. Now we can start with our actual comp uh, like component implementation. But before that, I will tell you the project overflow actually will be following because you can see here we have lots of folder structure. Okay, lots of folders and file. Now, one question would be in your mind which file or which folder I need to change at the very first page. Okay, so I will give the project uh, uh, overflow first of all, like from where you need to start, then I will start with my component implementation. So, guys, now let's discuss our project workflows uh, will be following. So, here uh, in the readme file, I will be writing one by one so let me just write it down uh yeah see guys so the first uh, thing actually uh what we're gonna do in this uh in this project because as you can see here we have lots of file okay we have lots of files and folder now whenever uh we'll be implementing our entire uh modular coding so the first file i need to change which is nothing but config.yml okay so as you can see there is a config.yml file i have created so this file i need to change at the very first then uh, if you have any kinds of secret.yml file, that file you can basically change that. So let's say uh, if you are using any kinds of database or let's say any kinds of a secret credential which you don't want to share with your, uh, you can say uh, users. So what you can do, you can keep those are the things inside secret.yml and that file you can upgrade. But in this project actually I'm not going to use any kinds of uh, secret file. So what I will do, uh, I'll, I'll, I won't be using this thing. So that's why I have kept it as optional. Let's say if you are using this secret.yml file, in this case, you can update this secret.yml file. Then the third file I need to update, which is nothing but uh, params.yml. So here I need to upgrade this uh, params.yml. So inside params, actually, I'll be defining all of my model related parameter. Then I'll be updating my entity. Okay, as you can see, we have created one folder called entity. And inside the entity, actually, I need to upgrade my code. And what is entity? What is parameter? What is config? I will be discussing each and everything. You don't need to worry about. Just be with me. First of all, let's just try to understand our project workflows. Then once you are done with that, okay, then I will start with our component uh, implementation. Then guys, what I need to do, I need to upgrade my configuration manager in SRC config. So here if you see, I have one config folder. Inside that I have configuration.py. So basically I need to upgrade this configuration.py file. Then 
after configuration pi file i need to upgrade my component component is nothing but uh, our data ingestion model preparation okay model training model evaluation so these are the thing i need to upgrade then once we have done with our component finally i will be upgrading my pipeline okay as you can see we have created another folder here called pipeline and inside that i'll be creating all of my training and prediction pipeline okay then once pipeline is done then i will uh, create my endpoint which is nothing but main.py okay in this case as of now uh, this should be my main.py so whenever i'll be adding my user app at that time i will be creating app.py but as of now let's say if i want to execute my training pipeline i'll be just calling this main.py and it will execute my entire training pipeline for me then once my main.py is done then finally I will be updating my dbc.eml file okay so, because at the very last I will be updating my dbc because uh, to upgrade your dbc you first of all need to uh, complete all the pipelines then you would be able to upgrade the dbc so yes guys this is my complete project workflows okay as you can see so we'll be following this particular file and we'll be upgrading our code one by one so guys uh, now what I will do uh, I have already discussed the project work workflows now let's first of all start with our first component which is nothing but data ingestion uh, but before that let me show you the data set actually i will be using in this uh, example so guys uh, this is the data set actually i have collected so i have here uh, adenocarcinoma uh, this uh, chest cancer image if you see this is the ct scan of your chest so here i have around 195 image and with respect to that i also have my normal chest ct scan image okay so basically this uh, both classes i have here so i need to classify whether this so basically here we just need to classify whether this chest is a, a normal chest or it is affected with the adenocarcinoma cancer okay i think i have already given the problem statement and guys uh, see i only kept around 148 uh, or let's say 65 um, training example here so whenever you are training your actual model at the time just increase the data size okay you need to uh, take like more amount of data to get a good performance from your model otherwise actually your model might not work okay in the production so here i'm giving you as a demo that's why i'm using uh, a very uh, less data set here because i want a quick training for my system okay and from where actually you can collect the data set guys uh you just if you just uh, search an internet like let's say if i want just ct scan image just a CT scan uh, data okay if I search it so there you will get lots of website even see uh, Kaggle is also having this kinds of data set so you can directly download the data from the Kaggle itself also okay so uh, I will share my data set with you so you can directly uh, download my data I will give the link okay with uh, with this config file and all so that you, you can directly download my data otherwise you can also download from your side so guys uh yeah this is the data set now what i have done guys i have just created one zip file okay what i did actually i'm using here seven zip uh you can also use seven zip and i have made a one zip file called chess city scan data.zip okay and that zip file what i have done i have just uploaded in my google drive okay see here i have created one folder called data inside that i have updated this zip file so why i have updated my data in the google drive because i want to read my data from the google drive itself okay so in this case actually you can use uh data database or let's say uh, three bucket you can use any of the services it's up to you but i want to use uh, as much as free services i can okay that is why i won't be using any kind of paid database or let's say s3 bucket i want to re reduce my cost that is why i will be using google uh, drive to read my data set because google drive is completely free for me and here you will getting 15 gb free space uh, so it's like more than enough i think to keep your data at least okay so in this video uh, project actually i will show you how we can read the data from the google drive itself okay so yes guys you need to update your data let's say if you are collecting your data you can update your data like that in the google drive itself now what i will do i will open my code and here in the trials.ipunb first of all i will show you the experiment like how we can uh, let me take one cell so here first of all i will show you one experiment like how we can download uh, download data from g drive okay first of all i will show you the experiment then if this experiment is working fine then i will try to develop it in my modular coding okay so first of all let me select the kernel i am using chest this one okay now let me execute uh, i think it's not working so let me uh, it should be a markdown one i think yeah markdown now i'll copy yeah now let me remove this cell then i will take one code cell here okay so here so here the first package actually i'm going to import which is nothing but g down g down so this is the package actually uh, if you see i already added this package inside my requirement.txt i think 
you down yeah so this package i have already updated in my requirement.txt so using this package actually i will be uh, downloading my data from the google drive itself first of all let me import it then what i will do i will uh, provide my url actually so basically the url actually um, here so let's say i have uploaded my data set inside my google drive now i need to collect the url so i'll just right click and click on the share and copy the link okay now this link should be uh, anyone with this link okay otherwise uh, you can't download the data set so this link should be public okay uh, it, uh, by default it should be restricted so you need to make this uh, uh, one anyone with this link now i will copy the link address then i will go back to my code and here i will paste it out okay so this is my complete link link of this file now guys one thing you actually you can see from this url so this is the google drive url as you can see google.com then file d now here this part of uh, things actually we call it uh, file id okay so if you copy any kinds of file from google drive you will get this different different file id okay different different file id so guys here this file id would be different okay for each and every file you will be copying from the google drive itself so the file actually i have copied from my google drive so this is the id for this particular file itself okay so what i can do i can use this id to download the date uh, download the um, zip file okay from my google drive uh, in my local system okay how we can do it so first of all i need to extract this id okay how i can extract this id so i think you know this is a string so let me show you the type of this variable if i print this url so it's a string okay now i can do some string slicing operation here so i'll just write url dot uh, i think you know there is a function called split so i'll do the split with respect to this forward slash okay because if you see it is separated by forward slash okay now i'll give the forward slash here now if i press enter see it will give me all uh all the words okay as a list okay if you see first of all it is coming http then drive google.com then file okay so here i want this this id actually uh the second last one so what i can do here if i give the id let's say i want to access the second last one now it will give me the id complete id of it okay now i'll store it in a variable i'll just write file underscore id and this should be my file id then i'll print it here i'll just print it here it's my file id now see guys this is my complete file id now what i need to do i need to uh, define one prefix okay prefix is nothing but it's a download url okay uh, from the google drive itself so let me show you so whenever let's say i want to download this particular zip file so what i will do uh, manually i'll just click on this download button so if you click on the download button here you will see it will generate this particular prefix uh, prefix url okay so using this prefix url we can easily download anything from my google drive itself but one particular things actually you need here which is nothing but the id if you see here id is equal to nothing so here i just need to add my id if i add my id so it will download that particular file from my google drive itself okay now what i will do i'll write one particular code here so here i'll just add this prefix id uh, okay with this uh, file id if you see here this is my prefix with that actually i'm adding my file id now this file id will come here now i will be able to download the data using this download method okay from the gdown itself and this is the name of the zip file okay i'm providing now let me execute and show you how it will download the data now guys i have executed my code and uh, you will see it's downloading the data from my google drive itself and the size is like 49 mb so let's wait okay uh, here if you see it's downloading the data in this uh, resource folder and it's still downloading that's why some random name is coming once it is downloaded you will be able to see the data set here uh, so guys as you can see uh, it's done so progress bar it is showing like 100 percent now if i show you my folder so here it is in the resource folder so see guys my chest ct scan uh, data.zip file has been downloaded from the google drive itself okay now you can unzip it and you can see your data so we are able to uh like download our, our data from the google drive itself using this technique okay okay now what i will do i will try to implement this technique in my code so the first thing i will create one uh, uh notebook file inside resource folder i will name it as uh, 01 uh, data underscore ingestion okay ingestion dot ip y n b because this is going to be my first stage okay that's why i have given zero one data ingestion uh, uh ip y n b okay now here the first thing i need to connect my uh kernel so this is my kernel and uh, let me save this file also yeah so here first of all i'll be importing uh, operating system package 
okay why i need to import operating system package because if you see if i show you my current working directory project working directory pwd pwd so i'm inside resource folder okay if you see here i'm inside uh, resource folder okay which is nothing but uh, let me show you manually see i'm inside this resource folder currently okay so what i need to do uh, i need to go back to my project folder okay if i want to uh, let's say execute my uh, code okay if i want to access these are the configuration file and all so what i need to do i need to go back to this project folder which is nothing but this end-to-end -end, uh, just cancel classification using mlflow and dbc okay so to go back uh, here what i need to do i need to use uh, this os dot change directory okay chdir if i write it now here you just need to uh, provide one uh, symbol here just like dot 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 slash okay if you give this symbol so what you will do it will uh, uh, like automatically go back uh, one folder back okay now let me show you so if i execute this code and now if i again just show you my pwd now see guys i'm inside my project folder itself okay i'm inside my project folder itself okay now what i will do uh i think i already upgraded in my read, read me first of all i need to upgrade this config.yml file okay so now let me open this config.yml file and here let me mention my data ingestion related configuration because this is my data ingestion experiment i am doing now here so guys this is my data ingestion related configuration okay so here basically what i'm writing i'm writing artifacts root is equal to artifacts okay so what will happen actually whenever i will execute my component okay whenever i will execute my component it will generate some of the artifacts that say if i am running my data ingestion component so what it will do it will download the data from the url itself you see this is my same url i'm giving here so that data set where it will save okay why it will save i can't save this data set in my project directory okay i need a particular folder to store that data set so that is why i'll be creating one folder called artifacts because whenever you are creating end-to-end -end project and whenever your uh, component is uh, generating something we call it as artifacts okay that is why i'm creating this folder as artifacts inside that i'm creating another root folder called data ingestion if you see this is my data ingestion related configuration okay if you know a little bit of yaml file so this is the like you can say the format of the yaml file so this is basically my key and this is basically my value okay so this is my key this is my value so uh, that's how we can uh, call by the key if i want to get the value okay now inside that if you see here inside artifacts i'm creating another folder called data ingestion inside data ingestion this is my source url that means download uh, like data url link and uh, after downloading i will save my data set as a data.zip inside my data ingestion folder and once i will unzip the data set it will save inside my data ingestion folder again okay so this is the some variable i have defined here instead of hard coding them inside my component i have kept in this config.yml file so that let's say in future i am changing this uh, path actually or let's say i'm changing my data url so i don't need to go go inside my code and i don't need to change it there i'll just only open my config.yml file and i will change it here and it will reflect in my every code okay so that is why so that is why guys this code management is like really important things whenever you are trying to create any kinds of end-to-end -end project okay instead of writing so guys instead of hard code them in your code what you can do you can uh, create these are the configuration file and you can keep these are the variable here only okay so this is my data ingestion related configuration i have created now the second thing what i need to do i need to create uh, a secret i'm not using i need to upgrade my params.yml now let's open my params.yml and here let me add some uh, dummy key value pair because if you keep this file as empty it will throw error so that's why i'll just give key val okay so i'm just given some random key val here uh, i've just written key val so that actually whenever i'll execute my entire code okay whenever i load this params.yml file it won't be throwing any kinds of error to me okay that's why i'll i'll give this a key val here and later on wherever i'll be defining my model i'll be replacing the model related parameter here okay training model related parameter here now this thing is updated also now what i need to do i need to upgrade my entity okay now let me open my data ingestion this ipynv file and let me create my entity okay so i already created my entity guys let me show you so what is entity i'll explain right now see guys here i have created one data class okay if you see here this is the data class i have created uh this is the data class decorator i have defined on top of this class okay and inside that i have written some of the variable the same variable i have defined inside my config.yml so this uh entity is nothing but this is the return type of a function okay let's say whenever you will be creating your uh, data ingestion uh, you can say uh, uh, configuration at that time what are the configuration it will return it will decide actually this entity will decide because in the entity itself i have only uh, written root directory source url local data file and unzip directory which i have written inside my data ingestion configuration so these are the configuration it will return apart from that if you are trying to add anything it will throw error 
because here you have already mentioned frozen is equal to true that means you are not allowing to add any more functionality in this data class you have defined and what is data class data class is a class here actually you can define class variable without writing any kinds of self here okay now see i can access these are the class variable okay without writing any kinds of self here from any kinds of file itself okay whenever i'm writing uh, this modular coding okay so that's why this data class we use to create the entity and this should be very much clear whenever i will be defining my component and i will be using this data class here as of now let's consider this is the data class we have created and we call it as entity okay and why we haven't written inside the entity because here i am doing notebook experiment okay once this notebook experiment is completed then i will try to move this code to my modular coding okay so this entity i have already created now let me execute so see guys try to understand just one component in a good way so understanding other component would be very much easy for you okay i will be following the same technique only okay to implement these are the component itself now guys i have already upgraded my uh, entity here now what i need to upgrade i need to upgrade my configuration manager in src config but here i am doing notebook experiment so here i will add these are the configuration okay later on i'll be moving so first of all what i need to do i need to uh, load these are the yaml file i need to read these are the yaml file which is nothing but my config.yaml and my params.yaml so where i can read this file okay i can read it inside my constant okay constant a folder i have created now let me open this constant here so in constant uh here i'll be reading this two file which is nothing but my config.yaml as you can see it is present inside config folder now inside that i have config.yaml and why I'm giving this path because I already told you if you're not giving this path uh, method here. So here I'm using forward slash. So it might create some issue. So that is why it will convert automatically to Windows path. And here I'm also giving my params.yml file path here. Okay. So these two files basically I'm reading here because this is going to be a constant. Okay. This path I won't be changing. This should be constant completely. What is constant mean? Constant mean if you are not changing anything in this variable so this should be com completely constant. So that's why we are creating inside the constant one. Okay. Now these two file. I need to import inside my data uh, data injection IPYNB. So what I will do, I'll just write uh, from CNN classifier, CNN uh, classifier, classifier uh, dot constant because it is present inside constant. Okay, I think I already showed you it is present inside constant. Import star. Okay, import star means whatever things actually what are the variables I have inside this constant. Okay constant this uh, constructor file just try to import everything here okay try to import everything here now i can access this both file i can access this both variable config file path and my parents file path easily here okay now with respect to that why what i need also i need uh, from my utils itself okay let me open this common.py i need to import this read yaml and this create directories okay Th these two method i'll be using in this component so i'll just write from cnn classifier uh, dot utils dot common uh, import read yaml read underscore uh, yaml and i also need create directories okay these two uh, function i'll be importing uh, from this uh, utils i have created okay now i'll start with my uh, configuration creation okay so to create the configuration again i'll come here and here i'll create one uh, class here called configuration manager here if you see i've created one class called configuration manager inside that if you see here i'm storing these two uh, file path okay if i show you this uh, constant see this two file path i'm storing inside my class variable if i show you inside class variable i'm storing this two path and if you just press ctrl and click on it see it will it is redirecting here because i'm able to access this uh, two variable because of this star because i have imported everything from this file itself right so that is why this two uh, path is coming here this two variable is coming here okay now i'm storing inside class variable now what i will do i will use this read yaml to read this particular yaml file because if you give something in the read yaml method okay as we created here so what it will do it will return as a config box basically it will return as a dictionary and dictionary would be convert to config box as i already discussed what is a config box type output okay how we can access these are the thing in my trials.ipyb right so that is why i am uh, reading as a uh, as a yaml file and i'm storing inside configs and uh, also i'm reading params.yaml file i'm uh, storing as a inside params variable okay now these two things i have now the first thing what i need to do i need to create this artifacts folder okay how I can create the artifacts folder? Now, if I open my config.yaml file, so what is the key name of the artifacts? Okay, it is nothing but artifacts underscore root. Now, here, if you see here, I'm calling this config dot artifacts root because inside config, I have now all the configuration. Now, I'll just call with the key. So, if I call this artifacts root, so what, I, what it will happen? It will uh, create this artifacts root for me. Okay, 
this artifex folder would be created here okay and how i'm creating i'm passing inside this create directories okay this function i have imported from here okay so once this folder has been created now what i will do i will define my data ingestion related configuration now let me show you uh see guys this is my data ingestion related configuration okay and this is the method i have written and this is the return type of this method okay now while i'm getting the return type this return type i think you remember we have mentioned here which is nothing but my entity okay and what are the things it will return it will only return this four value only okay now if you see inside that i'm only returning this four value now guys how i'm getting this uh, four value so if you see here i'm storing this uh, config data ingestion that means if i am ca i'm calling this keys if i'm calling this keys this four value would be come here this four value this four, four value would be stored here inside my config then after that what i'm doing i'm creating the root directory at the very first which is nothing but my data ingestion folder okay inside artifacts i'm creating data ingestion folder right then what i'm doing i'm storing first of all my root directory okay which is nothing but this one root directory this value i'm storing if you see here this value i'm storing then after that i'm also storing my source url config.source url okay see config.source url now i'm also storing my local data file okay Lo local data file path which is nothing but this one now after that i'm also storing my zip file directory okay zip directory which is nothing but this one okay so one by one all the four values i have stored here and i have created one object here called data ingestion config okay now this object i am returning as a data ingestion config here and this is the return type i have already defined here now guys i think you got it what is the return type of a function why we use this entity or to create our custom entity okay to create our custom return type of a function now see guys if i open my commons so here this is the return type i have de uh, defined in my function okay again uh, if you see here uh, this is my re return type again if you see this is the uh, string type return type so basically these are the uh, pre-built actually uh, return type they have already given okay that's why you are able to do it but here we don't have any kinds of return type of our function that is why we created our custom return type here using the entity here and these are the return type okay i'm initializing inside my function only now guys my data uh, configuration manager is ready okay see this is my configuration manager class this is the master class and inside that i created this data, get data ingestion config now whenever i need any kinds of value for my data ingestion i will call from here only and i will use it in my code right now let me execute this thing now guys uh, i have done this configuration creation now i need to create the component okay component is nothing but my data ingestion component okay basically here i will again create one class called data ingestion okay this is the data ingestion and it will take the configuration which is nothing but data ingestion related configuration and where you will get the configuration you will get the configuration from here in this class itself right so this uh, method you need to pass here okay this will uh, take this method only and i'm storing again inside my config cell dot config okay now here the first method i'll be using called download data see guys this is the first method i have defined here called download data so here i also need to i think import login so let me import some of the file here uh, see guys to create the component you need uh, these are the actually package here okay so here i'm not using request i'll be removing request from here so i'll be using zip file uh, because uh, after downloading the data i also need to perform the unzip operation then i did g down okay because i need to download my data from the google drive and logger i also need because i'll be logging the information and get size basically i also want to see the size of the file okay that's why i need these are the thing from my common itself now guys this is the class i have written called data ingestion and inside that i have defined one uh, method called download file okay download file what it will do see guys i have written the same code i have written inside my trials.ipyand file okay the same code i have written if you see i'm just downloading the data from the github url itself using this prefix id and g down so here if you see here i'm i've written the same code only just in a function okay just in a functional way first of all i am getting my data set url use uh, from my config itself because if you see here inside my config get data ingestion config i have this source url okay that is what i'm calling here source url and from my, where i'm getting config i'm getting config from here and this config this uh, class will accept okay this class will accept now see guys this is my data url then after that i'm uh, like initializing my zip file download directory basically where it will download so here it will download let me show you it will download inside uh this uh this folder okay data ingestion folder got it then what i'm defining i'm defining a zip file download directory basically i'm defining this path uh local data file path that's really key. it will download this data as a data.zip so that is what i'm defining here then after that i'm just creating my directory artifacts uh 
like slash data in session okay if it is not exist it will create otherwise it will create uh, it won't be creating then after that i'm logging the information like data is downloading from this url and all then i'm uh, creating this uh, file id i'm extracting the id of the file then i'm initializing my prefix okay with that i'm adding uh, my id and i'm downloading the data set and after that i'm just logging the information my data has been downloaded so this is the simple python code i have just written and uh, i followed the same technique uh, same technique i'm doing but i've just written in a modular way okay so now what i will do and at the last i'm also handling the exception okay now what i will do uh, this thing is done now after downloading the data i also need to unzip the data right so again i have prepared another method inside this class called extract zip file okay so this is the method i prepared now what it is doing again it is taking the unzip path basically this path it will take and and now what it will do it will create the uh, like you can say uh, path here in the inside your artifacts and with the help of this zip file it will unzip the data okay it will unzip the data to the path you have assigned okay and using this ways.make directory is what it will happen it will create this unzip directory if it is not exist it will create this unzip directory okay now once unzip directory is created i'll i'm using zip file and zip file uh, method and inside that you need to provide the path of the zip so why the path so this is the path actually local data file path okay this is the complete path so this is what i'm giving here so it will take that zip file and it will unzip inside my data ingestion and after that i'm just uh, finishing the function that's it now let me execute this entire class now guys this thing is also done now what i need to do finally i need to upgrade my pipeline okay now here what is should be the pipeline so pipeline is nothing but it's just a uh, step wise uh, calling method okay see if you see, see here first of all i'm initializing my configuration manager okay which is nothing but this configuration manager uh, because why i have initialized because i want to get this data condition related configuration this data ingestion related configuration okay see i'm storing this get data ingestion configuration now i'm initializing my data ingestion class and this class will take data ingestion configuration so i'm giving this uh, data ingestion configuration inside this class and the first method i'm calling which is nothing but my download uh, file so first of all download will happen then after that i'm calling extract zip file okay if you see i'm calling extract zip file so this is my pipeline here i'm calling step by step okay now let's say if i'm calling extract zip file at the very first and download or uh, file at the very last what will happen it will throw me error like there is no zip file present right so that is why always i need to follow one step to run my code and we, we call it as a pipeline okay steps uh, step wise um, running we call it as a pipeline okay now let me execute and show you whether it is able to download my data set or not now let me execute see guys it's giving one error so yaml file is empty uh okay so i haven't saved this file actually i need to save this config file now again i will come here again i will restart the runtime now let me execute the code again i think it should work i will run all the cell now guys i think it should work see guys it has started downloading the data and it has created this artifacts folder inside that if you see here it has created this data ingestion okay data ingestion has been created and inside that this data the zip file is downloading again it's downloading that's why you can see some random name so once download is complete you will able to see the data the zip file and uh, it will also unzip the data okay and you will able to see your uh, image here now let's wait guys uh, so guys as you can see my data ingestion is done now if i show you my artifacts see guys data has been downloaded uh, this data the zip and i also executed my extract zip file it has also extracted the zip file and this is your chest uh, data guys see this is the cancer chest and this is the normal chest okay now guys we are able to uh, successfully ingest our data and we have seen like how we can perform this entire notebook experiment okay and it is working completely fine now what i need to do i need to convert this notebook as our modular coding because here i have created so many component okay i need to write as a modular coding so guys here i'm not going to do anything eh? so here i will be just copy pasting the code from my notebook itself okay so the first thing what i need to do i need to upgrade my config so config is already updated i don't need to update this too is already updated i don't need to update here because i am not using secret you can also remove it i need to upgrade my entity so let's update my entity so what i will do uh, there is a folder i have created called entity so inside entity let me create one file called config entity config underscore entity config entity dot pi okay so inside that what i will do let me close these are the file i don't need it okay and here is the another file okay so first of all i will copy this entire entity because this is my entity and i'll paste it inside my config entity okay so this is going to be my entity now entity is updated now what i need to upgrade i need to upgrade my 
configuration manager in src config so what i will do i will uh, go to this config folder here i have configuration.py let me open this file and this is your configuration guys okay now let me first of all import copy the import and paste it here then i will copy this entire class with the function i have created inside that okay now i'll paste it here uh yeah done so anything is missing okay so i need to also upgrade this data ingestion config from my entity so what i will do i'll just write from cnn classifier cnn classifier dot entity i have config entity and inside that i have this data ingestion configuration okay if i show you this uh, config entity this is my data ingestion configuration okay so this thing i need to upgrade here now i will update like that okay so i think everything is fine uh, there is uh, nothing i need to import okay now this thing is also done now what i need to do next i need to upgrade my component okay now let me create my component here so i'll go to this component folder and here i will create one file called data ingestion data underscore uh, ingestion ingestion dot pi okay so here i will copy paste the same code so this is my component code i'll first of all copy the input open the data ingestion paste it here and i will also copy the same class i have created here so you guys this is just a copy paste operation once you have done the notebook experiment okay everything will remain same and i also need to uh, import this data ingestion config from my entity so let me update it so from cnn classifier cnn classifier dot entity dot config entity and import this data sorry import this data ingestion config okay so i hope everything is fine guys uh yes everything is fine now the last thing what i need to do i need to upgrade my pipeline okay so how to upgrade pipeline so again i will go to this pipeline folder and here i will create another uh, file called stays 01 because this is the first stage i'm i'm creating and which is nothing but data ingestion okay so you always need to track your uh, pipeline like which pi pipeline will run first okay so in this case my data ingestion will run first that's why i'm giving as stress 01 data ingestion dot pi so here if you see this is my pipeline so for this i first of all need to import this configuration manager class inside my data ingestion uh stress one data ingestion inside my pipeline so it is present inside my configuration dot pi okay this is the class i need to import so let me import it quickly so i'll just write from cnn classifier cnn classy e classifier dot uh, i have a config just a minute cnn cnn classifier uh, dot uh, config com configuration configuration and i need to import uh, this class actually configuration manager configuration manager okay now once it is done i also need to import my data ingestion class if you see here if i show you my notebook let me open my notebook once mm, i will hmm. See, if i show you my notebook i also need to import my data ingestion class okay because this is my component so let me import it so i'll just write from cnn classifier dot component okay it is inside my component because inside component we have just created i think you remember inside component this is the data ingestion class component dot data ingestion i will import my data ingestion class fine now i also need my logger so write from cnn classifier uh import my logger yeah everything is fine now what i will do uh, i'll just uh, create my pipeline so to create the pipeline first of all i will uh, initialize the stage name okay so this is going to be my uh, data ingestion stage okay here i have given stage name is equal to data ingestion and here i will create one uh, class called data ingestion training pipeline and here i have defined one constructor and in this constructor i'm not doing anything that's why i have given pass and inside that i will be creating another method called def main okay def main because this is going to be my final uh, method this method will run your entire pipeline okay now i will copy this pipeline one by one and i will mention it here that's it okay 
now one particular code you need to write here for your dvc so i think you already know uh, this uh, function in uh, python okay why we use this code because uh, whenever we are writing our code inside uh, underscore underscore name is equal to underscore underscore main so your python will start reading from here and inside that what i'm doing i'm first of all logging this data injection has been started stage name here i'm giving data injection started now i'm here i'm calling this class okay initializing this class and this is the class object and in this class object i'm calling this main.py okay this main and from this class actually uh, i'm calling this main okay if you see main if i'm calling this main so our pipeline will start running okay and once it is done i'm telling this stage has been completed okay and if exception is occurring i'm telling uh exception is occurring here okay so this is the simple uh pipeline i've created okay for my data injection now what i need to do if i want to test it so i'll uh add it inside my main.py okay now i'll open my main.py because main.py will be my endpoint so let me remove these are the code now i'll open my main.py now here first of all you need to uh import some of the library first of all i will import uh, from cnn classifier import logging logger then i also need to import this class actually data injection pipeline from my pipeline itself i'll just write from cnn classifier dot pipeline dot uh, stage 01 data injection and import my data injection pipeline this is the class okay and here i will copy paste the same code i'll uh, come here I'll copy this stage name. I'll paste it here. Then again, I'll come here. And this particular code, I'll copy, copy paste from here only. Copy and paste it. Yeah. So, so yeah, guys, I think everything is fine. See, guys, here what I'm doing. I'm again initializing this uh, training pipeline and this training pipeline has this main uh, function i'm just calling it here and it will start my pipeline and i'm integrating as a endpoint here so now let me test it whether it's working or not so what i will do i will open my project folder and i will remove this artifact as of now because i want to test it so let me open my code and open my terminal and let me zoom a little bit and i'll clear it first of all then let me write python main.py I think it should work. See, guys, I think uh, data injection has started and see it's downloading the data. Again, it has created my artifacts. Okay. And inside artifacts, my data is being downloaded here. Now, let's wait, guys. Uh, so, see, guys, execution is done. Even it is giving the log, this data injection completed. Now, if, if you can also check the log, see all the things you can see here like what are the files uh, it has downloaded what are the directories it has created and this is the my data url everything it has saved right now if i show you my artifacts see guys my data has been also downloaded and this is my data fine now guys my data injection is running perfectly even we have uh seen like how we can create the uh, notebook experiment we have done the notebook experiment at the very first and this notebook experiment we converted as our modular coding okay and we have done nothing guys we just copy pasted the code from my notebook itself now i'll just quickly commit the changes in my github but if you click on the source control you can see it will also push the data because i didn't add my artifacts in my dot git ignore okay because artifacts is also considering inside artifacts i have my data so what i will do i'll open this dot git ignore file and inside that uh, i will add my artifacts folder so i'll just write art artifacts okay art effects i think uh, slash start basically whatever file i have inside artifacts everything it will ignore now if i save it now see guys this file would be changed to 13 because uh, now data has been deleted now what i can do uh, inside uh, this resource i have this zip file i will also remove this one because this thing is not needed so guys now finally we can push our changes so you can directly push push it from here also so just give the message commit message let's say data ingestion added so if you are using vs code uh, this functionality will get now let's do the commit and let's sync the changes sync the changes means you are pushing the changes to the github and if you are doing it for the first time it may ask for some authentication it may tell you just logging with your github and all so once authentic authentication is done you would be able to do it okay and if you are not uh, like trying to do it you can directly push from the terminal also i think i showed you like git add then git commit okay and then git push origin main that's how we can also do it now let me go back to my github and let me refresh the page here uh see guys i think data injection added here 
so guys we have completed our uh, first component which is nothing but data indication now uh, let's try to uh, complete our second one uh, so uh, second one is nothing but our uh, prepare base model uh, because see uh, before starting the training i just need to uh, prepare my base model so basically uh, here i'm going to follow like transfer learning technique so uh, that is why actually i'll be downloading some pretend model okay i'll be downloading one particular pretend model and that particular pretend model i need to customize uh, at the last layer okay i'll tell you like how to do it and all if you have already worked with image classification and if you have already worked with keras uh, so i think you are already know this thing right so for this actually first of all i will uh, create one uh, notebook file here and i will name it as 02 02 underscore prepare uh, base model dot ipynb uh, then here let me select the kernel uh, so this is the kernel i'm using and uh, the same code i'll be copy pasting from my previous notebook so let me close these other thing first of all so first of all i need to change my directory to my root directory so for this i'll be importing operating system package then this is my project working directory currently i'm inside resource then i'll be changing hmm. okay done then uh, i think you remember uh, First of all, we need to change our config.yaml file. So let's open our config.yaml file and we have already added for our data in session one. Now let's add for our prepare base model. So I already prepared for my prepare base model one. Let me show you. Uh, so see guys. So basically here, uh, uh, this is my prepare base model configuration. And here I'm just creating another folder inside artifacts called prepare base modding. Okay inside prepare base model uh, it will first of all download the base model okay download the base model from the keras application then uh, i just need to upgrade that model okay i just need to upgrade the model uh, like at the last layer we'll be doing the upgrade basically i will be just keeping the convolutional layer and uh, this fc layer actually i'll try to remove okay and i will try to add my own fc layer there okay and uh, that model actually i'll be calling like base mod uh, model underscore updated dot h5 model okay so whatever uh things actually i'm telling let's try to discuss uh, on my blackboard okay then i think this should be clear what i'm trying to do so first of all what i will do i will take this vg16 architecture so basically here the model i'm going to use which is nothing but vg16 you can also use any other model it's completely fine so here i will take one image so let's say this is my vg16 layer it has 16 layer uh, now i will uh, open my blackboard and i will paste this here so see guys what i'm doing here so i think you know what is a uh, transfer learning okay in computer vision okay what is transfer learning in computer vision so basically here uh, this is my convolutional layer so let me take a new color so if you see this is my convolutional layer okay so this is my convolution we call it our convolutional layer conv layer right and this layer is already trained okay this layer is already trained so the weight actually you can see inside it is already trained even it is also trained okay we call it as our a fully corrected layer that that means fc layer okay fc layer so here we are using our basics ann and where here we are using our cnn that means convolutional neural, ne neural network so these two kinds of neural network we are combining together and we are trying to create this um, uh, architecture okay complete architecture and we are naming it as vg16 okay vg16 and it is already trained on image net data set okay image uh, it is already trained on image net data right i think you are already know these are the thing i don't need to explain <clears throat> so here what i'm trying to do here i'll try to download this complete vg16 architecture at the very first i'll try to uh, download this pretend model and from here i will try to extract this part actually i will extract this part okay i will extract this conv layer then on top of that i will add my custom fc layer i will add my custom fc layer because this fc layer if you see it has like uh, three three layer and it has like more neurons okay they are using more neurons inside that so i don't want to take these neurons so i will just remove this part and i will add my my custom layer here 
my custom layer let's say i will add one more layer here and which which would be nothing but my uh, last layer and here the number of class actually i'm using so let's say in this case i have two class only so i'll be adding two neurons here at the very last okay so guys how this architecture will look like let's say this is my uh, first dense layer this is my first dense layer and at the last i have taken two two layer only because i have two classes i have two classes now i'll connect this one and here i'm going to take softmax softmax activation function okay then i will be able to classify because it will give you some probability value and whichever ha having um, like more probability i will classify that's uh, that object as my prediction okay so yes guys this is the complete agenda so now let's do it first of all i will try to download this vg16 okay then uh, i'll try to remove this part i don't want i don't want it and here this layer actually i will do the freeze operation freeze operation because i don't want to train inside this layer only i'll be training uh, uh, like at my last layer which is nothing but my fc layer okay and fc layer will have only one layer and it will have this uh, two neurons okay with the softmax activation function okay so guys i hope you got the idea like uh, what actually we'll be doing basically we'll be first of all uh, downloading the base model from the keras application then uh, we'll be just adding some custom layer at the last okay then we'll be using that model and this is going to be my final model so this is my configuration related my uh, prepare base model now let's go back to my notebook and after that i need to upgrade my uh, parameter parameter.yml okay params.yml so we haven't updated yet params.yml because i need that params uh, so inside params actually you need to uh, set some of the uh, uh, configuration related of your model okay see these are the configuration you need to set like augmentation image size batch size okay include top number of epoch you want to train then number of classes you have in this case i have two classes okay one is like uh, uh, this uh, normal uh, chest another is like this one uh, adenocarcinoma so these two classes if you have multiple classes you can change this uh, parameter here then e weight image net basically i'm going to use a pretend model okay uh, transform learning approach so that's why i will be downloading this image net model and this is the learning rate and uh, where you can get these are the information like what should be the image size uh, with respect to the vg16 model and all so for this you can visit this website keras application okay so here actually all the model are listed so which model actually you want to use just try to select let's say i'll be using vg16 model if i click on vg16 model this is the code and these are the parameter okay you can see it so here if you see this is the input shape so this model takes 2 to 4 2 to 4 comma 3 this is the input size okay so that is why i have set this input size here so you can check any kinds of model and you can set this parameter so guys i'm expecting you are already familiar with these are the thing so i think you are getting like what i'm trying to say right yeah now these are some parameter related of our model now i'll uh, uh go to my readme file again then uh, first of all i need to create my entity okay so let's create the entity so similar wise i'll be creating the entity with the help of data class so i already prepared my uh, entity see i'm going a little bit fast because i already given you the idea like how we're gonna like complete these projects and all so basically we are following everything okay from our previous notebook only so all the steps are remain same only some of the parameter we are changing here okay that's it now guys see these are the uh, uh, like parameter we have defined so as you can see we are preparing our entity so these are the thing actually we need inside our entity so root directory if you follow my configuration so all the things i'm taking root directory base model path updated uh, base model path all the thing i'm taking apart from that i'm also taking some parameter okay like let's say image size learning rate include then uh, weight classes okay these are the thing actually i'm taking one by one now let me uh, initialize them then after that i need to prepare my configuration manager okay so let's define the configuration manager so i think you remember uh here we define our configuration manager so i'll copy this code then i'll copy the same class then inside that i will add my get uh, prepared based model related configuration okay hmm. and same thing i'm just uh uh, like returning as my prepared business model uh, as you can see uh, this, this is the entity this is the return type of this function and whatever things i have mentioned inside my entity same thing i'm just returning okay one by one as you can see okay now my configuration manager is ready now what i need to do mm, i need to create my component so let's create the component so i'll come here so first of all i need to import some of the libraries so these are the libraries are needed 
So here, first of all, I will uh, initialize one class called prepare base model. So it will take this base model uh, configuration. And inside that, first of all, I will uh, download my uh, base model. Okay, so this is the code to download the base model. Let me show you. Uh, yeah. So here, if you see, I'm using this uh, tf.keras.application and I'm downloading this VG16 model. Okay, and I'm setting these are the parameter like input shape, then weight, then include top. Okay, so these are the parameter I'm taking from my configuration. And once it is downloaded, I'm saving this model also. As you can see, I'm saving like a uh, save model. Okay, save model. Uh, this is the another function I need to create. So let me show you. Uh, this is the static function I created here. Save model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the function. This is the static function I've created, save model. Now, uh, here actually it will just do model.save and it will save the model inside your uh, base model path. Okay, base model path means this is the path actually. Uh, as you can see, this is the path. Here actually it will save the model, right? Then after that, uh, I think you remember I was discussing in my blackboard, I need to upgrade my model. Okay, basically I will be taking all the convolutional layer and at the last layer I'll be adding my own FC layer. So for this, I need to write another function so uh, this is the code i've written and this code actually will get from the keras uh, website only okay this is the simple code and you can use as it is so this is the function i prepared called prepare full model and here I, i'm taking the model number of classes then uh, then uh, i'm just telling if you want to freeze all the layer or not so what is the meaning of this freeze freeze means like uh, you want to train your uh, convolution layer or not okay so in this case, actually, I'm using transfer learning approach. So uh, I don't need to uh, unfreeze all the layer, right? I'll be freezing all the layer because I want like all the uh, pretend weights. Okay, all the pretend weights. That is why I don't need to uh, train from scratch. Okay, I won't be uh, like unfreeze all. Okay, that is why these two parameters, you don't need to set it as of now, it's fine. Just uh, freeze all is equal to uh, true, you need to give. So basically, it will freeze all the layer. Okay, then it will only add your custom uh, FC layer at the last. Okay, that's it. And freeze still like let's say you don't want to freeze all the layer let's say i want to freeze only nine layers so here i will give nine so it will uh, freeze nine layer and rest of the thing actually it will unfreeze okay that's all actually you can set these are the parameter and you can also set the learning rate okay here i have given now this is the code basically it will uh if you give freeze all is equal to true so it will freeze everything and if you give freeze still so it will uh, freeze still that is specific layer then it will return that uh, model and here i'm just defining my flatten after that, I'm creating my custom dense. Okay, we are like the number of classes I have in this case, I have two classes. Then once it is done, uh, I'm defining my model. Okay, but then I'm also compiling the model. As you can see, uh, I'm using uh, stochastic gradient descent and categorical cross entropy loss. And also metric wise, I'm using accuracy metric. Then I'm returning my model. Okay, then this model is prepared. Now I also need to save the model in my uh, local system. So this is the function will help me to save the model. So basically this uh, like function i'm calling inside this function as you can see and all the requirements uh, like uh, parameter i'm giving and after that i'm just saving the model okay inside my artifacts folder okay that's it this is a simple code guys i've just written okay nothing else now let me execute and show you how it will save the model and all yeah now we have created our component now let's create the pipeline so i think remember we create the pipeline here as well here okay pipeline means uh it's the step of uh, like running your code running your function and all. So this is the pipeline I've already prepared. First of all, I'm initializing my configuration manager. Then I'm getting this prepare based model configuration. Okay, as you can see, this is the configuration I'm taking. Then after that, I'm calling this uh, prepare based model class in my component. Okay, prepare based model class and it will take your base model configuration. That is what I'm passing. After that, actually, I'm first of all calling this one get uh, base model. Okay, this is the function I'm calling. Basically, it will download the base model. Then after that, I'm calling update base model. Okay, this model, uh, this function, basically it will download uh, that base model and it will upgrade that model and it will also save the model inside your artifacts. Okay, now let me execute and show you. See guys, it's completed. Now if I open my artifact, see it has created another folder called prepare base model. Now if I open the prepare base model, see guys, two model you can see, one is my base model, another is like my updated base model okay so i'll be picking up this model to train my model because this is the raw model okay we have downloaded this model okay this is the raw model this is the base model okay on top of that we have done our customization and we have saved this updated one okay so we'll be picking up this model now guys notebook experiment is fine it is uh, working uh, everything now let's try to convert this thing as our modular coding so first of all let's uh, update our entity so i'll copy this entity then let me uh, open my config entity and here I will add 
then after that i need to upgrade my configuration manager so let me so let me copy this uh, function and i will open my configuration manager here and i will add it here i also need to uh, import my prepare base model configuration from my uh, this one entity so let me import it here anything i need uh, no i think everything is fine okay then i also need to upgrade my component so um, let me create another file inside component i'll name it as prepare underscore base underscore model dot pi and here first of all i will import these are the libraries then i will copy this uh, class as it is then anything else i need here let me see i need this prepare base model config okay so for this i will uh, copy paste from here mm. copy this one and uh, i'll just remove this one let me see everything is fine or not i think everything is fine i don't need anything uh, okay path i also need to import so let me import path as well so i'll just write from path leave import path yeah so let me see anything is missing mm, yeah everything is fine now let's uh define our uh pipeline okay so for this i will uh, go inside pipeline and here i will create another file called stage 02 underscore uh underscore uh prepare base model dot pi so here i will import uh, some of the libraries so, so here if you see i'm importing my configuration manager and as well as my prepare base model component okay from this component folder then i'm also importing my logger then after that uh, i'll be defining one uh, class here called prepare base model uh, training pipeline and this is the stage name and i'm calling this uh, configuration manager okay as you can see so th this same code actually i've just copy pasted so this is the pipeline i've just copy pasted here if i show you okay same code i'm just copy pasted now this thing i need to call inside my um, if underscore underscore name underscore underscore main here because my python code will start uh, reading from here okay and here if you see i'm calling this class and uh, after that i'm creating one objects and i'm uh, calling this function main function okay that's it now uh, we have successfully created the pipeline and now let's add this thing inside our uh, this one inside our main.py because main.py is my endpoint so let me open this main.py so first of all i need to import that uh, prepare base model training pipeline from my pipeline as you can see i'm importing this thing then uh, i'll be defining my stage name and i will call it uh, i'll call that function yeah prepare base model then i'm initializing this uh, class then i'm calling uh, i'm just calling this uh, main uh, function as you can see this is the main function i'm calling so it will start my training uh, uh, like uh, pipeline okay it will start my pipeline here inside main.py and then i'm also logging this stage like it is completed and all okay it's done now let me test it whether uh, everything is fine or not so i'll open my um, folder then here first of all i will remove this uh, artifact then let's test it whether everything is fine or not i will open my terminal Uh, so guys as you can see it is downloading the data so basically it is running the first uh, component my data edition now let's wait after that it will execute this second one so uh, it's done now if i open my artifact and uh, see first of all it has downloaded my data then uh, prepare base model c it is also there that means everything is working fine guys so we have completed our second step as well second stage as well which is nothing but prepare base model 
now let me just quickly commit the changes so let me commit so i'll just uh write um, prepare base model add it and sync the changes you can also commit the changes from your uh, terminal as well okay writing the command and i'm doing because i've already configured with my vs code that's why now if i go back and refresh my github see guys prepare base model added okay so guys uh, we have already completed our prepare base model component uh, now let's try to uh, create our training one so here i will create another uh, ipnv file and i will name it as 03 uh, model trainer IP1B. So first of all, let me close these are the thing. Uh, hmm. So I'll select the kernel. So it is chest and uh, I'll copy paste the same code from my previous notebook. Now uh, I need to add the configuration uh, config.yaml so I already prepared my configuration so this is going to be model trainer related configuration so guys here in this artifact folder I will be creating another fold, uh, folder called training inside that I will save my model okay the model actually I'm going to train so that model actually I'll save inside that training folder okay inside my artifact so this is the uh, configuration related that now uh, first of all let's do the experiment in my notebook so I need to create my entity I think you remember because we create the entity as I already mentioned in my readme as well and now I need to create my entity so this is going to be my entity so this is going to be my entity so here uh, I'm taking all these are the uh, variable root directory and train model path root directory train model path and uh, I'm also taking my updated base model path okay which is nothing but this one if I show you my prepared base model so this is the path okay I'll be taking here then guys i'm taking my training data path which is present inside my data indication okay from here actually i'll be loading the data then i'm also taking some of the parameter from my params.yml okay as, as you can see we have mentioned uh, epoch batch size augmentation and image size these are the thing we have already mentioned so this is going to be my function return type now i also need to uh, add my configuration manager so for this i need to import these are the libraries i think you remember then we'll be copy pasting the same class from here okay and inside that i will be uh, writing my model training related configuration okay so these are the configuration uh, i'll return okay and this is the return type i think you already remember here we have mentioned and here i'm just returning see uh, here from the training i'm just tra uh, taking the training uh, path okay like this is the path actually i'm training from this uh, configuration then i'm also mentioning my uh, like train model path okay then my uh, then if you see i'm also mentioning my updated base model path okay this is the path and i'm reading from here as you can see i'm reading from here okay then i'm also taking my training data path as you can see here i'm taking my training data path and uh, here is the path i have mentioned so it should be uh, like just ct scan image okay so let me copy the name because this is my previous project i developed huh. so just ct scan data so make sure you are giving your data name here now after that i think everything is fine yeah then i'm returning my configuration now let me execute then i'll be uh, creating my component training component for this i need to import these are the libraries then i already written the training code let me show you how it is looking like see guys this is the training uh, class i have uh, created it will take your uh, training configuration and first of all it will get the base model okay so uh, here is my base model updated base model it will load the model and it will return and this is the like train file generator i have uh, written okay so this code actually will get from the keras uh, documentation so they have already mentioned like if you like if you're not like uh, separating your data into train and test uh, or let's say validation split at the very first phase 
so you can use this code to uh, generate your data to valid generator or let's say train generator or let's say test generator okay so that can be done using this code so in the runtime actually it will uh, like divide your data to the training and validation then it will uh, feed the data to the model okay so this uh, uh, function will help me to do that okay this code i've just copy pasted from the keras application now here if you see once uh, i have generated my this one uh, valid generator as well as my train generator okay so training data i'll be using to train my model and validation i will be using for the validating my model and once it is done i'm just returning these are the thing then here is another static function i have written so this function will help me to save my model after the training then here i actually uh, i'm just uh, training it so this is my training function first of all i'm calculating my step per epoch then validation steps so these are the thing i think you are already familiar with if you have already worked with ms classification so we usually pass these are the thing during training training parameter then i'm doing the model fit okay model dot fit operation then i'm giving my training data then i'm also giving my epoch then step per epoch then validation step then i'm also giving my validation data which is nothing but validation generator we have uh, generated from here then once uh, my model is trained i'm just saving the model that's it okay this is the simple code i've just written to train the my model now i need to create my pipeline so this is my pipeline so this is my pipeline so first of all i'm initializing my configuration manager i'm getting my uh, training configuration okay from my configuration manager and this co training configuration i'm passing to my training uh, component and i'm calling first of all this get base model okay this is the function i'm first of all calling i'm just loading my model after that i'm calling this train val generator basically it will generate your data with respect to train and validation then i'm training my model okay now let me show you uh, whether everything is fine or not and let me also see the epoch number of epoch i mentioned in the parameter okay it's one fine now guys let me execute and show you see here i'm just only training one epoch okay but whenever you are training your actual model just increase that uh, epoch size okay just to show you i'm just training one epoch i just wanted to show you quickly just for the demo purpose that is why but whenever you are training your model just try to uh, train train the model with respect to let's say 500 epoch or let's say 1000 epoch then you will get a good model so guys as you can see my training is done and here i got uh, 60 percent of accuracy and my validation loss uh, it's 17 so it's still high so we need to train more epoch to get a good model okay but just to show you uh, i just uh, train one epoch okay now see everything is working fine that means uh, all the experiment is fine now we can uh, uh, like write this code as my modular coding so for this uh, first of all let's uh, uh, close these are the thing okay now i'll open my con uh, config entity because i first of all need to add my entity i think you remember so here is my entity i'll copy paste from here so I'm going a little bit fast because I think you got it, whatever things actually I'm doing. This is my training entity. Then after that, I also need to uh, add my uh, configuration manager. So let me open my configuration manager. And here I will just uh, copy this function as it is and here i will mention it okay so here i need to import this training configuration so so let me copy the name and here i'm going to mention hmm. so anything else i need from here uh, let me see i think everything is fine okay i need operating system uh, package as well then let me see everything is fine 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 yeah everything is fine i don't need anything else now i'll close it and uh, let me see next i need to add my component so uh, i will go to ins uh, insert component and here i will create another file called model trainer model underscore trainer dot pipe and here i'll just copy paste the same code i have written then this is the class i have written i will copy and here i'm going to mention now anything else i need okay i need training configuration so i can uh, i think import from here i'll copy this as it is and here i'm going to mention okay uh yeah done now let me see anything is needed 
okay i also need path so i'll import path so from path lib import path then let me see anything is needed mm -hmm. i think everything is fine uh yeah everything is fine i don't need anything else now i'll add my pipeline so to create the pipeline i will go inside this pipeline and here i will create another uh, stage stage uh, 03 model trainer dot by and here i will mention my pipeline so first of all i need to import some of the libraries here so it should be model trainer hmm. now here uh, i'll create one uh, class and i will name this stage as model trainer or training and here i'm just uh, copy pasting the same code okay this same code i'm just copy pasting here as you can see this is my pipeline i'm just uh, calling this function one by one now this thing i also need to call inside my uh, if underscore underscore uh, name underscore underscore main so here uh, my code will start reading and here i'm initializing this class and i'm calling this main function that's it now i also need to add this thing in my endpoint which is nothing but my main.py so let me add it here so first of all i need to import my model uh, trainer so it should be model trainer okay now here uh, i will call my i'll call my model uh, training okay here if you see model training and here i'm initializing my this class and i'm calling my main function okay which is uh, there okay this is the main function i'm calling now everything is fine now let me test it whether it's working or not so before that i will uh, delete my artifact and i will open my code again and let me open my terminal and i'll just execute python main.py now first of all see guys it is in this thing that data so here if you see so let's wait after that you will uh, run this prepare base model then it will run this model uh, model trainer part Uh, so guys as you can see now training has started uh, see training is going on so let's wait uh, it will take some time uh, now it's completed now if i show you my artifact folder uh, here so here is my model actually it has trained okay and uh, see all this test has run successfully okay that means everything is working fine now let's uh, do the commit so i'll just commit the changes so model trainer added done now if i go back to my github now see guys it's added now guys uh we'll be uh writing our last component which is nothing but my model evaluation and there i will also show you how we can integrate uh, ml flow with that okay like how we can do the experiment tracking with the help of ml flow so everything i'll be discussing there so guys i already uh, like discussed this uh, thing like how we can integrate ml flow with that okay how to create this evolution stage so i will uh, show you that one so only you just need to change your data here so there actually i was using another data so you just need to use this data set okay i will update the code and i will show you like how to do it okay so only you just need to change the data and it will uh, all these steps will remain same yeah so let's let's see that so for this actually what i will do uh, i'll create one uh, ipv file here called 04 um, model evaluation uh, dot ipynv okay so here the first thing i will connect my uh, kernel okay now guys let me go back to my code and here first of all i will uh, copy paste the same code first of all let me close these are the thing okay so i'll copy from this notebook only this uh, voice operation because i need to change my directory then i will uh, see the project working directory then finally i'll change my directory
okay done now the first thing what i need to do um, i need to first of all collect the ml flow uri okay ml flow uri so where i can collect the ml flow uri like there is a website called daxup okay daxup.com so just uh logging with this website and now here first of all i need to connect my repository okay the repository i am committing my code let's say this is my repository here i am committing all of my code okay so i have uh, another repository the same project okay so uh, this is public repository that's why i'll be connecting this repository with this desktop so here first of all i will click on create and uh, and i will click on new repository then here it is telling uh, create a blank repository or create from a template and it is also telling like uh, connect a repository okay so what i will do uh, i will connect my repository because my repository is already available in my github i will just connect it so i'll just click here and it is telling just connect with github and if you have your repository inside big bucket or any other like platform you can also connect but i have in my github so i'll just connect so make sure uh, you have your code in your personal account okay uh, otherwise you won't be able to access this uh, github repo now here what i will do uh, I'll just uh, click on this add revoke access repository just click here and after that you need to select your account so this is my account I will be selecting now it will ask for the like you can say uh, password so you just need to provide the password I have already logged in that's why it's not asking for the password now here you just select the only selected repository now just select the repository you want to connect so this is the name of the repository let me just copy the name now I'll search it here see guys this is the repository now I'll select and I will just click on save Now here, uh, I just need to select uh, the repository I just uh, connected right now. So let me just search with the name. So guys, this is the repository. My kidney disease classification. Now I'll just uh, click on the repository. And here I just need to connect the repository. See, once I have connected, so you will be able to see like that. Now here, what I will do, I will just click on this remote. Okay, if I click on the remote, uh, here you will see one uh, option called experiment okay just click on the experiment and now see guys it will provide uh, this mlflow ui okay mlflow ui basically uh, mlflow supports this uh, dax up so using dax up actually you can launch this mlflow server here okay so basically that's why we are using dax up now uh, to connect this mlflow i need this mlflow uri tracking okay so this tracking uri i need actually so i'll just first of all copy this uri then i will also launch my mlflow ui here see you will be able to see the mlflow ui and it would be completely empty at the very first. There is no experiment exist. So now what I will do, I will go back to my code. Uh, I will go back to my code. And here I will just paste this credential. Or what I can do, I will open my readme. I can update my readme later on. Let me just keep it here. Now quickly, I will just uh, add these are the credential in my environment. Okay, so I already have my previous environment. Let me just change it. I will just take a code cell. See guys, here you just need to add these are the tracking URI, then username and tracking password in your environment. Okay, using dot environment, you can do it. Now let me do it quickly. So and don't share this credential with anyone, otherwise uh, they will also able to access. I will just so I will just delete my repository after the recording. That is why I'm showing you here. So first of all, what I will do, I will copy this URI, copy this URI, and I will change with this URI and username would be username and uh, this is my username and this is the pass password and i will replace the password here okay yeah i hope everything is fine now what i can do uh, i'll also update in my readme so let me just open my readme so readme.md so here just let me update so here i will replace with this credential I have already provided all the link and all. Now I also need to uh, change this URI. Yeah. I hope everything is fine. Now, if you just uh, open it. Uh, with this open preview you will be able to see how i upgraded the things okay so guys i already given the mlflow documentation link and dax link even uh, this uh, uh, tracking uri 
and how to export this also i'll show you like how you need to also export this in your uh, terminal okay that's why this command you need to run so everything i have just uh, uh, given here so now what i will do i will quickly just uh, copy paste this command see this command actually i'll be copy pasting export ml flow tracking uri and i will open my terminal you also need to execute in your terminal okay otherwise it won't be working so here i need to export in my terminal so basically it will export this uh, tracking URI in your environment variable automatically okay and in the jupyter notebook i have added that is for the jupyter notebook only now i'll again run the second one then i will run the third one let me just copy the password again and replace it here now I'll copy and execute in my terminal that's it guys okay so once it is done i think i have already updated my readme and all so for your reference you can refer it later on now i'll close this readme and let's go back to our notebook okay now i can delete this cell all right so i'll just execute this particular code here okay now it will set these are the credential in my environment variable now what i will do mm, and i can name this file as uh, model evolution with uh, ml flow because we are also integrating ml flow with that okay so i will name it like that now i can again select the kernel and uh, let me run from again okay everything is fine now what i will do i will import my tensor flow Now here, the first thing what I need to do, I need to load my model. So where is my model? My model is present inside artifacts, inside the training folder. Okay. So let me first of all load the model. So here I have loaded my model. So let me execute. Then after that, I need to uh, initialize my uh, this one. Uh, if I show you my readme, my entity. Okay. I need to initialize my entity. So let's also define my entity so model evaluation config so guys this is the entity so this is my path of the model so here i need to provide the path of the model then train uh, training data so what is your training data training data should be present inside data indication because i also want to pick the data to uh, do the evaluation purpose okay basically i want i will be doing the evaluation test and i will check my model performance okay that is why then all parameters as a dictionary i'm taking because basically this uh, this is the parameter file i have called parameters.yml so all the uh, like parameter i'm taking as a dictionary here i'll show, show you like how we can store it here then ml flow uri okay i also need ml flow uri so this uri i need to also add then params image size okay and batch size i think it is available inside params.yml now guys what i will do i will quickly execute this code and here again i will import these are the libraries because it is needed for my uh, uh, model evaluation configuration okay then finally i will create my configuration manager and with that i will create one method called get data uh, evaluation configuration just let me show you see guys now here i'll just change this tracking uri i'll copy and uh, i'll just change this tracking uri here okay i think everything is fine okay everything will remain same and see guys here what i'm doing i'm providing all the path like my uh, model file path it is artifact slash training slash uh, model dot h5 then training data it is present inside my data indication kidney uh, ct scan image if i show you it is present inside data indication kidney ct scan image and this is my ml flow tracking uri and all parameters i'm getting see here i'm reading all the parameters and i'm storing inside params and these params i am returning here okay all params because whenever i will be using uh, experiment tracking using ml flow i need to log all the parameter there okay now this is my image size and batch size and once it is done i am returning my configuration now let me execute now i will start creating my components so for this i need some libraries so let me import them then i will uh, create one class called model evaluation and it will take this model, uh, model evaluation configuration this uh, method then after that i will again uh, create this uh, train valve generator i think you remember 
we created this thing in our data model trainer see this train will generator i will be again creating because again it will uh, separate out my testing data okay and using keras you can do you just search on google from the keras website you will get this code okay valid generator this function i will be using so again what it will do it will uh, uh, like pick up my data entire data set and fr from the data set it will prepare the testing data for me okay Pre prepare the testing data for me and what is the testing size it would be 30 percent 30 percent data will be taking for the testing purpose okay and it is uh loading as uh, using data generator and this is the directory i'm giving what is the directory guys this is the directory okay this from this directory it will load the data so yeah it is done let me execute it again yeah then again uh here i'll be creating another uh, static method or load, load model because i also need to load my model the model i have present inside my training i need to load the model and why i have given a static method uh, so whenever you are uh, defining this static decorator that means this function won't be taking any kinds of self because if you see here it's taking self it's a class uh, class function but this function is an independent function i can access it from anywhere that's why this i have written static function if you know object oriented programming in python i think this concept would be clear now once my model is loaded i also need to evaluate the model and to evaluate the model here i have written another function called evaluate so in the evaluate what it will do it will just load the model using this load model function then it will uh, generate the valid data set that means your test data set it will generate then after that it will do the model evaluation and it will take your valid generator that means this data and it will return you some score okay and now what i need to do i also need to save the score okay so to save the score there is another function i prepared called save score now here if you see save score and i'm just uh, storing this score one by one so the first one is your loss and the second one is the accuracy score okay and i'm saving as a save json okay json uh score the json format i'm saving and if you see uh, save json i'm importing from my utility here okay save json i'm importing from here so once it is done that means i have i'm able to successfully save my uh, matrix now what i need to do and uh, now what i need to do i think if you have watched that particular lecture of the ml flow I think you already got to know like what is experiment tracking okay in ml flow why we do we do experiment tracking there okay everything i think you got the idea and what is model registration also i think you got the idea and uh, now you need to write the ml flow code here and it is like very simple so here let me show you see guys this is the ml flow code i think you have seen from the particular video let me just uh yeah yeah i think you have already seen from the particular video so basically here we need to define one function called log into ml flow and here i just need to set the registered uri okay and what is the uri my ml flow uri the uri i have defined here so basically it will track the information in this uri and this uri is running my server this is the ml flow server is running so that is why i am providing the uri here so all the experiment you are tracking just try to track in this uri that is why i am setting this uri once it is done your ml flow uh, dot start run will start basically your ml flow will start tracking the experiment then first of all i will log the parameters while i'm getting the parameters parameters is present inside my config and from the config itself i'm returning uh, if you see here all parameters okay all parameter i'm returning and here i'm initializing my configuration okay so basically first of all it will uh, log your all the parameter so once uh, all the parameter has been logged i also need to log my matrix right so again i'm calling mmlflow.log matrix and here i'm logging my matrix first of all i'm logging my loss and my logging my accuracy score then once it is done so here one condition is there if tracking url underscore type store is not equal to file track everything in my url uh, uri i have mentioned otherwise track everything in my local system okay so what is this meaning i think you already know from the video itself okay so everything has been explained in that video just try to go watch that video then you will be able to understand this complete ml flow uh like part okay otherwise uh, there would be some confusion in your mind uh, that's why i'm telling just to go ahead and watch that particular lecture you will get the idea about ml flow okay what we are doing exactly here so once it is done we are done with our model evaluation even we we have also done with our ml flow integration with my project okay now let me execute this project quickly now at the last i will initialize my pipeline so let me just show you my pipeline see guys this is my pipeline i'm initializing my model uh, configuration manager then i'm getting my model conf uh, evaluation config this thing i'm passing inside my evaluation and uh, first of all i'm calling this evaluation okay evaluation function it will do the evaluation then after that 
I'm uh, logging the experiment to my ML flow. Okay, this function. Now let me execute and show you. See, guys, first of all, it will prepare the testing data and it will uh, like uh, predict on top of the test data, and then it will calculate the loss and accuracy score. That score it will be saved in your local, then it would be uh, tracked inside your ML flow server. See guys, I think matrix has been generated. I think there would be a matrix file. We'll get we'll be getting. I think somewhere this matrix file would be there. Score.json. Now see guys, I think uh, it is trying to push all the uh, uh, like experiment to my MLflow server. Even it is also pushing the model to the MLflow server. Uh, see guys execution is done and it is telling created version 1 model vg16 model okay because the name we have given here vg16 model so basically it has already tracked in my ml flow now here you will see one uh, matrix would be generated i think uh, so guys it is uh, not saving the score because i haven't called this save uh, score method so i need to call it here basically so let me just call it so here if i just write uh, self dot uh, save score i think now it should save the score now uh, you can try it i think it, it will save the score now let me go back uh, to my uh, ml flow and here if i refresh now we'll be able to see the experiment see guys this is my first experiment and uh, i have just uh, done it seven minutes ago because i just paused the video um, for some work that's why it's uh, showing seven minutes. Now this is my model. It is also registered my model as you can see, V16 model, and this is my source. Uh, this uh, okay. If you see the path, complete path, this is my uh, like location of the model, like where it is present. So this is present inside my artifacts inside uh, this training fi file. Okay, so this is the location, and uh, this is the name. Like it will generate some random name. I think you already saw from the video. Now if you want to see all the parameter, it has tracked. Now click on the experiment. See guys, this is the complete uh, source. And uh, this is my username. And uh, this is the date and time. And see guys, it has also uh, like, tracked my model. So model has been also registered. I will show you the model. And this is the matrix guys, as you can see. This is the accuracy, 61%. Uh, and this is the losses, okay, I got here. And with respect to that, this is the parameter it has tracked. See, all the parameter I have mentioned inside my params.yaml inside my params.yml so everything it has tracked okay everything is that it has tracked and with respect to the parameter this is my um, accuracy and losses and uh, you can also add some description but description i haven't added here okay so these are the thing now let's say i i want to do another experiment okay i want to do another experiment this uh let's say this parameter i have assigned let me just show you this parameter i have assigned it is not giving me good because see so here guys if you see the here learning rate should be hyperparameter okay then uh, epoch should be hyperparameter okay then batch size should be hyperparameter augmentation should be hyperparameter so this parameter you can change and you can try different different experiment okay so we call it as experiment tracking so instead of doing our hyperparameter tuning manually if we are using this kinds of ml flow so it would be very much easy for us to do it and let me show you the model registration i guys so just click on the model and see this is the model pg16 model and this is the version of uh, one of the model okay this is the first version of my model so uh, you can also like push this model to the staging area or production area staging area means this is the testing area first of all you will be doing the testing of your model if your model is working fine then you will be moving that model to the production area okay so that that way you can do and how to do it just click on the version and here you will get one parameter see stage is equal to none you can just give, give to staging let's say i will give this model to the staging area click on okay now if i go back now see guys it's this model is running in my staging area you can also give to the production area okay uh, you can also do it now let me go back see it's running on the staging area now uh, it will also track the model now let me show you the different experiments what i will do i'll come here and let's change the learning rate let's say i'll give 0 0.2 and now i uh, you can also make it as false okay i'm not making it because uh, again it will take time so only i'm just changing learning rate uh, is, is equal to 0 0.02 now what i will do I will just uh, I'll just open my terminal and here 
I will again execute the code. Uh -huh. Okay, I have been added the entire pipeline, so that is why. So I need to run from my notebook. So what I will do, I will again run from scratch. I will first of all restart the runtime. Then let me execute one by one. Now guys, it has saved that uh, JSON, okay, score.json. Now if you see, this is the score.json you have, this is the loss, and this is the sc uh, accuracy score you got here, okay. So I think it's working now. Now let's wait for the ML flow tagging. Uh, so guys, now if you see, it has created version two of the model, okay. Version two of the model has been created. Now let me go back and let me just go to my ML flow. And you can refresh the page here. Mm. see guys okay this is my uh, last experiment i have done okay only two minutes ago and this is the second version of the model now again let me open this model and this is the parameter i just changed the parameter here learning grade 0 0.2 with respect to that uh, the accuracy score i am getting uh this is the loss and this is the accuracy score fine now you can compare the model also here like which model is better here okay which model is better here so what I can do, uh, I can train uh, another, I can do a, another two more experiment, okay. That would be good, I think, to show you the comp competition. So what I will do, uh, I will again open my parameter. And here, what I will do, now augmentation is equal to, I'll just keep it as false. False, okay. Now learning rate, let's change it to uh, 0. Point, uh, or let's say 0. Point, uh, 0.8 I will give, fine. Then, uh, Mm, yeah, batch size you can also change, otherwise, everything you just keep it as default. Now, what I will do, I will again execute my code. Mm, I'll come here. Now, I'll first of all restart the runtime. Now, let me execute them one by one. And guys, the, this thing, how to perform for the machine learning, uh, like project, I think I have already explained. So just go with this uh, video. Okay. End to end, uh, ML ops, uh, data science project implementation. So here, uh, we have already, uh, sh uh, like shown you, like how we can perform using, uh, machine learning project. And this is for the deep learning project. Okay. What would be the like difference between machine learning and deep learning? You will get the idea. Now, guys, if you see, it has, uh, tracked my version three of the model. Now let me go back and refresh see guys this is the version 3 of the model now let's compare all the model i'll click i'll click i'll select all the models see just if you just click here it will select all the model and either you can delete it either you can do the comparison so let me do the comparison so here i want to see uh parameter i want to see all the parameter let's say i want to also see my email image batch include top epochs classes wait all the parameter with respect to i want to see my matrix accuracy score and losses okay now now you can see this is my parallel uh coordinate plot okay so from this uh, plot itself you can get the best model now guys try to check it uh, my augmentation is equal to true uh, first of all check the highest accuracy score you are getting all the actually i think uh accuracy are same okay because there is no major uh, changes has been done after changing the parameter because uh, okay guys uh, that is my mistake actually uh, actually i'm just executing this model evaluation again and again because let's say whenever i'm changing these are the parameter okay it will reflect in uh, during the training right because the current model i have this is the first time model we train the model right so there is no changes in the model that is why i'm getting again and again same matrix here so that's my bad guys. I'm extremely sorry for this. So what I will do, first of all, let me convert this code to our modular coding. 
then try to uh, then we'll try to run the entire pipeline again okay then you will be able to see the changes now first of all let me make it as one okay now let me go back to this uh, model evaluation first of all let it finish so i got my uh, version 4 of the model it's fine now let me just quickly convert this code error modular coding then i will run the entire pipeline okay which is nothing but my endpoint main.py then it will run all the pipeline one by one then it will reflect the changes okay now let me first of all do it quickly first of all i need to upgrade my um, entity let me close this other tab okay first of all let me copy the entity from here this is my entity i'll copy and i will add it inside my config entity done then i also need to upgrade my uh, configuration manager so first of all i need to import this save json inside configuration manager so i need to import uh, here save json and with that i will also need to uh, update this thing i also need to update this model evolution config here now i think everything is fine here uh, no change needed now quickly what i will do uh, i will update my components i'll copy this code and again i will create one component here called model underscore evaluation evaluation underscore ml flow dot file then i will quickly copy this component as well now let me see anything is needed or not model evaluation config is needed i'll just try to import it so from uh, cnn classifier cnn classifier dot entity dot config entity import this model evolution config now i think i also need the model so it's giving error because it should be self dot model okay self dot model now i think everything is fine and save json i i also need here so save json i can import from here i think now let me see everything is fine or not mm. yeah okay, so i think everything is fine here okay i don't need to do anything else mm, yes and uh, one change actually you need to do here i forget to tell you if you see here whenever i'm trying to import uh, ml flow okay so here i'm doing for deep learning project and here i'm using keras okay keras uh, a library uh, TensorFlow Keras library. Okay, so that is why if you see here, MLflow also support Keras. So that is why I'm also importing Keras from here. But uh, previously, whenever I was doing uh, for my machine learning project, I was importing scikit-learn here. Let's say you are doing project using PyTorch. At the time, you will call MLflow.pytorch. Okay, so that's how it supports all the library you have in deep learning. Okay, or machine learning. So here I'm using Keras. That's why I'm importing Keras here. Now this Keras I'm using. Okay, and this Keras I'm using here, if you see MLflow Keras log model. Okay, you need to call this Keras. Otherwise, it won't be considered it's a deep learning project. Okay, whenever you are using uh, machine learning at the time, call mlflow.scikit-learn, sklearn. Whenever you are using PyTorch, just use mlflow PyTorch log model. Okay, that's how you need to change this thing. That, here I'm using Keras, that's why I've mentioned Keras here. That is the only modification you need to do inside deep learning project. And everything will remain same. Now, I think I have already upgraded my... Uh, this uh, mlflow uh, component now what i need to I, I will quickly update my pipeline so let me go to the pipeline and here i will just write stays 04 model evaluation evaluation dot i uh, dot pi Now let me just quickly uh, show you the pipeline the same code 
so here uh, i'm just naming this stage like it's a model evolution and uh, i'm initializing this evolution pipeline class inside that i'm initializing my pipeline as you can see this pipeline i'm initializing initializing and once it is done i also need to call inside my main function okay now this thing i need to call inside my uh, endpoint but here i think i need to give uh, model evolution ml flow evolution now i think it's fine okay now i'll call this thing inside my main.py so main.py first of all i need to import it my model evolution pipeline so it should be stage 04 model evolution now finally i will define my model evolution stage that's it so guys now i think everything is fine so now what i will do mm, i'll click i will just quickly remove these are the experiment i have done because uh, this was i was doing i was not sure about like i was training the model or not okay so all the parameters are same so what i will do is quickly save uh, like um, select everything i'll just delete okay done now if i refresh see guys there is no experiment now i will go to my code again now let's execute uh, my code one by one but first of all what i will do i will remove this artifact and i will open my code and let me open my terminal let me clear so first of all i will try with my default parameter i have assigned in my params.yml i think true uh, learning rate is equal to 0 0.01 I think learning rate is equal to 0 0.01. Let me just, yeah, 0 0.01. And yeah, this is my default parameter. I think I am using from very scratch. Now let me execute the code. I'll just write Python main.py. Now, guys, see the magic uh, and see the power of MLflow. See, it has started downloading the data. Now I'll wait, okay? Uh, when it is done, I will come back. Uh, so guys as you can see execution is done and uh, it is also telling it has also registered my model and tracked experiment and this is the score i got here as you can see this is this code so now uh, what i will do i will go back mm, i will go back to my ml flow and if i refresh it you will see the experiment okay and it is done in uh, uh, it is done like uh, two minutes ago now what i will do again i will uh, do another experiment so i will just go to my params now i will take my epochs is equal to two and uh, let's take uh, or let's just take the epochs is equal to two i don't want to change my learning rate now i will see my accuracy will improve i think now what i will do i'll again open my terminal and uh, let me clear it and again i, I will execute my main.py see that's how you can do different different experiment okay and after that you can select your best model out of it using ml flow okay it will give you the graph and all everything you can see yeah, you, you can visualize the graph everything you can do it and you can pick up your best model and if you have watched that particular video i think you already know okay how powerful ml flow is so guys if you see it's completed now let me check my score now i think see accuracy is improved and loss is also decreased now let me refresh here uh, see guys two version of the model now let me do one thing let me train another version of the model okay let me train another version of the model so then i will show you the comparison so what i will do again i will change the parameter here now let's take uh, epochs is equal to 3 or learning rate is equal to 0 0.2 now let's see what happened now i'll open my terminal clear it and execute the code again
so guys it will take some time for you uh, just try to wait unless and until this execution is completed i'll just pause the video when it is done i will come back Uh, so guys it's done now let me see my score again uh yeah accuracy has been decreased again okay uh, because i changed this learning rate i think that's why uh, because learning rate this is the default parameter you always need to keep which is nothing but 0 0.1 okay now i i just uh, replaced these are the values just to, uh, wanted to show you different different experiment with different difference value okay now if i uh, just compare let me select all the uh, experiment and i will just do the comparison and here i want everything let's say image batch include top class weight everything with respect to that i also want to see my accuracy and losses now see let's try to fig figure out the best uh, model from here so what is the best model uh here uh if you see here uh loss should be decreased loss should be very less so here i can see this loss is very less accuracy should be very high this one now just try to figure out this model actually uh, i think it's uh, epoxy 2 i think this one epoxy 2 learning rate 0 0.1 and uh, here yeah learning rate 0 0.1 image size the same image size batch size same image batch size and uh, classes okay that means this one i think uh, yeah epoxy 2 and uh, learning rate is 0 0.1 this is the model i'm getting the higher accuracy and lower loss now let me figure out that model so how i can figure out here you, you can see so epoxy is 2 epoxy is 2 and learning rate learning rate is 0 0.1 okay so that means this the middle model this model actually so i'll uh, open this model now let me see the parameter again so epoxy is 2 learning rate 0 0.1 okay and this is the best matrix it is giving which is nothing but 0 point and 92 that means 92 percent and loss is very decrease here so now guys i can uh, use this model and i can use this parameter here okay i can use this parameter now i'll open my code i'll open my code and here i'll just give uh, epoxy is equal to 2 because i can see uh with with uh, epoxy is equal to 2 and learning rate uh, is equal to 0 point uh zero one i'm getting better better model okay see that's how instead of doing hyperparameter tuning you can do different different experiment as a data scientist and you can figure out the best model out of that okay and this is the power of uh, ml flow using ml flow you can do it very easily now you can also see the model it has tracked now click on the model and you can see i have seven models seven version of the model so far see guys all the seven version model you can see and i think you remember i added version one is my starting area so it is still running so i think uh version 6 was my uh this model is working fine i think if i show you okay so let's say this is my model is working fine which is nothing but my model 6 this version i'll just click on this model 6 and i will uh add it to my production now here studies should be production okay production now if i go back to my model you will see my model 6 is running in my production okay and i can also remove this model from this staging area so just click here now i'll click and click on archive so this model will be deleted now i will see my model is running on the production and there is no model inside my staging area so see guys uh using ml flow we can do this thing even using ml flow we can directly do the deployment let's say whenever i am giving this model to the production area this model would be automatically pushed uh, to the my uh, let's say if i'm using aws for the deployment it will automatically push to the as aws that kind of pipeline we, we we can also able to create here so uh, i'll bring some more project in future i will show you like how we can do it okay as of now i think you have learned like how to do the experiment tracking and how to do the model registration okay how to change it to the staging and production area okay guys so this is all uh this uh evaluation with ml flow and i think you got it like how to track the model how to track the experiment okay different different experiment uh so guys we have completed our model evaluation with ml flow so we have seen like how we can integrate ml flow uh with this uh project 
and uh, everything is clear and you need to use your credential okay your ml flow credential don't uh, use my one otherwise it won't be working uh, try to change these other credential with your credential try to create it from the dax hub and i already showed you uh, the starting of the video like how to work with the ml flow and all and uh, how to integrate dax hub how to integrate uh, aws everything i have showed there so in this project i use dax hub you can also use aws okay uh it's up to you now guys we'll see like how we can integrate dbc with that like uh, first of all i will tell you like what is dbc and why we need that so we'll be using dbc for the pipeline tracking here and again i uh, already discussed uh, dbc in my other project so i'll uh, integrate that video here so only you just need to uh, like uh, uh, change uh, inside your projects like the data part okay like uh, here yeah, i'm using just uh, ct scan data so there actually i was using some other data only just you need to change this folder name otherwise everything will remain same here okay so let's see like how we can integrate dbc pipeline there now guys what i'm going to do here uh, i'm going to add my dbc pipeline here okay so why i will be using dbc here uh, here i'm going to use dbc for the pipeline tracking so what is pipeline tracking guys uh, because if you see here whenever i'm executing my main.py that means uh, main.py is connected with my pipeline okay so whenever i'm executing this main.py so first of all it is uh, executing my data ingestion pipeline then uh, it is executing my uh, prepare uh, base model okay then it is executing my training then after that it is executing my evaluation stage that means all the component uh, is running one by one okay if this uh, file is also present inside artifacts let's say data ingestion is already ran and data is also present again if i execute main.py it will run again this uh, data ingestion again it will download the data okay so what is happening actually I'm just unnecessarily downloading the data again and again. Okay. Again, if you see here, prepare base model is also running. Okay. If you see here, prepare base model is also running. Then after that, my training is also running. Okay. If you see here, training is also running. So basically, what is happening here? If my artifact is also available, okay, if there is no chance, if there is no chance, everything is available. But after running this main.py, my all the components is running again and again. Okay, my pipeline is running and again and again. So that is the major issue whenever you are developing this kinds of end-to-end -end project. Because if you see the execution time, uh, it will take some time because it will first of all train the model, then log the information to the ML flow. So it takes time, right? But let's say if everything is updated already. So why you will be training this thing again and again? Okay, can we track this pipeline? Can we track this pipeline? Okay, like the Git we do, right? We do the version controlling. Let's say this uh, file I have already written the code. Okay, I already commit the changes. So if I'm trying to again commit this file, so it won't be allowing allowing me to do the commit because it, it will tell this code is already updated. Okay, there is no change in the code. So that is why it's kind of Git only. Okay, whenever I'll be using DVC. So using that actually, you can also do the pipeline tracking. So it will track the pipeline. So which pipeline actually you have executed and it is available or not. Okay, all the artifacts are available or not. If it is available, if there is no change that particular stage actually it will skip and it will run the next component okay let's say next component is not updated it will run the next component let's say my prepare base model is not available only my data ingestion is available so what it will do it will skip the data ingestion part and it will run the prepare base model part so that's how our entire dbc works okay uh, we can use uh, dbc for the pipeline tracking and the full form uh, is dbc is like data version control okay you can also do the data version control okay data version control you can also do so in future i will bring some more projects so there i'll show you how we can uh, do the data tracking but here i will use this dbc for the pipeline tracking okay so now what i'm trying to say here let me just give you one demo i think it would be clear now let's say uh, i will execute i'll try to execute this file again okay let's say uh, uh, my all the artifacts are available my data ambition my prepare base model my training even my model is available even this json matrix is also available after running this evolution stage now let's say if i again execute my main.py so let me open my terminal so if i execute my main.py just see what will happen so i'll just write uh, python main.py see although my artifacts are available already now again it will uh, it is downloading the data if you see here it is again downloading the data and it will replace the same data file here so guys that is the issue see all of the artifacts are already available from my each and every component but it is again running the code so what is happening guys you are unnecessary like uh, running your code and you are unnecessary you're wasting your computation right so that is the issue and it will take time again so uh, now what i will do i will use dbc and uh, i will write some like yaml command there and uh, you will see like how beautifully it will track all the pipeline okay how beautifully it will uh, remember everything like which file you ran 
okay now what are the things has been generated everything it will track okay and it will reduce uh your effort okay this kinds of training effort and uh, it will also reduce the time okay you will be executing your code i'll show you guys so let's uh wait so once it is completed i will come back Uh, so guys as you can see uh, it has uh, executed successfully and uh, see guys <laughs> although i have everything but again it has executed all the pipeline one by one okay so this is the like major issue now if you visit like daxa website just search for daxa oh sorry uh, now if you visit uh, your dvc website dvc so this is the website dvc.org uh, and this is the home page dvc okay this is the home page of the dvc now here if you see dvc is an open source uh, git based data science apply a version control to the machine learning uh, development make your uh, repo the backbone of your project and uh, instill best practice across your team okay so basically it uses git in the back end okay like uh, you need git to run the dvc and it applies the version control technique okay to your machine learning or deep learning projects so what is version control technique i think you already know in git so you can apply this version control technique uh, in two way one is on your, on top of your data another is on top of your pipeline okay so here we'll be using the pipeline one because i want to track my pipeline okay and everything they have given like what are the things actually you can do with the dvc and all and uh, how to install it all the documentation if you go to the documentation all the installation guideline everything they have given okay so to install this dvc uh, i think you remember we have already added this uh, one let me show you let me just uh, hmm. so in our requirement.txt we have at this dvc okay now it has already installed the dvc in my uh, system okay now what i will do um, uh, here one uh, file i have created called dvc.yml i will open this file and here i just need to mention some of the command okay what are the commands i need to mention now let me show you so if you visit uh, their documentation and guide you will uh, see they have mentioned the get started command and all but let's start with our uh, um, project one because this is a simple just a yaml command you just need to write here so here the first thing uh, which pipeline i'm running guys just try to consider if you see here first of all i'm running my data indication uh, this one it stays zero one data indication dot pi this is our first first component is our first pipeline okay so first of all i need to add this stage okay i need to add this stage and uh, and to run this stage okay what are the dependency i need first of all let me show you the command i prepared so this is your uh, data indication uh, stage command so here see guys what are the things i'm mentioning i'm telling this is the stage stage is nothing but my data indication okay data indication stage and uh, what is the command i'm executing this uh, this file actually if you see called uh, stage 01 data indication dot pi if you see here it is present inside cnn then cnn classifier so it is present inside src then cnn classifier then inside pipeline i have this file and i'm running the command if you see python if i execute this file so basically it will run this uh, file for me and if i'm running this file it will ingest the data okay i think you remember i have already added this main function that's why okay just for the dvc now once it is done once you will execute this file so what is the dependency you need to execute the file okay so here i have mentioned uh, it is dependent on this data indication dot pi basically when, whenever you are running one particular file in dvc it will depend upon the same file okay it will depend upon the same file because let's say this file is not available then how it will execute so that's why in the dependency you need to add this file itself is the dependency of this file so again i'm adding src cnn classifier pipeline inside that i have data indication dot pi I'm just telling this is the dependency of this particular file if you want to execute it. And another dependency, I think you know, I'm all, I'm depending upon this config.yml because here I have mentioned my data indication related configuration. Okay. So this is I have added here config slash config.yml. So basically, what are the file you have dependency to run this uh, to execute this file? You need to add inside the dependency. It it may vary uh, uh, like uh, with respect to your project. So here the project I have designed, it is depending upon only these two files. Fine. Now I think you got to know like how you need to write this at the DBC command. It's like very simple. Only just need to understand 
to execute one particular uh, like uh, pipeline what would be the dependency and what would be the output okay now what is the output here if you see out so it will generate this one data ingestion and kidney ct scan image right so here i have mentioned artifact slash data ingestion kidney ct scan image that's it guys that's it this is the dependency only you need to add here and this is the command you need to add here so this is for my data ingestion this is for my data ingestion now i need to write for my next one which is nothing but prepare model now i already prepared for my prepare base model now let me just show you uh, if i show you this one i think this should be pretty much clear guys like what are the things i am adding so now i should align with this data ingestion one because this is my prepare callbacks one now i should align it yeah i think everything is fine make sure you are adding inside stages okay stage this is my data ingestion stage this is my prepare callbacks uh sorry prepare uh, base model stage now see guys first of all what i'm doing i'm just executing this file prepare base model if you see python src cn classifier pipeline prepare base model dot pi then what is the dependency to execute this file i have dependency uh, of this file itself only okay uh, this file i need to add and it is also depending upon the config.yaml because if you see here uh, prepare uh, callbacks taking some of the configuration from this config.yaml okay then it is also depending upon some parameter okay if i open this uh, params.yaml see guys i think you remember whenever i was uh, preparing my base model i was taking image size include top classes weight and learning rate so that is why i'm just telling params and inside params what are the parameters actually i was using i have just mentioned it here and what would be the output the output would be this folder prepare base model here if you see prepare base model this should be the output okay simple thing only guys just you need to understand like how to add the command that must simple like this dvc is if you understand this uh like flow you can integrate this dvc with any kinds of project you will be doing in future okay that's it now what would be the, my next uh, stage next stage is nothing but my model training now let's add it for my model training so here just let me add okay so this is for my model training now again what i'm doing i'm executing my uh, model trainer uh if you see here i think it should be model training dot pi let me just rename the name and we'll see hmm. so again i'm running the command uh stage 3 model trainer uh training dot pi then uh, it is depending upon your uh, this uh, file itself called model training and it is also depending upon uh I haven't used callbacks here, so I can remove it here. It is depending upon this config.yaml. Okay, config.yaml. Uh, because again, I'm reading the configuration, I think, remember for the training. Now it is depending upon your data also. Like whenever you are training your model, right? You are training your model, it is also loading the data, I think, you remember. So it is also depending upon this kidney CT scan image. That is why I have added. Then it is also depending upon the prepare base model because it is also loading the model, I think, you remember. This model it was loading, so it is also depending upon the prepare base model. And what are the parameters it was using? Image size, epox, batch size, and augmentation. I think you remember whenever I was doing the training, it was depending upon these are the parameters. Again, I'm picking up from my parameter itself. And what is the artifacts it is generating? Output, it is generating this uh, model.h5 inside the training folder. That's it, guys. That's it. Now let me save it. Now, what was my last one? Last one is my model evaluation one. Now let me add the model evaluation one. And this is my last one. And if you add it, so you are able to integrate the DBC pipeline with your code. So yes, this is my model evaluation. Again, it is uh, depend, uh, running. I'm, I'm, I'm executing this command model evaluation. Then uh, it is depending upon this model evaluation itself. Then it is depending upon the config.yaml. And it is also depending upon the CT scan image because again, it was loading the data. It was doing the evaluation, right? And it is also depending upon the model uh, file inside my training because it was loading that model, my trained model, right? And parameter again, it is what is depending upon image size and batch size. And metrics is what generating called uh score.json i think you remember score.json it was generating and once it is done once all the like uh component or all the stages you have added you need to give this catch is equal to false okay this thing you need to give now guys see my uh dvc is prepared my dvc is prepared now let me show you how it will track the pipeline so guys now what i will do uh i will show you the dvc one so first of all unexpand these are the file okay now i'll also unexpand this file okay so to start with uh, your dvc first of all you need to execute one command um let me show you the command guys see 
make sure first of all you have the git uh, present okay i already have git present in my folder as you can see dot git is present that means i was using git okay from very scratch now first command you need to execute called dbc uh, init okay if you do dbc init it will initialize the dbc here so i'll just clear my terminal and here i'll just write uh, dbc init now if i do dbc init you will see it will initialize DB, uh, dbc here see uh, it has uh, initialized one folder called dot dbc and uh, it has uh, also initialized this dot dbc ignore so these are the file would be generated after running this command okay the next command what i will do uh, i will run this dbc repro command okay dbc repro command but before that what i will do um, i need to delete the artifacts okay i need to delete the artifacts because i just want to show you like once it will run the pipeline okay entire pipeline then if i am running it again okay it won't be running the pipeline again and again okay so for this what i will do i'll just remove this artifact just let me remove the artifact so this is the artifacts i will remove then here what i will do because i don't want to run my ml flow like uh, this code because it will take time so i'll just quickly uh, comment that line so i'll go inside my src and cnn classify then i'll go to the pipeline and ml flow model evaluation so log into ml flow this line i'll just comment it out okay just to quick quickly show you like i don't want to execute this file i'll only uh run till uh, save the json okay it is uh, like it will only save the json file okay and i don't want to like log the information to the ml class of now because it will take time now what i will do uh i'll just write uh i'll open my terminal let me clear it again okay now see guys my artifacts is not there now what i will do i will also delete this uh, score.json because it is also available here okay fine now i'll execute this command called dbc dbc repro repro see guys this is the command if you execute this command basically it will run this dbc.yml file it will go inside dbc.yml file it will run this dbc.yml file and this dbc.yml file it will run this uh, pipeline one by one one by one because you have mentioned all the command here right so this is the convenience of writing this yml file now let me show you see guys if i run this dbc repro now the first pipeline has started my data ingestion and see guys my data is downloading and it is also tracking guys it is also tracking my data is downloading to this folder okay what is with the dependency what it be the artifacts everything it will track so that whenever you will be running for the second time okay if it is there if there is no chance it won't be running otherwise it will run just let me show you guys let me complete it okay then i will show you uh now see guys uh data ingestion is done now prepare base model is running okay see how beautiful it is tracking now prepare base model is done now my tra uh, training is running if you see running stays training and my training is happening and in the artifact if i show you my artifact inside artifacts all the things has been generating okay now just let me finish it okay guys so it is giving one error uh shelling cannot find uh, this file uh, stage 04 evaluation.py uh just let me check uh okay sorry guys i think it should be model evaluation let me just copy the name and give it here it should be model evaluation this is my bad it happens actually whenever you are writing code so it happens sometimes okay now mm, everything i think it's fine now what i will do again i will uh, delete my artifact now again i will try to execute the code i'll open my um, terminal let me clear uh, huh, now let me run this dvc repro say so again data ingestion started so guys you can see execution is done now if i open my artifact see my data has been downloaded if you see this uh, kidney ct scan everything it is downloaded and uh, prepare base model also downloaded uh, and a model is also trained and my matrix of json has been also generated see guys okay now 
it is able to running successfully. Now let's say all the files are available inside my RDPX. Okay, all the things, all the RDPX is available from all, all of my component. Now, if I want to again execute this, let me first of all clear uh, this uh, DBC repro. Now see what it will tell. So it is telling stage data ingestion didn't change skipping. Then prepare bonds, uh, prepare base model didn't change is, 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 is skipping. Okay, then training is skipping, evaluation is skipping, data and pipeline are up to date. Okay, that means here if you see it has created some additional file called uh, dbc.lock. Okay, so inside that it has tracked all everything like what are the things it has uh, like executed everything it has tracked like all the metadata it already has even with the file size okay file name everything it has tracked uh, if you're not changing anything inside the file then it won't be running that particular file itself okay that is the power of dbc now here let's say i will just remove this one uh, prepare base model prepare base model i will remove so let's say this is not available in my pipeline now what will happen if I again execute this DBC repro, it will skip my data ingestion. But if you see here, prepare base model, it is running. Okay, it is running now. Again, I got my base model. Okay. And again, train model was there. That's why it is again is skipping. I think you, you can see here, it, it didn't change skipping. And evolution also didn't change skipping. That's how if you're not doing anything changes in your code. Okay, if you're not um, like many changes in your code or let's say in your pipeline, it won't be running the pipeline it will skip every time let's say if you run thousand time if you run thousand time it will skip okay if i'm running thousand time it will skip okay it won't be running that's how i can save my time i can save my computational power instead of doing unnecessary training because i i will i was showing you whenever i wasn't using my dvc it was running the entire code again and again but now i'm now i'm able to track my pipeline so this is the power of dvc guys uh now i think you got it what is pipeline tracking so using this one particular file called dbc.yml, we are able to track the entire pipeline. Okay. Now, whenever you are executing your code, don't try to run the main.py. Instead of running, just run this dbc.yml. Uh, dbc that means dbc repro. This command you need to execute. But we won't be training our model again and again. Okay. Always we won't be training. So whenever you are training your model, at that time, just try to run dbc repro command instead of running main.py. Because main.py is a simple Python file, but dbc.yml has the dbc integrated with that right so i think you got it guys what you need to do here now yes guys this is the dbc part and we are uh, successfully able to integrate that now let me just quickly do the commit operation so what i will do i'll just do the commit and make sure whenever you are executing this code you just remove these are the thing dbc lock then uh, dbc ignore okay these are the file you just remove and only just keep this dbc yaml file and rest of the thing you can remove okay from your repository then try to run it because this is my code i'm just committing here just for your reference now here i'll just give the commit a dbc add it dbc add it Okay, and also try to uncomment this one, uh, uncomment this uh, evolution uh, log into ML flow. Whenever you are trying to experiment your ML flow, you can uh, like uncomment this one to see the log inside the ML flow. But as of now, I've commented just to execute the code uh, like uh, very fast. Okay, but as of now, I've just committed this line because I want to show you the quick execution. That's why. Okay, and make sure you are changing these are the URL uh, your uh, on uh, URI you are using, just try to create uh, this URI using your DAX app and try to use your own URI. Don't use my URI, otherwise it will throw error. And make sure whenever you are executing ML flow, okay, uh, try, uh, whenever you are running this pipeline with the uh, we, uh, like after uh, you can say uncommenting this line, make sure you are adding this uh, command again and again. Uh, export, just try to export these three things. Okay, I think I already showed you. Try to, you need to export it. Let's say you have uh, closed your system. Okay, you have closed your system. You have also closed your terminal. So, whenever you will open in second time, you need to execute this particular, uh, you need to execute this particular th three command. Otherwise, it will throw, throw error. Okay, so make sure you are running this three command. Okay, now I think it has committed. Now, see so if I just run DVC DAG. See, guys, you will see like. See the pipeline see guys first of all it has run the data ingestion and data ingestion is uh depending upon what data ingestion is depending upon model evolution and training because to execute training you need data ingestion that means data unit right and to do the evolution you need the data and prepare based model is only depending upon the training because 
training needs the base model okay and prepare base model is uh, doesn't need like data integration and evaluation so this is the graph actually you can see by seeing the graph you can easily tell like what is the dependency of your pipeline okay so this one beautiful thing they have created called dvc dag okay i hope you get it so guys uh, we have completed everything so all the training pipeline is completed and we have also added like uh, mlflow and dvc now uh, it's time to create our prediction pipeline and user app because uh, now see we have the training pipeline we can train our model and all now let's say if i want to predict something on top of my new image actually so this kinds of functionality we haven't added in my uh, projects so uh, now actually we'll be adding the prediction pipeline and i will also add like one basic user app so that actually user can upload one image and they can get the prediction okay and i will be using flask uh, for this okay so using flask actually i'll be uh, creating one basic template okay you can use it you can also use django you can also use the streamlit it's up to you but i will be using flask here because flask would be very much easy for me now guys here uh, to create the prediction pipeline i will uh, come inside pipeline and here i will create one file called prediction dot py and it's like very simple so here is the code guys i already prepared for the prediction so here first of all i'm importing some of the libraries so as you can see i'm importing load model then image and a voice uh, i think you know if you are using tensorflow so there is one method called load model using that actually you can load the model okay and using this image uh, method actually you can pre process the image actually it will be uploading it will be uh, doing the prediction okay so here first of all i'm creating one class called prediction pipeline and whatever uh, like image user will pass first of all i will save that inside this variable and then here i have created one method called predict okay so first of all i will load the model here so as you can see this is my model inside training folder i have my model okay inside rfix inside training i have my model i'm just loading the model okay with the help of this load model then i'm receiving the image here then first of all i am loading the image with the help of this image uh, method we have uh, imported from tensorflow uh, then here i'm specifying the image uh, size as you can see so i think you remember we uh, used a uh, vz16 model and it takes uh 224 224 3 okay this is the resolution uh, so this is the like you can say uh, resizing operation i'm doing then i'm just converting the image to array okay then i'm expanding the dimension okay basically it will take one batch dimension that is why i'm expanding then after that uh, here i'm doing the prediction okay and here i'm calculating the r max so it will give me the uh, maximum probability and first of all i will check if uh my result is one okay if my result is one that means it's a normal okay normal uh, chest and if it is uh, zero okay if it is not one that means it's a adenocarcinoma cancer okay so so this thing actually i saw uh, like from the data provider so they are telling like if uh, your uh, prediction is one that means it's a normal and if it is zero that means it's a adenocarcinoma cancer so this is the prediction i'm doing and i'm just returning it that's it okay now uh, what i need to do i need to uh, create one um, application here so for this actually uh, i need one app.py file so let's create this app.py file i don't have it so app.py so here first of all i will import some of the libraries so here i'm importing flask and all as you can see then i also need to import some uh, my prediction pipeline from my uh, prediction uh, pipeline i created here okay as you can see so from prediction i'm importing my prediction pipeline this class okay then after that i will initialize my flask okay so here uh, you can initialize the flask like that then first of all i will be creating one class here called client app and here whatever user will uh, pass okay whatever uh, image actually user will give i will uh, save it as input dot uh, jpg okay this is the name i will save it then i will call my prediction pipeline and here i will provide my image okay as you can see uh, this prediction pipeline will take the image okay image uh, you are passing that image actually i'll pass here and i will create one object called classifier okay then first of all i will uh, create one default route here so basically whenever user will launch my application so they will uh, get one uh, a page landing page so it is index.html so here i already created one basic html i think you saw i was showing you the demo so this is the code for that and you don't need to worry about for this html and css code so this code you can use uh, my code as it is okay i created this code by referring this bootstrap website let me show you so if you go to uh, google and search for bootstrap so here uh, this is the website guys and here you have lots of example so here actually uh, i referred this um, like you can say website and i created that html and css code for me 
so guys as you can see these are examples okay you can refer this website and otherwise you can refer my code I will uh, provide this code in the description okay uh, you can copy paste from there okay so yeah this is the basic template i created so it's a basic image uploader i created here i'll show you like how it will look like and even i showed you in my demonstration uh, uh video okay and it should present inside template folder because uh, flask will read from this templates folder now my landing page is ready now i also need to create one training route so guys this is my training route as you can see if user is giving slash train so it will hit the training route and it will run this main.py okay main.py is my endpoint i think you remember it is my endpoint so it will execute that file and it will start the training and once training is done it will uh, give you training successful here you can also give uh, dbc repro command so it will uh, run this dbc uh, it will trigger this dbc pipeline and it will uh, also track your pipeline okay both you can do uh, so i will comment here so you can also do dbc repro dbc uh dbc repro you can also run okay both you can run i will comment it out uh, as of now you can run this uh, main.py okay then once training is done i will also need to create one prediction route so this is the prediction route so if user is uh giving slash predict okay if uh, they're uploading the image and click on the predict so it will hit the predict route and it will first of all take the image from the front end then it will decode it okay as you can see uh, inside uh so here if you see i already created one uh decode a function inside my uh, utils so basically you see the image actually user is passing okay from the front end it will first of all convert to base 64 string okay and that base 64 string i al uh, also need to convert to my uh, raw jpg okay that means uh, image format so this function will help me to do that okay it will decode the image with respect to the uh, image format then once it is done it will save inside my folder okay so that is what I actually it is doing so let me show you like how this thing works so there is a website called base 64 guru just go here and let's say here i want to do um, image to base 64 so image to base 64 is there and there is another thing like base 64 base 64 to image okay image to base, base 64 to image yeah so these two website uh, i can refer to show you so let's say i will choose one image here so any image i can choose here let me choose one particular image let's say i will choose this image then if i click on encode to base 64 see it will give me one base 64 string okay now let me copy this string so here i can copy okay so this is my base 64 string now if i paste this base 64 string here and con and decode it again so it will give me that raw image see guys okay so that's how actually it is working so basically whenever you are uh, passing some input okay you are giving some uploading some input in my app it will uh, first of all convert to base 64 then uh, this function will help me to decode that okay it will again save to the uh, jpg format and i will uh, get the image okay that's how it actually it is working now once it is done i also need to initialize my uh, client app here okay and this is not required So here I'm calling this class in a client app and then I'm just running my uh, app. Okay. And this is the host and this is the port number. Yeah, it's completed. Now let's see whether everything is fine or not. So I'll open my terminal and I will execute Python uh, app.py. So guys, as you can see, it's running. So it's running port number 8080. Let's go to my Google and search localhost port number 8080. And see guys, this is my app. Okay. Now here you can upload any image. And you can do the prediction okay i'm not going to do it uh, uh, i already showed you like how to do that do that in my demonstration video okay now this uh, project is ready for the deployment guys now we will be deploying this project so i already created one uh, deployment video uh, for my previous projects okay so i'll add this video here uh, only you just need to replace your project there okay and all these steps will remain same okay so let's uh, see like how we can deploy these projects and how we can also add this uh, cicd pipeline how we can also add this uh, docker and all everything i will show you there okay so yes guys now let's do the deployment uh, so guys our project is ready now we can uh, deploy this project to the aws cloud uh, but before that i have done some slight modification here so let me show you so what i did here uh, because see uh, artifacts actually i'm not committing in my github that's why artifact won't be uploaded if i show you my artifact see there is no artifact folder but in the artifacts actually i have my model okay but let's say after uh, doing the deployment uh, you want to do some prediction so uh, 
there actually if your model is not available so this code will give error like this model file not found so what i did actually i created another folder called model inside that i just kept this model okay i just kept this train model if you see your train model and in the prediction pipeline instead of loading from my artifacts i'm loading from this folder itself as you see here i'm just giving model and model.h5 okay so now my uh, model uh here i'll be loading my model and i will be doing the prediction okay so that is the slight modification i have done now what i will do i'll just quickly commit the changes uh, model added now you will see uh this model folder would be uploaded in my github okay see one particular update actually you can do in this project uh i will give you this thing as an uh, like assignment task uh, so once you are training this model okay this model.h5 just write a python script okay uh, like after training uh, use like uh, python uh, inbuilt or like you can say uh, external package to copy this model.h5 in this folder okay there should be some package i think you can use so using that package actually you can directly copy this model h5 to this model folder okay i have just done it manually uh, so if you know python i'm expecting i think you will be able to do it uh, very easily okay just a simple copy operation you just need to do copy this model from this folder to this folder only okay so this thing would be automated that time but here i just kept manually okay just to show you okay how we can do the prediction itself if you're not uh uploading your artifacts because artifacts will have also the data right so this data actually i can't push so that's why i kept this model as separate i think it should work let me clear the terminal mm, i'll just write python app.py now let me open this link yeah now let me upload one image now let me do the prediction see guys it's working fine okay uh it's working fine and uh, let's see if you want to train your model what you can do if you see in the app i have given this training route okay this training route i have given so you just give slash train here if you give slash train then press enter it will start the training again okay it will run all the pipeline so i'm not going to train because it will again take time you can test from your side now what i will do i'll just quickly uh, uh write my docker file and the cicd.yml file then i'll try to do the deployment so here what i will do i think docker file i don't have here i need to create docker file here so let me first of all unexpand these are the thing okay so here first of all i'll be creating one file called docker file docker file okay so in this docker file uh i just need to write some particular command like docker command so it's a very simple docker command let me explain what are the things i have just written here see first of all uh the python version you are using in your project so in this case actually i was using python 3.8 i think you remember so this image actually i'm taking called python 3.8 slim buster image okay this is the python image first of all it will download the python uh, image okay python interpreter then what I'm doing, I'm just installing uh, like AWS CLI here because I'm going to uh, deploy my app to the AWS cloud and there actually I need this AWS CLI. Okay, CLI that means it's a terminal. Now here I'm creating one directory called app. Inside that I'm copying all of my source code. Okay, inside this app, then I'm running this requirement.txt because it will install all the requirements. Okay, in the uh, like uh, environment we will be creating in my uh, deployment. Okay, there. Then what it will do? Now uh, it will run this app.py because app is my endpoint and here if you see i have already mentioned my host and port okay so that's it this is the simple docker file i've just created now what i will do uh, i'll create another file inside dot github inside workflows so let me quickly create it mm, called main.yaml main.yaml so in this uh, yaml file i'll be writing all of my cicd command now i can remove this dot git keep it's not required okay now i already prepared this uh, yaml uh, command it's just a simple command okay uh, so you don't need to understand this command and all you will get this code in the internet itself just search like how to do ci cd deployment using github action with aws okay you will get this file now here i've just done some slight modifications so here i'm doing actually continuous integration continuous delivery in continuous delivery what i'm doing I'm just uh, connecting with my AWS. Okay. There actually I was uh, installing some of the necessary libraries. Then I'm logging uh, with my uh, ECR. Okay. I'll tell you what is ECR and all. Then I'm just building my Docker image. Okay. Then I'm pushing this Docker, Docker image to my ECR. That's it. And in continuous deployment, again, I'm logging with my account. 
and pulling the image from my ECR and running inside my EC2 machine. Okay, so that's it. So this is the just modification I have done in the code. Now what I will do, uh, this is the file you need to add there. Now I think everything is fine. You don't need to change anything. Okay. Now let me show you the deployment steps actually are the following. So let me write it down in the readme.md file. So here I'll just mention my deployment step. Uh, yeah, guys, see. So the first thing here, I think I mentioned deployment step. Hmm. First thing, we'll be building one Docker image, okay, of our entire source code. So that is why I've created that Docker file. Then I'll push that Docker image to the ECR. That means Elastic Container Registry. So this is the service from AWS. It's kind of Docker uh, hub only, okay. So there actually we can store Docker image. Then I will launch one EC2 machine, okay. So it is a virtual machine. Then I'll pull that image uh, from ECR to uh, EC, EC2. That means I will be pulling that uh, image from ECR to EC2 machine. Then I'll launch uh, my Docker image inside EC2 machine and it will be running. Okay. At that time I can, I'll be doing some uh, like port mapping. Then I will be able to access my application. Okay. That's it. And for this, I need this two policy. Okay. I'll be showing you like how we can add the policy and all. And here I've just mentioned all the command you need to execute there. Now what I will do, uh, let me show you one uh, thing actually here. Uh, yeah. So see, whenever you are doing the deployment at that time, I think you remember in our pipeline, let me show you the pipeline uh, in this model evolution. So there actually I added the uh, ML flow, okay, ML flow code. This thing you need to comment out because see, only ML flow experiment will be doing whenever we are building this project, okay, in our development stage, okay, whenever we'll be doing a different, different experiment at that time, we will be activating this thing and we'll be training our model. But once I got the parameter, okay, once I got my real parameter, okay, like what are the parameter actually is suitable for this data, okay, once I get it, I don't need this ML flow. So that's why I've just commented out, okay, now I'll do the deployment. So make sure you, you just take care. These are the thing, okay. Now what I will do, uh, the first thing I'll be logging with my AWS console. So the, uh, this is my AWS console, guys, I have already logged in. You just also log in with your AWS console. So here, first of all, let me show you the deployment steps actually I'll be following here. Uh, yeah. So first of all, I need to log in with the AWS console. I already logged in. Then I need to create one IAM user for the deployment. Now just click on this um, uh, home home page and just search here IAM. Okay, that means identity access management because I don't want to give uh, all of the service. Okay, uh, like to my user. Uh, uh, actually, they uh, if I am giving, then then they will be able to access. And again, it's costly, so I don't want to like increase the cost. That's why I only will give that these are the permission only I need this for the deployment okay so here I'll click on the user and uh, I'll just create one uh, uh, user here I'll give this user name as let's say kidney I'll give the project name only then I'll click on next then here it is telling just uh, add permission so just click on attach policy now here I already given the policy you need to add here. So these two policy you need to add, just copy one by one. And search here. I'll add it. Then after that, I'll just uh, remove here. Then again, I'll copy the second one. Then I'll give it here. That's it. Now I'll click on next. Then create user. If you see these two policy has been added, now create user. Okay, my user has created. Now I'll go to the user and collect my secret credential actually. So click on security credential and here you will get access keys. Okay, now create access keys. So these keys actually I need uh, to access my account. Okay, I need to add in my secret and don't share this uh, credential with anyone. Otherwise, they will also able to access your uh, account. So I will delete this credential. Okay, after just recording the video, that's why I'm showing you. Now I'll select command line interface, then I'll click on next. Okay, I need to uh, confirm this one, then I'm to next. Now everything is fine. Now create access key. Now this is my access key and secret access key. You can also download a CSV file. Let me download. See guys, it has downloaded. Now let me open it. Uh, open. Now see guys, this is my secret access key and this is my uh, um, access key ID and secret access key. So this thing I need, okay. Whenever I need, I will tell you. Now what I will do. Uh, first step I have done, like I have already uh, created this uh, one. Uh, I'm user. Now what I need to do, uh, I need to create one ECR repository to save my Docker image. Okay, now let's go back and click on AWS. And here, the, now search for ECR. Okay, ECR, that means Elastic Container Registry. This is the service.
now here i'll just click on get started now here just uh, make it as private and uh, give the name i'll just give kidney then again i'll just create the repository so kidney has been created now you just need to copy this uri okay let's copy the uri and save it somewhere actually i need it so i'll just uh, save it here in the readme i think i added this uri somewhere okay so this is the uri you need to save this uri because i need it later on okay now let's go back and make sure you 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 see the your region so i'm inside ap south one that means uh, asia pacific okay this region so whatever region actually you are using try to uh, track it always okay now uh, this thing also has been done like i have created my ecr uh, repo now i need to uh, create one ec2 machine so let's go back and click on the aws and here i will search for ec2 so ec2 is a virtual service virtual machine service so there actually i'll launch one machine now i'll launch instance and here i'll just give the name so kidney machine then select this ubuntu machine and uh, here uh, everything will remain same uh, just select the instance type i'll be taking some bigger ram here because this is a deep learning project at least 8 gb ram i need so i'll take this t2 large this machine then here uh, you can select key value pair just create a new key value pair so i'll just give name let's say kidney then i'll just create a key value pair and i will select it here kidney okay see kidney i have selected now here what i will do i'll just uh, allow this to access and uh, storage i need uh, let's say i will take 32 gb i think just a minute yeah it would be 32 gb okay now i think everything is fine uh, then i'll just launch the instance now i'll click on view instance now see guys status is pending so this should be running okay then we will be able to access the machine let's wait so guys you can see my uh, instance is running now i'll just click on this trans id and here i'll just do the connect and i'll make it connect so it will launch one terminal here and here we'll be installing all the necessary tool so this is my terminal let me clear it and let me zoom it a little bit okay so here the first thing i will uh i need to install some i first of all i need to upgrade my apt gate okay so this is the command i have given just run one by one it's done then i will copy the second one give yes so it may take some time let's wait so guys if you are getting this window just press enter from the keyboard it will disappear uh, yeah it's done then i need to install docker uh, in my ec2 machine so these are the command you need to execute one by one let me run it make sure you are running all the command now i'll copy the third command and run it then last command now if you want to verify docker is running or not just write docker hyphen hyphen version see guys it's showing the version that means docker is running now what i need to do i already have installed docker now i need to configure ec2 as my self-hosted runner okay so for this i need to go to my project setting so this is my project i'll click on the project setting 
then here left hand side you have one option called action click on action then click on run ad then here you just uh, click on new self-hosted run ad now here just select the linux machine and uh, these are the command you need to execute one by one so first of all i'll copy this command i'll go to my machine and execute it here then i'll copy the second one So basically, I'm uh, trying to connect with my GitHub, okay, with this uh, EC2, uh, AWS EC2, so that whenever I will uh, commit my code in my GitHub, it will automatically pull the code here and it will run the code here, okay. So that is what I'm doing here. So using these are the credential, it will connect with your GitHub. So that's why you need to execute these are the command one by one. then i need to run two more command so this is the second last command see it has uh, connected with my github github action now it is asking for the uh, runner group okay i'll just press enter now it is asking for name of the runner so i'll just give self hyphen hosted okay make sure you are giving this name otherwise it won't be working self hyphen hosted now I'll again press enter. Now again I'll press enter. Now see, uh, it's done. Now I'll just connect with my uh, GitHub. This is the last command. Now you will see it will be connected. See guys, connected to GitHub and listening for the jobs. Now if I go back to my uh, runner. See guys, it's idle. That means it has connected. Now, what I need to do, I have already connected as self-hosted runner. Now I need to add my GitHub secret, okay, one by one. So first secret, I need to add AWS access key ID. So I'll again go back to my project setting. And here I have this secret and variable, okay. I'll click on action. Then I'll click on add new, new repository secret. Now here, the first thing I need to add for my AWS access key ID, I'll copy. I'll paste it here. Then access key ID where you will get. I think you remember we downloaded one CSV file. So this is my access key ID. I'll just copy till comma. And I'll give it here. Add secret. Fine. Now what I will do, I will copy the second one, AWS secret access key ID. Again, I'll click on new repository secret and add it here. Make sure this should be the name secret key. Now, where I will get the secret key again, I will open that CSV file. This is my secret key. Make sure you copy after this comma. Okay, comma is the separator. It's done. Now, let me see that next one AWS region. So, for me, I think it's AP South one because I'm in Mumbai region. AWS region. If you are not sure, just click here, it will show. I am inside a Mumbai, so AP South 1. So this is the name, just write AP hyphen South hyphen 1. Now I'll click add, add secret. Then, then I'll copy the next one AWS ECR logging URI. So where you will get the URI? I think you remember in the readme file, we have saved one URI. Okay, this is the URI, just copy till dot com. And I'll give the URI here. Done. And last one, ECR repository name. And what is your ECR repository name? So after URI, uh, let me open the readme one. After URI, you have this kidney. Okay, this, this is the name of the URI. So guys, I hope I have added everything. Yes, so I have added everything and it is uh, ready to push. Now I'll go back to my project. Yeah, so here now what I will do, I will go back to my project and I will update one file here. So what I can do here, I'll go back to my project. Uh, 
okay so let me update something here because if i'm not updating then I, I would be able to commit okay so i'll just remove these are the thing so you just make anything update in your code so that actually will get this commit commit message okay you can add a one comment and anything you can do inside app.py now see commit message is available now make sure everything is fine let me check it once my main.py this one i will delete because uh, this was i was doing for azure so that's why this file is coming now only you just need main.yml file and i think all the commands are fine okay and make sure this three line would be uh commented uh like as the at the very first because there won't be any container running at the very first that's why i have commented but once you uh you are deploying for one time then second time you need to uncomment this line okay so this is the thing now guys i think everything is fine uh i can do the push operation so i'll just write uh, mm, done okay now let me now if i go to my repository now if i refresh you will see one uh yolo uh, icon that means uh my workflows is running now i'll click on action and this is the done and this commit message is coming because i also did previously that's why but for you it will just co only co coming one now see continuous ingestion is done now continuous delivery is happening inside continuous delivery first of all it will uh, install some utilities then it will configure with my aws credential basically it will log in with the aws then it will build a docker image of our entire source code then it will push that image to the ecr okay so this is the step actually it will be running inside my continuous delivery so guys uh, this step may take some time depends upon your project size so in this case my project size is a little bit big so it, it may take some time so i'll pause the video and uh, i will uh, continue once it is done so guys as you can see uh, my continuous delivery is also done now it is running the continuous deployment so in this stage actually what will happen uh, it will uh, pull that docker image from the ecr and it will launch inside the ec2 machine now again it may take some time let's wait okay we'll come back so guys as you can see all the three stages ran successfully that means everything is fine now i will go to my application again and here first of all let me check the port i have assigned so i will go to the app.py so i think it's 8080 yeah port number 80 i need to configure the port so i'll go to my instance let me zoom out okay so here i will go to my instance this is my instance now here you will get one option called security just click on the security then security group now here right hand side you have edit and bound rules just click here and click on add rules now it should be custom tcp and port number it would be 8080 okay uh, the custom port we are using and it would be 000 and everything is fine save rules okay then i will again uh, go back to my ec2 machine running machine this is my machine i will come here now my machine is running now here you will get one public ip address now copy this address and paste it here and give the port number 8080 now uh, your app should be running see guys my app is running now i can do the prediction see guys it's giving normal okay everything is working fine now if i am also like uh, closing this terminal also like your aws terminal it's running still this app, app will work see again i will upload one image normal image and let's do the prediction see guys okay so guys we are able to successfully deploy our application and it is running fine and if you want to train it so you just you can train it just give slash train so it will start the training so i'm not going to train it because again it will take time okay now guys what i will do i will also show you how we can uh, terminate the instance because if you just keep it running like that so it will charge you so i'll also show you how to terminate so to terminate the instance just go to your ec2 machine again and select the machine you have created and click on the instance id and terminate the instance terminate so basically it will delete everything after some time so okay you see it is shutting down okay now if i refresh the page okay it's not there and uh, now what i will do i will also delete my ecr so uh, ecr i will go to the ecr so this is my ecr i have created i'll click here and delete okay 
Then I also created, I think, I am user. I'll also delete this one. This is my kidney user, and I'll just delete it. So that's it guys now if i again refresh this page say it would be running because i have already deleted all the instance see guys okay so yes guys this is all about our project so we have uh, started from very basics and we deployed our project also and i hope you learn like how we can uh, implement this kinds of deep learning end-to-end -end project and how we can also integrate ml ops tool with it okay so yes guys i hope you enjoyed the entire uh, video implementation and if you have liked it just try to subscribe to the channel try to like this video or try to share this video with your friends and family so yes guys this is all from my side and in future i will bring some more project okay don't worry about so uh, thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you next time